Mr. Liam, your hands must be paining after working so hard. The fairy opened her mouth and sweetly spoke. Liam's brow raised in shock as his lips twitched a couple of times, feeling the soft mounds under his grasp. The thin silvery white dress the fairy was wearing did little to hide what was underneath. Why am I getting this special treatment? He thought to himself as he tried to observe his surroundings. Clearly, something like this was not usual as the other fairies also remained silent, looking down and blushing a little. Okay. Liam then received another notification, the one that he was actually hoping for. Ding. You are now friendly with the shop 2341678797. Ding. You are able to access the F-Rank shop quest. Liam grinned. He was indeed correct. He had a theory that if he continued submitting these low-level quests, then eventually, higher-level quests would open up for him. He almost knew that his theory was correct when the quests were actually starting to run out, and he had just now submitted the last quest. But with this notification, everything was 100% confirmed. Liam wanted to quickly open the new quest board and take a look at what the next level entailed, but his mind was sort of stuck at the place where his hand was. Tilia was still holding his hand close to her chest. What was going on here? Ahem. Liam coughed as he wiggled his hand free, in the process feeling more of the softness. It's nothing much. It's not my effort alone. I had many willing helpers. You could call it my guild's team effort. He smiled. Teehee. So humble, Mr. Liam. Tilia batted her eyelashes and beamed brightly as if nothing had happened at all. She didn't mind me feeling her up? Liam could not understand what was going on. Perhaps this fairy was trying to manipulate him emotionally? He was not sure if she was attempting some sort of mental attack, but after being with Shun Yu for so long, it definitely did not have any effect on him. He did not feel any particular attraction towards the fairy. Thank you for personally helping me, Miss Tilia. I would like to take a look at the next available quests now, Liam politely said. The fairy bowed and waved her hand signaling for him to continue. Please go ahead, Mr. Liam. I will be waiting for you right here. Tihi. M. Liam ignored the naughty fairy and focused on his task at hand. If the other party actually wanted to use him, he did not mind it. After all, only then would he be able to use her. So, for now, he continued to encourage her, albeit not so open that it would give away his intentions. Let's see what these new quests are going to give me. He put away all the other thoughts and opened the new quest board with expectations. In his last life, he had been stuck at this stage forever, and now he was finally going to move forward. Please be something good. Please be something good. The blue-colored quest screen flashed in front of him, and immediately he revealed a shocked expression. Bingo. He was correct all along. Meanwhile, a little distance away from where Liam was staring at his system interface, a group of people were standing and watching him with awe. Baha, Big Bro is really awesome. We are just seeing fairies for the first time. And he already has a fairy girlfriend. Ray grinned with visible worship in his eyes. What the heck are you talking about? Standing next to him, Alex did not look as pleased. Are you blind? Or are you just pretending not to see? Clearly, that woman is just trying to trap him. Meh. Trap or not? Bro is still going to get lucky. Ray grinned, wiggling his eyes at Shin Su. The tank also seemed equally amazed as he nodded in agreement. Seeing the two men act like total idiots, Alex sighed in exasperation. I think you both left your brains at the coat check. She grumbled. And I think you are just jealous. Ray stuck his tongue out. Alex immediately flared up. What rubbish are you blabbering? Why would I be jealous? Don't lie, sis. It is so painfully obvious. It's written all over your face. Shut up. What do you know? Bahaha. Ha. Alex sighed and then looked at him seriously all of a sudden. I am not kidding. Don't make jokes like this anymore. I am telling you seriously that I am not interested in Liam. Huh. Ray stopped laughing. I am not saying that he is bad or anything. He is indeed very inspiring and trustworthy. And I am glad that he is on our side, trying to help us. But as an individual, I am really not interested in him that way. Why? What is wrong with my bro? Ray scowled. If you really think like that, then as your brother, I have to break it to you. Your taste in men is very bad. Alex scoffed. It's not about taste. 
It's just that I don't think Liam is capable of loving anyone. Maybe his sister, but I think that's about it. As for others, her gaze wandered to the person who was still intently looking at the blue screen in front of him. I think that he just looks at them as tools to achieve his means. He keeps the good ones by his side and throws out the bad ones. He is too cunning, too manipulative to love someone else. Sis, come on, that's a bit harsh. Ray frowned. I am not saying he is in the wrong here. I think his circumstances were pretty much to blame. Perhaps because of his past and how the world is right now, he is like this. I mean, aren't we all like this in one way or the other? We are also relying on him and using him in a way. The fairy would also be no exception. She would also be used by him. All I am saying is, I don't think he could really fall in love with anyone at the moment. For that matter, I don't think you or I could also experience anything like that. The world is like that. Ray shook his head. You are still lying to yourself. If you really think that bro is not capable of loving anyone, then what about Mia? Aren't you with him right now, counting on him to rescue her? Before Alex could say anything, he immediately added, Yes, yes, I know you are also trying your best, but deep down, you know that bro is on a different level when compared to us. If anyone is going to clash with those divine temple assholes and rescue Mia, then it is going to be Liam. You can't deny that. I know, just like me, you are also counting on him to do that, and bro also knows that. If he really did not care about us and only thinks of us as tools, why would he need to take such a big risk? Mia is indeed very gifted, like you said, a very useful tool. But no one would go to such lengths just for a tool. Alex swallowed as she listened to her brother in silence. She opened her mouth a couple of times, but she couldn't bring out any words to refute him. She only gazed at that person from a distance. On the side, Ray's grin widened even more. As I said, bro is awesome. He shrugged with a smug smile. Alex's lips twitched as her hands immediately flew to her brother's thick head. Pa. A slap resounded in the shop the next second. Sis. Ray became aggrieved. However, he didn't say anything else, watching the vein on his sister's forehead throb. If you open your mouth again, I will kill you myself. Alex threatened him. Who is going to kill who? Suddenly, another voice sounded near them. Liam was standing right in front of them. You guys seem very lively. What are you talking about? Seeing him, the two siblings jumped up like cats that got electrocuted, hair standing on their backs. Shin Su revealed an awkward smile. Liam saw the brother and sister blushing bright red and sensed that he had intruded into some sort of weird conversation. What were they talking about? Now he was curious. Could it be something about him? Ray was the first to recover as he laughed uncomfortably and ruffled his hair. Bro, we were just talking about that fairy. Ha ha ha. By the way, what happened? Were you able to find any new information as you hoped? Liam could see that he was changing the topic purposefully, but he did not care about it. After all, he had some exciting news to share. Yes. In fact, I did. Liam grinned. The new quests require items exclusively from the portal bosses, Liam announced. So the quality of quests really did change. Alex gasped a little. Ray and Shin Su also looked at Liam with determination filling their eyes. For Liam, this wasn't all that difficult of a quest, but for normal beginners like them, this quest was indeed a challenge. They could hone their fighting skills and combat abilities a lot by continuously fighting with these elites. It could push their current skills and help them achieve a breakthrough. All three of them were immediately itching to get started. Seeing the three almost staring at him with puppy dog eyes, Liam helplessly chuckled. Do you guys also want to come with me for this grind, or what? All three instantly nodded their heads in response very vigorously that it almost looked comical. Liam did not plan for this, but he also did not mind it. There were always other things he could accomplish while waiting for the team to take care of the boss. All right, let's go then. Liam waved at them. The group first returned to the base and picked up Shin Yu and Mei Mei as well before leaving. Because of their initial lead, the new group ended up becoming the guild's main raid team. Everyone else looked at the departing five enviously, especially at Rei and Shin Su who had climbed up from the bottom rungs. This just showed that hard work paid off. However, they also had work to do. The other members of the group soon snapped out of it 
and started preparing for their dungeon runs. Though the two dungeons they had discovered so far could only be run once a day, it was in itself a monumental task. The dungeons were quite big and took a lot of time to complete thoroughly. The rewards were not that good, and the progress was slow and steady, but everyone was gradually improving with every run. Meanwhile, high up in the sky, Luna snarled in annoyance as she once again made a flying ride for the guild members. This time all five plus Liam sat on top of her without summoning another undead flying mount because this way, they could save a lot of time. With Luna blurring in and out at top speed, they were outside of the territory they had cleared earlier in a couple of minutes. Soon the next gate also glittered brightly in front of them. The elite shouldn't be too far from the gate. Look around, and let's get this over with fast. Liam commanded. Luna growled in agreement, and the fox flew around here and there for a couple of seconds. Not long after, a huge figure came into their view. A big hippopotamus was settled well in a local community pool and was chilling calmly without any care in the world. What the hell? Alex facebombed at this sight. Maymay burst out laughing, and Ray awkwardly scratched his head. Poor thing. He looks so peaceful. Should we disturb him? However, just as they were laughing at the elite, the beast's eyes flashed open, and its gaze locked onto the human beings who were floating above it and staring it down. Immediately, the beast roared in anger, and along with the loud noise, a jet of water also came right at Luna, aiming to crash her to the ground. But how could a level 17 elite's attack harm a celestial beast? Luna simply snorted in annoyance and lightly moved her body, dodging the attack like it was nothing. This further enraged the hippopotamus as it jumped out of the pool and started shooting out several other jets of water. Luna, on the other hand, calmly evaded every single one of the attacks like it was nothing. In the end, the elite even became tired after sending out so many different types of attacks one after the other. Finally, Liam intervened. That's enough, Luna. Just land on the ground. The others need the training. The fox sulked as Liam did not praise her but she landed on the ground nevertheless. Immediately Alex, Shunyu, Mei Mei and the two boys rushed forward to start the fight. However, this was easier said than done. While Luna had made it look so easy to dodge the attacks from the boss, the rest of the group had to struggle a lot. In the meantime, Liam walked out of the fight and started doing his own thing. He once again summoned his scouting soul minion squad, which essentially contained Crawford, the Wyverns, and Dimitri, the Dark Elf. The previous searches did not yield much, but he was not prepared to give up on the idea just yet. Should I also send the rabbit out? Liam wondered. The rabbit definitely had an eye for treasure, but the thing was, the little creature seemed to be operating on her own will, which was why Liam had hesitated. Well, I can always try. Violet. He called out for her, but the rabbit was a no-show. He tried a few times and then gave up. I need to find out more about both Luna and Violet somehow. Out of the three pets he was bound to back in the game, he had managed to bring out two of them, only leaving behind Talon, but their growth was still very stagnant, especially the rabbit. He had no idea how to nourish them and bring out their potential. Let's think about that later. Liam summoned some of his other minions and let them freely run around the place, hunting whatever beasts they ran into. Unlike their city, this place was a complete mess, with lots of damage and destruction all over. The death count was also probably high, with people still dying to the beasts every minute. Liam did not intend to protect or save anyone from the burning buildings, but at the same time, he was here, so he simply allowed his minions to level up a bit. If he simply went around the world saving everyone, he would ultimately fail in the bigger picture. He was clear about this and did his best to keep a balance. After he set everything in motion, he noticed that the fight with the elite was coming to an end, so he walked back over to the group. Shun Yu landed the last hit, and the big guy fell back with a thud, blood squirting out all over from the lethal cut on his throat. Liam then casually lifted his hand to extract the beast's soul. By the time he reached the corpse, he was already done forging it. Roar! Just like that, the hippopotamus was born again. No matter how many times I see this, I can never get used to it. Alex sighed and sat down tiredly on the ground. She and the rest of the group watched as Liam placed the corpse in the spatial artifact. While they were engrossed in the fight, 
A few more of the stray beasts in this city had also come forward, and Liam swiped everything into the spatial artifact without wasting even a single beast. He might have completed the basic quest from the shop, but the meat from these beasts was still needed to feed all the families. As the cleanup was well underway, the portal gate a few feet away from the group also crackled and started disappearing. Now what? Shall we leave for the next one? Alex asked. She let out a big loud heave and got to her feet, ready for the next round of fighting. Liam closed his eyes and tried to sense some of his soul minions, but it looked like they were still occupied. So he gave them a few more minutes. Take some rest. We will leave in a bit. Alex shrugged, and the others also did not mind. Everyone was winded after the fight, so they did not mind the break. Soon the horde of minions returned after their respective missions, and the group looked at the army dumbfoundedly. They gulped as they watched Liam dismiss everyone and casually wave at them. Let's go. The group reassembled on Luna in silence, and they started their grind right away. In the beginning, each gate took approximately an hour, but as the day went on, this time became a lot lesser. Soon, they had taken down about 20 more gates. Let's return to the base. To everyone's surprise, Liam unexpectedly cut the trip short. Just as they were beginning to wonder why he'd done it, the reason became immediately clear. When Luna landed back at the base, the scene had completely changed. There were now lines of people lined up outside the hotel, all anxiously looking for some sort of answer. Wow! Meimei shouted and covered her mouth with her hands. Shin Yu, Rei, and Shin Su also looked shocked. Only Alex licked her lips as she smirked slightly. This is sooner than I expected. Let's go in first. Liam gazed at the crowd indifferently. Right in front of several pairs of envious eyes, Luna landed inside the hotel gates, and everyone walked in. After seeing the group return, Lily rushed out in a hurry. Mr. Liam, I am not sure how to handle this situation. They all want to join us. She realized she didn't have to explain anything because everyone had already witnessed the shocking scene. Don't worry about it, Miss Lily. I will take care of the situation. You have already done a lot. Thank you. Liam smiled and patted the woman. Ah, uh, I didn't do anything. Lily couldn't help but blush when she was being praised in front of everyone, especially the main members of the group. What a womanizer. Alex immediately rolled her eyes. She looked at Shunyu wondering what her reaction was going to be, but unexpectedly, the girl only had a kind smile on her face. Too gullible. Her gaze shifted back to Liam when she noticed that the other party was looking right at her. Ahem. She awkwardly cleared her throat. You didn't hear what I said? Liam shook his head helplessly and repeated his words. Let's get everyone assembled in the hotel conference room. I think it's time we assign some responsibilities to the group. Though he did not want to be involved in these things, there was still some basic organizing that needed to be done. Otherwise, the dynamics of the group would crumble. If he took the time now to lay a solid foundation, things would be much easier and run more smoothly later on. Also, there was another reason why he needed to do this. It's because only he knew what was going to happen next. After Liam gave his orders, everyone quickly moved their asses and started assembling in the conference room one after another. It only took about an hour for the whole group to be there, which included the granny and her members of the dojo. Liam then didn't get much involved as he allowed Alex and Lily to take over. Alex was already familiar with most of the guild members, so she quickly assigned certain basic duties like handling weapons and resources, taking turns guarding the territory, and so on. The dojo members were mostly assigned to lead dungeon diving groups and make sure that all the core members ran the two dungeons every single day. Then the main part arrived, which was assigning responsibilities to family members and those who were not used to or did not want to get involved in combat. Liam finally stepped forward to speak. It is neither necessary nor compulsory for anyone to fight on the front lines, but I suggest everyone at least get to level 10 in the next couple of days. Take turns and get help, but in two days' time, there will be another roll call, and I expect everyone to be at this level. Liam's words did not give anyone any chance to rebuke him. However, everyone had the utmost respect for him. So even though this was something they did not want to do, they still ended up nodding in agreement. After all, they were living in such a world. They did indeed require some self-defense skills of their own in case something unexpected happened. 
But no one knew that there was also another reason why Liam had made this sort of requirement. Now, about the people waiting outside, he finally came to the main point. First, collect their details. Then each of you can pick two people and keep them under you. You will be the leader, and you can delegate your work to them. As for dungeon runs and such, only the Corgill group will be involved in this. The others have to work their way to get this chance. The same goes for food. Everything will be graded according to the work done. There will be no free handouts here. After Liam announced the gist of what he had in mind, a few more of the guild members chipped in with their ideas, and soon, some sort of hierarchy was established. Different teams were set up, and even the housing space was expanded. At this rate, we will be taking over the whole city. Is that the plan? Alex asked. Yes, but not yet. Liam replied. The danger from the first wave is not yet completely over. Alex was shocked. What do you mean? We got the beast wave under control, killed the elites in the nearby areas, and closed the portals. Isn't everything already done? No. Liam shook his head. It's not that simple. He sighed and explained. The real disaster of the first wave is going to happen in the next few days. In about three to four days' time, some people are going to fall sick, some people are going to become extremely weak and ill, and lastly, some people are going to become violent and vicious. That's not all. They will also lose all sense of themselves and start attacking others, sometimes even to death. You can say that they will turn into zombies. Alex looked stunned. Are you serious? At this point, she did not even bother asking him how he knew about this. So just the beast wave and the civil unrest are not enough. Huh. This kind of thing on top of everything else. She bitterly smiled. It was almost as if humanity had no chance of survival. She let out a deep sigh and then looked at the people gathered in the conference room. How many of them were going to make it? Liam understood her thoughts very well. He wanted to tell her that the worst was yet to come but decided against it for now. It wouldn't be good to scare her senseless. Instead, he gave her some good news. By the way, everyone here is safe. To be more precise, everyone who reached at least level 5 should be relatively safe. Oh. Alex stared blankly. You mean they won't become sick or lose their minds anymore? Yup. Liam assured her. So basically everyone who didn't stay idle and sit at home cowering in fear would be safe. Leveling up is also not the only way. They just need to do something. I either kill the beasts or at least obtain beast meat in some other way like trading for other items. If enough beast meat is consumed, the chances of being affected by mana are greatly reduced. Liam explained. This is just natural selection. We cannot do anything about it. Those who can adapt will survive, and those who cannot will die. This is just how it is. Alex nodded in understanding. Everyone else standing around also overheard the conversation. They couldn't help but be grateful to Liam. He not only took care of the bare necessities, but also went above and beyond to ensure the well-being of their families. He was protecting them from things that they did not even know existed. Once everyone was aware of the danger involved, the group began distributing tasks with much more seriousness, as no one wanted to lose their loved ones. Leaving these tasks to the guild members, Liam and the main group, who had just now gone hunting for portal elites, silently retired to the other part of the hotel. The group was tired after the continuous grind. Liam, naturally, was unscathed, but the same couldn't be said for everyone else. Alex, Shunyu, Mei Mei, and Shin Su. All of them had sustained some amount of injuries while fighting against the elites. Ray was relatively unharmed, but since the others were involved in direct combat, they were scratched, cut, and bruised in several places. Thankfully, arrangements had already been made for this purpose. A group of four were attending to all the fighters who had returned from combat and to those injured in some other way. A sort of makeshift health station had been established. The group received some basic first aid treatment from them while Liam checked on his sister for a bit before heading right back outside along with Luna. The main reason he had returned was to warn everyone about mana zombies and how unsuspecting people could turn dangerous, but now that the issue was dealt with, he swiftly returned back to the task at hand. Everything is going well, Luna. Better than I expected. He patted the fox and hopped on her. The duo then set off, making their first stop at the magic store. Whoa. Mr. Liam, you are already back to turn in more quests. Tilia rushed out to greet him like always.
flashing the same coquettish smile. Liam waved at her. Ha ha, is there anything else that I should be doing? He did not expect it and had only said the words casually, but the fairy's expression slightly changed nonetheless. This did not escape Liam's observation. Ha ha ha, I meant that I would like to pay off my debts as soon as possible. He added with a wink, waiting for the other party to say something. However, the fairy smoothly glossed over the conversation, continuing to talk about the store quests and simply throwing in several words of praise for Liam. He, too, continued to smile, but he was certain of something. The fairy knew more about the current situation than he did, even though this was his second time around. Also, there was probably something else that he should be doing at the moment. What could this be? The first wave of beasts has passed, and the crisis now involved mana zombies. These two events might be threatening to humanity and the planet as a whole, but Liam was definitely above their impact level. So what was it that he should be doing? Liam walked over to the quest board while continuing to mull over this issue. He submitted the few quests that required certain body parts of the elite beasts, like liver, gallbladder, and eyes. In the end, he only managed to finish a few, and it was not enough to reach the next stage. This was something he had already expected, so Liam did not care too much about it and exited the shop after bidding farewell to the overly zealous fairy. I need to come here more often, Luna. I should make her talk more. He made a mental note as he glanced at the shop one more time before the fox took off. Without the other baggage on top of her, Luna's speed was faster than ever as she cruised through the wide open skies and arrived at the next gate. This time they started searching for the gates in the opposite direction, and not long after, they ran into the first one. Since it was just Liam and Luna, Liam did not bother to rein in the fox, and the beast went all out. As if she was too tired from dealing with slow pokes all day long, she blurred in and out and raced from one gate to another. Naturally, the fight with the elite after reaching the respective gate was also a piece of cake, as all she had to do was open her mouth and send out a fire burst. The opponent was simply burned to a crisp without ever getting a chance to know why they were dead. The first, unfortunately, elite directly turned to ashes, but then Liam quickly reminded her of the reason why they were doing this in the first place. Sorry, master. The fox became embarrassed. She trod lightly around the next boss, trying to leave the body, or at least most of it, unharmed. The grinding was still quite efficient, as the duo managed to grab another 20 kills within a few hours, and Liam also added another 20 elites to his army, along with their respective mana cores. Everything was proceeding well, and as an added public service, he was also closing portals left and right, helping others in general. The two were just about to continue doing their routine when suddenly Liam noticed something unusual. In the distance, there was a small red glow in the sky. Liam's eyes widened as he gazed at this unexpected phenomenon. What was that? And when he observed it closely, the glow seemed to be appearing near the city where their main base was. Luna, let's return to the base. Now. Liam did not hesitate and immediately gave the orders. What made him anxious was that he had no idea what this red glow could be. Another portal? A new dungeon? Nothing of that sort should be appearing right now. What was going on? Several terrifying scenarios ran through his mind as Luna raced back to the hotel. When they got closer, another red glow appeared and this time they were able to see it more clearly. The glow seemed to be coming from a flare of sorts, and it was definitely coming from their city, more specifically from their base. What happened? What went wrong? Crawford found him so soon? Or perhaps something else terrible had happened? Each possibility was scarier than the previous one. Liam's gaze sharpened as he almost dove out of Luna as soon as they arrived at the base. Shen Yu and Mei Mei were standing right there at the entrance, waiting for him. Brother, you came back. You saw our flare. What happened? Did you both signal me? Liam could see that at least these two were visibly safe, and nothing disastrous had happened. The hotel buildings also seemed to be intact, and there were no signs of struggle or beast activity. So he felt a little relieved. Mei Mei as well smiled and did not look panicked. Brother, sorry to call you back like this, but we thought that you might want to know about this. We discovered something unusual. Let's go in and talk. Shin Yu shushed Mei Mei hurriedly as there were quite a few people still standing outside, waiting in a queue. Seeing how the two were acting, Liam became very curious. He wanted to know what made them call him so urgently. 
All right. Quick. Let's go in and talk. Luna also followed them after shrinking back to her small-sized version. The several people waiting outside in the lines watched the scene with amazement, but no one could figure out what was going on and could only simply watch. Meanwhile, Mei Mei dragged Liam to the health section right after they entered the hotel. Surprisingly, there seemed to be too many people gathered here at the moment when compared to the usual. Did something happen in the dungeon run? Liam immediately asked. That was the only thing he could think of, because the injured people were not just any members of the guild. They were, in fact, the trained members of the dojo under the leadership of the granny. All of them had excellent combat skills, and all of them were very experienced. So the chance of anything unexpected happening in the low-level dungeon was very unlikely. But despite this, they were all injured? Liam walked closer and observed that they were also quite heavily injured. He also did not see the granny around. Was she alright? Just what the hell happened? This did not seem to be a simple run-of-the-mill bad luck situation. Ningxi noticed whom Liam was looking for and quickly cleared up the misunderstanding. Mr. Liam. Master is doing fine. She retired to her room because she had obtained some insights and she did not want to be disturbed. Okay. Liam nodded. Then what happened? He sat down, letting out a small sigh. I will explain everything from the beginning now. Ning Shi unexpectedly smiled. Liam became more and more curious. We were clearing the dungeon like usual when we encountered something strange. Or rather, Master felt as if there was something strange about a passageway. We debated over it, but in the end, we decided to make sure that we were not missing anything. So we broke the wall down completely. You guys actually broke down a dungeon wall? Liam was puzzled. He had never heard of such a thing before. Yes, and we found another passageway inside. We entered this new passageway and unexpectedly ran into more mobs of the dungeon. But, this time, the mobs were a lot stronger. You mean? Liam stiffened up as realization sank quickly. Yes, this part of the dungeon was no longer just level 1 to 20. This part should be from level 20 to 30 or even 40. Liam clenched his fists in excitement. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. He knew that there were different dungeons scattered all over the world, but as far as he knew, these were just low-level dungeons suitable for players ranging from level 1 to level 20. So what was happening now? Ningxi smiled. She already knew that Liam would be excited to hear this. She was also equally excited. For the first time, they were contributing something to the team. All these days, they had only taken the information and help from Liam, so it felt good to give something back in return, to prove that they were also important members of the guild. We ended up suffering some injuries because we hadn't expected something like this to happen, but we somehow managed to make it out of the dungeon alive, thanks to Master and Senior Brothers. Ningxi explained everything. Liam also patiently listened to her from beginning to end. The more he heard, the more he was sure of it. These dungeons were not what they seemed to be. In his last life, these dungeons were merely considered tools that beginners used to train. There were always rumors and talks about dungeons of higher levels. Everyone entertained such notions because the idea was not far-fetched. While the portals and the beast waves were considered trials of the apocalypse, these dungeons were training tools. It wouldn't be surprising to find out that just like in the game, in the real world also, there were dungeons of different levels. But, even though these assumptions made sense, no one had ever been able to find a higher level dungeon. It was always a mystery to the different guilds. Some people even refused to believe that this was true. They accused each other of cheating and hiding dungeons in their territories, like small children accusing each other of not sharing their toys. Only now was Liam able to see the truth. Not only these higher level dungeons existed, but they had been right under everyone's noses. Liam immediately stood up in a hurry. This was indeed huge news. He needed to immediately go there and pick the dungeon apart from top to bottom. Which dungeon is this? Liam hurriedly grabbed Ning Shi by her shoulder and shook her. Ah, uh, ah, uh, it's the same Jing City dungeon. The poor girl got scared and blurted out. She was also excited about this new information, but she did not know enough to fathom the implications of such an unexpected discovery. Liam was the only one who knew, and he was also the only one who needed this right now. This was probably what the fairy had meant when she had let slip earlier about something. Liam grew more and more excited. 
Though he was doing something at the moment, it was not nearly enough to improve his current condition. But now, that had changed. He could actually tackle the higher level dungeons and go beyond 80, the level he was currently stagnated at. After getting all the information from Ning Shi, Liam did not dare linger around. This time he did not call anyone for company and immediately rushed over to the dungeon by himself, riding on top of Luna at top speed. Sensing Liam's mood, the fox was also equally excited. The two of them did not take long before they arrived in the same village they had visited before. This time the place was even more deserted when compared to earlier. The reason for this was abundantly clear as a swarm of mosquitoes assaulted the duo as soon as Luna landed. The mosquitoes were bigger in size, numerous, and did not have the brains to know that they should not mess with beings far beyond their abilities. So they foolishly tried to stick their parts into the meaty fox. The fox immediately opened her mouth and spit out a burst of fire and anger. Just ignore them and go straight for that dungeon. Liam pointed at the green-colored portal. He did not have the patience at the moment to deal with these smaller mobs. Luna shook her head and tossed out another burst of fire before she blurred her way into the dungeon. Ding! You have entered dungeon 114. Liam swiped the notification away and blasted his way through the inside of the dungeon. It was only a basic dungeon with weak monsters meant to be fodder for the beginners. In this particular case, these were wolf-like chimeras. The entire dungeon was in the shape of a network of caverns, and Liam made a quick work of the howling monsters by summoning his soul army. He then managed to arrive at the specific location in a couple of seconds. This is where they mentioned. So the wall should be one of these two. He looked at the narrow passageway in which he was standing. He tried to sense if something was different. He closed his eyes and tried to observe the air around him, searching for clues about mana or anything else for that matter. However, he was only drawing a blank. But how did the old granny sense something that he was not able to? He couldn't understand. He decided to think about that later and first took a deep breath before punching the wall in front of him. He then immediately turned around and punched the one behind him as well. In the blink of an eye, the whole thing shattered, both front and back, falling down as bits of rocks. When the dust cloud settled, lo and behold, there was indeed a passageway staring at him, just like the granny had said. Howl. Immediately, a pack of chimera wolves jumped forward before Liam had time to process anything. He did not bother dealing with these low-level cretins as he sidestepped them, leaving them behind for his sole minions. He entered the main passageway with a gulp. Could it really be true? His heart was pounding loudly as he took one step after another, observing the surroundings. He was still in the same cavern-like network, but the steps were inclined and winding almost as if he was climbing onto a different floor. As he turned the corner, he was actually on a different floor, basically with a similar layout of the dungeon, except that the Chimera Wolves here were level 20 and above. Motherf asterisk Kerr. I can't believe this. Liam smiled in disbelief at the scene in front of him. The information he had received was indeed true. The dungeon was not just a low-level beginner dungeon. It had another level. Then, could it mean... Liam's heart was still pounding as he picked up the pace and blasted through the second floor of the dungeon. While his sole minions attended to the mobs and the floor boss, he busily scanned the dungeon floor from top to bottom. Howl! All the chimeras were wildly incensed by this blatant disrespect, but they dropped down dead left and right before they could even get a chance to express this anger. Meanwhile, Liam started from the dungeon entrance itself and repeatedly punched every inch of the walls that lined the pathway. Some of the walls collapsed, and some did not. Those that collapsed also did not reveal anything spectacular, just another small cavern or loop. However, as he approached the main lair of the final boss, there was finally a change. One of the walls crumbled to reveal a passageway that had inclined winding steps which lead further upstairs. Liam clenched his fists in excitement, as he felt his pulse quicken some more. He only took a step upstairs when another pack of Chimera Wolves emerged. And this time, they were level 35 and above. It was true. Everything was true. If he climbed higher and higher, he could actually reach level 50 and stronger beasts? Liam licked his lips. With a grin, he stepped forward confidently as he slammed the incoming beasts onto the sides of the wall 
and continued to walk forward as he reached the next floor of the dungeon. The third floor was no different than the first two floors as Liam cleared all the mobs at an insane pace and once again started searching for the passageway that led further up. The dungeon itself was quite huge that it took 20 and 30 men groups about an hour to finish in entirety. But for Liam, it had only barely been a few minutes since he started the run, and he was already on the third floor. From there, it again took him only a handful of minutes to locate the next passageway. With every discovery, he was becoming more and more excited as he couldn't see the limit of where this was headed. While inside the tutorial game, though the opportunities were plenty, his time was cut short but now, he had the time. Only the first wave of the apocalypse had been triggered up until now. He had plenty of time until the real horrors began to show up. The unfortunate part was that he had no way to prepare for this. This was why he had been fishing for opportunities by grinding the quests from the magic shop. But now, another brand new path had opened up in front of him. He was not going to waste this opportunity. As Liam broke down the walls for the next passageway, this time instead of chimera beasts, surprisingly, a group of orc soldiers rushed forward. Each of them was tall and sturdy and was at least level 45. Bingo! This was exactly what he was waiting for. Liam immediately summoned his main battalion, his first string soul minions. The next second, the wyverns, Crawford, Dimitri, the six-winged lion, and the striped white tiger, all showed up ready to battle. In front of these minions, the dozen orcs could not really put up a fight, and they crumbled and dropped like flies, just like the other beasts. Finally, the experience points also started to accumulate bit by bit. However, the experience points given by this dungeon were extremely sparse when compared to the tutorial game. Just seeing the small numbers was extremely painful. Though Liam was thankful for this opportunity to improve his strength, this was a harsh reminder that it was not going to be so easy. However, after everything he had faced, Liam was not going to be deterred by something so small. If all that was needed for him to get stronger was to fight relentlessly and spend every second of his waking time doing it, he was ready for that. The fourth floor of the dungeon posed him no threat, as he once again did not even have to lift a finger. He continued pushing forward, relying just on the strength of his minions. Even the final boss was not an issue. A few more minutes passed by, and Liam quickly found the passageway for the next floor. Finally, he was on the fifth floor and was going to cross the level 50 threshold in this dungeon. More orcs dashed forward as Luna and the wyverns made quick work of the group. Unexpectedly, the rest of the floor was also a joke, as there weren't any other surprises. Just the minions alone were able to handle the fight. Liam received some experience points as well. He didn't mind because he was level 80 and these beasts were still 30 levels below him and didn't appear to have formed any mana cores. So they couldn't measure up to Liam's abilities and died just as quickly as the rest. He successfully found the next passageway as well. Maybe this one will be challenging. Liam licked his lips and stepped forward, but as soon as he did, he came to a grinding halt. A barrier popped up in front of him without any warning. It was a translucent blue-colored barrier, akin to a pure mana barrier, but a very strong one that was already repelling him before he could even take a step forward. He could feel the strong mana waves coming out of the barrier even from a distance. Ding! Congratulations! You have cleared the first section of the dungeon. The dungeon is now beginning to update. Time remaining. 24 hour. D asterisk M in it. Liam punched the barrier in front of him in frustration, but that only proved useless as it did not even budge an inch. He waited there at the same spot for a couple more minutes and tried again. The same message once again popped up. I guess I have no choice. Liam turned back and left the dungeon, the same way he had entered. However, he did not return to the base just yet and decided to pay the other dungeon a visit as well. He wanted to know if this strange thing was only happening in this dungeon or if it could happen in any dungeon on the planet. It would be extremely amusing if the latter were true because it would mean that the majority of the population had been as blind as bats their entire lives, not knowing what was in their own backyard. They would have wasted such a precious resource for training and becoming stronger. No wonder that when the subsequent trials of the apocalypse arrived, the entire planet was completely wiped out. Liam let out a sigh as he dismissed all of his soul friends and hopped on top of Luna. The duo headed to the second dungeon whose location they knew, 
and dove right into the green portal. This one was also a chimera dungeon, with various poisonous chimeras roaming about. There were all sorts of poisonous insects and beasts crawling in the dungeon. Liam did not waste any time and summoned the big shots right away to take care of the trash. Meanwhile, he punched the cavern network walls systematically, and not too long after, just like in the other dungeon, a passageway actually opened up. Bahaha! So it is really true. Bahaha! Liam threw his head back and started laughing maniacally. He looked at the passageway in front of him, the winding steps leading inward, and he just couldn't believe it. Not just one D asterisk MN dungeon, but every D asterisk Ned dungeon had multiple floors? What the hell were they up to in his last lifetime? How could they not have discovered something so simple? Perhaps if they had discovered this sooner, they wouldn't have suffered so much. So all that misery and suffering was only because of their foolishness? Liam slapped his forehead with this palm as he looked at that passageway. Just the sight of it made him so angry. However, there was no point in dwelling on the past. Now that he knew about these things, there was much better planning that needed to be done. These dungeons were more than enough to prepare for the end times. If armies were what was required to stand firm against the terror that was about to be unleashed, then he would create these armies. If it was still not possible to rally others to stand together and survive the end times, then he would create an army of his own against whatever was coming. Liam rushed in, followed by his minions, and started clearing the rest of the dungeon as well. Just like in the one before, he cleared until the fifth level on this dungeon too when the same message flashed in front of him again. Ding. Congratulations. You have cleared the first section of the dungeon. The dungeon is now beginning to update. Time remaining. 24 hour. He dismissed his minions and stepped out of the dungeon. He now needed to wait for a day to see what happened next but Liam was optimistic. These dungeons were definitely more complex than what he knew. And if the dungeons were like this, then there were probably also other things that he didn't know of yet. For all he knew, the answer to becoming stronger and coming out on top of this apocalypse was already available to him. He just had not figured it out yet. Liam gazed at the dungeon portal for a few minutes, and then the duo made a move. Now that he had settled the two dungeons, all he could do for the next 24 hours was wait. So he went around with Luna farming some more elite bosses and closed down some portals before returning to the base later that same night. As soon as he stepped back into the hotel, Mei Mei, Shun Yu, and Ning Shi immediately rushed forward to greet him. It looked like they were eagerly waiting for him to learn more about the dungeons. However, Liam shook his head. I will explain everything. Give me some time. He was not 100% sure yet what the update meant so he did not want to endanger anyone's life. Also, ask the group to keep this information confidential. Liam then had some dinner with the group, and he received more updates about what was happening in the base. It looked like the number of people flocking to their base and requesting to join the guild was still increasing. Most of these people are players from the tutorial game. They don't seem to be particularly talented. Ray explained. Oh? Did you guys conduct some sort of test? Liam took a bite of the roasted wolf meat and asked. Yes, bro. I came up with the idea. Ray grinned. Everyone was doing sparring practice anyway. So we did some recruitment tests for those claiming to be players. I mean, we are still putting them in the third string after all our combat guild members and the non-combat guild members. We are being careful. Alex sneered. They are just fair weather jackals. They want to join us now seeing how our guild managed to come out on top. Otherwise, why would they line up outside our gates? Oof. You are not wrong. Liam chuckled. They just want to be on the side which is stronger. Tomorrow if another guild has a stronger base, they would probably leave us and join that one. But, he paused and added, a pensive look in his eyes. We need the manpower. Don't forget that our guild is very spread out at the moment. We don't even know how many people survived and how many didn't. So let's give these people a second chance. As long as they stay within the lines and do their part without creating any disturbances, let them be. But the moment they start something, kick them to the curb. There will be no third chance. Everyone agreed. These conditions might be a bit harsh, but someone's careless mistake could cost a lot of people their lives. So they needed to be strict. Okay, I will be leaving now. Liam did not sit around and talk for a long time. 
as he had a big list of things he needed to accomplish in these 24 hours. More importantly, he needed to pay attention to the details. Bro, are you going to meet that fairy? Ray chimed in with excitement. Immediately, several eyes in the group turned to look at Liam. Shin Yu and Mei Mei both looked a little startled. Alex rolled her eyes. Some other women, including Ning Shi, looked at him questioningly. Only Shin Shu had a bitter smile as he looked at Ray and shook his head. Bro, you just casually tossed a bomb. Liam, on the other hand, was too preoccupied to notice this ripple effect. Yes, I am on my way to that shop. There is a lot I need to ask that woman about. In private, he answered in a matter-of-fact manner. In private? By now, everyone had seen the fairy Ray was talking about, so they couldn't help but stare at this remark. Ray was the only one who smiled and gave a thumbs up. Good luck. Bro conduct a thorough investigation. He he. To everyone's surprise, Liam further added fuel to this fire. Yes, I plan to. He made a suspicious comment and left. Hearing this, Alex dropped her spoon in shock, and even Shun Yu looked a little startled. What the hell was going on here? They looked dumbfounded, but Liam and Luna had already disappeared. The fox took off and directly landed in front of the magic shop, their next stop. Liam hopped down and walked into the inconspicuous shop that opened up into a grand store. He looked to the attendant on his right and immediately asked for the main boss. Can I talk to your manager? Haha, ha, I am right here. Why are you looking for me so eagerly, Mr. Liam? A melodious voice floated across the hall. Liam turned to see the familiar face, painted with a flirtatious smile that was enough to charm any man into a spell. He smirked. Thanks for the tip. I did find something better to do with my time. He could see his words have an immediate effect on the creature as she looked slightly stunned. The few others in the shop also turned to look at them, listening keenly to their conversation. Seeing this, the fairy became more flustered. Liam was satisfied with this outcome. Shall we go inside and talk? The fairy's sweet smile returned. Nevertheless, she nodded. She led the way as the two of them returned to the manager's private room. What is this tip you were talking about, Mr. Liam? If you say things like that, then I might get in trouble. Tilia sat back in her chair and laughed awkwardly. Liam sat down opposite her and smiled. I am talking about the dungeons, Miss Tilia. I will soon be bringing you some good things back from the dungeons. The fairy narrowed her eyes as a strange glint flashed within them. You are really astute, Mr. Liam. I don't think there are that many people who are capable of figuring out this hidden secret in just a matter of days. Who said that it was me? Liam smiled. Unfortunately, I cannot take credit for this, but I am going to take advantage of it. Teehee. Such humility and honesty in someone so young are very admirable. The fairy coquettishly giggled and stood up from her chair to walk over to Liam. She gently leaned on the table right next to him so close that only her scent filled the space between them. You are a man of many admirable qualities, Mr. Liam. Heh, <laughs> is that so? Liam's mouth twitched. The woman's fragrance tickled his nose and made his hands itchy to reach forward and grab her by her slender waist. Something was different today. Seemingly amused by his reaction, the fairy inched even closer, stopping only a hair away from him. Yes, Mr. Liam. You are very impressive. Liam immediately pulled back. He did not know what this person was capable of, so he had to be careful not to fall into some trap. As for her intentions, he was already aware of them. She was once again trying to manipulate him, but he decided to give her an opportunity to be more direct. In that case, how about you reward me with something? You, Miss Tilia, are very knowledgeable about the things currently happening in my world. How about you share with me some of your insights? The fairy paused. She stared at Liam with her complete, undivided attention, and something twinkled within the depth of her eyes. She let out a deep, raspy breath and, unexpectedly, started leaning forward. She inched closer to Liam, holding her gaze, and covered the distance between them. She was once again so close to him that he could feel her cool breath mixed with her scent on his face. To Liam's surprise, she then parted her lips and came further closer. Her cherry red lips glistened with an enchanting charm as she placed her mouth right on top of Liam's. A soft, wet, flower petal-like sensation assaulted him. However, it was only for a brief moment. 
Just as he was about to react, the fairy quickly pulled back, her lips merely brushing past his. I am sorry, Mr. Liam. As a store manager, I have to remain neutral towards all my customers, and I am afraid I am not allowed to participate in the events of your world. She gave a charming wink and then stood up to walk back to her chair behind the desk, putting a distance between herself and him. Liam's gaze turned cold. This was something he had already expected, but he had still hoped that he would be able to forge some sort of relationship with this fairy. Instead, the other party only seemed to be interested in teasing him. If anything, she made that clear today. Or perhaps his strength was just not enough to tempt her into forming any sort of relationship. Either way, this path was not going to get him too far at the moment. Liam decided to leave this for later, maybe after he reached level 100. Of course, I understand, Miss Tilia. I wouldn't want to force you to do anything that you are not comfortable with. He flashed a smile and stood up. I will be taking my leave then. I have quite a few quests to hand over. As if nothing had happened, Liam casually walked out of the manager's room and went over to the quest board section. The fairy's eyes trailed behind him with an odd glint, but then she closed her eyes and remained silent as if she were contemplating something deeply. Back inside the shop, Liam opened his quest interface and started submitting the few quests that he could. Even though the quests this time involved gathering materials from elite beasts, specifically portal bosses, the quest submission was still a merciless grind. Liam did not observe any change in the quality or quantity of quest content, even after spending quite a bit of time on this. But that was fine. He was also prepared for this. Given how dungeons are now so much more valuable, he had already made plans to search the entire country for the rest of the dungeons. These were the most important resources at the moment. The two locations that he was most familiar with were not nearly enough. They needed to find more dungeon portals and take control of those territories as well. After all, China is a vast country. There was no way that these were the only two dungeons in the vicinity. Liam finished up the quest board business and then proceeded to walk out of the store. Several people waved at him and respectfully greeted him as he passed by. Currently, the various customers littering the magic shop were all mostly Crimson Abyss guild members or wannabe guild members. If I want to expand the territory, then I might have to recruit more people. Liam made a mental note as he walked out. He returned to the hotel right after that, as he still had the rest of the day to burn. And while he was waiting, there was something else that needed his attention. It should happen any time now, Liam murmured to himself as he went back to his room and looked outside the window. Just so that he did not miss out on anything, he also unleashed his sole minion army to patrol the city. To see the 700-plus undead minions walking around the living was a terrifying sight. Everyone would have started panicking and attacking these weird things or sh asterisking their pants and locking their doors, except by now, news had already spread mostly through word of mouth. Thanks to the popularity of Evolution Online, there was at least one person on the street who knew about the video game and the famous s rank guild Crimson Abyss. Because of this, the line outside the hotel was getting longer every day and everyone naturally assumed that these minions belonged to the guild in some way or another. Moreover, the soul minions seemed harmless, as they did not pay any attention to anyone. They simply walked about minding their own business, so it was easier to get used to their presence. There were also some who still dared to attack the undead, but most of them had by now leveled up a few times, thanks to the beast wave. These few attacks were insignificant in comparison to the beasts, which could flee much faster than the level zero humans. This went on for some time until the long night ended and a new day began. As the first rays of sunlight hit the city, Liam finally received the signal that he was waiting for. Let's go, Luna. He immediately summoned the fox, and the duo took off from the hotel, reaching their destination in just a few seconds. Luna landed in front of a poorly constructed apartment building in what looked like a very congested area with several low-cost buildings squished together in the same neighborhood. So we start off in the slum area, huh? Liam sighed with a chuckle. This sort of thing was to be expected, as people who are already weak, malnourished, or sick from some ailment were the first to fall. Their bodies were unable to withstand the new energy that they were not accustomed to, and therefore they have a higher chance of not being able to successfully adapt to mana. This was precisely why Liam was here. Mana Zombies The next threat that the apocalypse posed. It was time these creatures started showing up one by one, 
and it looked like the first one was already here. A loud, enraged sound echoed from within the small apartment as everyone poked their heads out from their small windows and small balconies in confusion and worry. What was happening? Are there more beasts once again coming out? Suddenly they found themselves looking for the creepy undead that had been patrolling their street just a couple of minutes ago. However, to their dismay, neither the creepy undead nor the person to whom the creepy undead belonged was anywhere to be seen. Liam did not plan on intervening just yet. He simply stood on the side and continued to observe the situation from the outside. This meant that there could potentially be some casualties, as he did not exactly have X-ray eyes and couldn't prevent any mishaps from happening inside the apartment without being present there. However, he still decided to do this because this was a very sensitive issue. If Liam intervened and saved the people from the apartment building, then there were two ways things could play out. He would either be praised to the high heavens and called a savior, or be cursed and condemned to hell. Most often, the affected person's family would reject their situation as reality and instead place the blame for their death squarely on the shoulders of the Savior, claiming that this was an injustice committed by him. He would be branded as a power-hungry psychopath out to mutilate everyone by the same people who begged him for help. Liam had seen a lot of this happen in his last lifetime, and he wanted to avoid this sticky situation at all costs. So he took his time before going in. Meanwhile, a thin young man who appeared to be in his late twenties or early thirties suddenly clutched his head and began yelling or, more accurately, roaring loudly in agony inside the small apartment. Everyone in the surrounding houses could clearly hear this guttural shout, but it did not stop there. The young man screamed in pain for a few seconds, after which he lifted his head up and looked at his wife near him with reddened eyes. Something within him had cracked. The woman could sense it. The person in front of her was her husband, but at the same time, he was no longer the same person whom she knew and was familiar with. Her gut instinct said so. He was staring at her like a rabid animal was staring at her. She only felt fear, not even concern. It was just a human instinct. The woman screamed and banged open the door. She started madly shouting and running away. The few people who had opened their doors to take a look at what was going on immediately became alert upon seeing this. Everyone quickly started closing their doors back up again and silently hid inside. Bang! Bang! Please open the door! Please open the door. The woman wailed in fear, pounding on everyone's doors. However, it was completely useless. No one paid any attention to her situation and turned deaf ears to her cries for help. But at the same time, it was not so simple to escape the grasp of the manner infused human being. Like a rabid animal, he crashed here and there. In the process, even breaking down some of the cheaply built doors and wall structures. Wooden splitters and sand dust flew everywhere as huge holes started appearing. Now the inhabitants no longer had the safety of their homes, and it was no longer just the single woman who was screaming and running for her life. Several panicked people started running out of the building, all of them shouting in fear. The person who had lost his mind because of mana chased them out instinctively and even managed to get a couple of them. His hands bashed their heads against the wall with a force that made human skulls crack open like eggshells. Brain matter splattered everywhere, and pools of blood formed on the floor. The single mana zombie was enough to unlet utter terror on the group of normal people. When compared to the level 0 humans, the mana zombie strength and movement were like that of a level 15 beast. No one stood a chance against the single rabid guy, and could only run away from him in fear. The man's limbs and face were also currently swollen up with veins popping out, making him look all the more terrifying. Luckily, they were able to outrun the monster barely. If someone stumbled on their path, then that was the end. Only death awaited them. Seeing this, all the inhabitants of the small neighborhood started running away randomly, fleeing in different directions for their lives. In just a few minutes, the entire place fell into complete chaos. This was the terror of a mana zombie. One was enough to cause numerous casualties. Unlike in the fictional books and movies, people who got scratched by the creature did not get infected or contract some form of the disease, falling into the risk of turning into one themselves. But on the minus side, no one really lived to tell this tale. The mana zombie never simply scratched. The hits were always strong and deadly. It one-shot all its victims to a meat pulp. 
That's why this was one of the main reasons the world's population plummeted. First, the beast wave, and then the appearance of zombies. Humanity was dealt a crushing blow right from the get-go. Standing on the side, Liam and Luna watched this scene indifferently. The fox couldn't care less about the plight of the human beings who were not related to her master, while Liam knew better than to intervene at the moment. He gave it one more minute, and only when most of the inhabitants of the neighborhood were outside and praying for a miracle he finally made a move. The mana zombie might be strong for normal humans, but for a level 80 human being, it did not pose any threat. Liam only needed one casual hit to finish the guy. Seeing him publicly decimate the abomination, everyone loudly cheered and rejoiced. The people who were fleeing as well stopped running away and turned to look at the scene. Liam had purposefully made a spectacle out of the whole situation exactly for this purpose. He dragged the corpse out for everyone to see, putting it in the middle of the ground where the neighborhood had gathered. He then looked at the anxious and terrified crowd and addressed them calmly. I have solved the issue for now, but be careful in the future. Everyone who hasn't consumed mutated beast meat or properly adapted to this new world has a risk of turning into a monster just like this person. If you want to know more, visit that beacon of light. Liam pointed to the magic shop in the distance. He did not want to give away the location of the guild base directly. Instead, he gave directions to the shop, where at all times, one or the other member of the guild always hung around and could guide these newcomers. This was important because humans seldom had the tendency to appreciate things that happened easily and came to them for free. This way, they would have to work a little to get to the base and then go through the selection process, which would result in them appreciating and valuing the facility more. After speaking these few words, Liam then nodded at Luna. The fox immediately ballooned up and swaggered over to Liam. The duo then took off without caring about anything else. However, the moment after they left, everyone immediately started murmuring and whispering to each other. It did not look like Liam had done much, but the effect he had was phenomenal, specifically what he said. They had to consume beast meat? Was there a chance that they could also turn like this? Everyone gulped in fear and shock. They looked at their family members, worried that the same thing might happen to them as well. Most of the people were simply waiting for this phase to pass and for the government to take over once again so that things would be back to normal, but today's incident only showed that they were merely daydreaming. Perhaps things were only going to get worse. When faced with this harsh reality, everyone began to discuss their options hurriedly and about the person who had just now rescued them. Most of the crowd was grateful for Liam's intervention, and some of them even considered him to be their savior. The woman whose husband had turned into the zombie in the first place was still bowing to the spot where Liam had stood and addressed everyone. If not for him, there would have definitely been a massacre in this neighborhood. They admired his strength and applauded that he had gone out of the way to help them for nothing in return. Naturally, many were envious of the power he possessed and wished that they could become someone like that. Talks about the Crimson Abyss Guild also surfaced. They might not have recognized Liam, but Luna was a very famous celebrity. She gave away Liam's identity, and the gamers in the group informed others about who had helped them out. Immediately, many decided to join the guild. Since Liam had given them clear instructions about what to do, some people even packed their bags and started biking and driving their cars over to the beacon of light in the distance using the last bit of fuel they had saved. It was clear that they needed to help themselves. The government was not moving fast enough. Rather than believing in something that might or might not happen, they decided to check out the address given by the person who had actually saved them. However, this fraction of the crowd was rather less. Many still headed back to their houses and stayed inside, hoping for a rescue team to drop at their doorstep and make all these nightmares disappear. Meanwhile, from a distance, Liam received the news from one of his soul minions that were patrolling the area he had only just left. He wanted to keep an eye on what was happening so he paid attention. So about ten families listened to my words, huh? Not bad for a start, he indifferently said. This was just the beginning. When more people begin to turn into mindless monsters, eventually, they would all have no other choice but to come running to him. Liam particularly did not care about this outcome. These were weaklings and probably would require a lot of training and effort to contribute anything at all to the guild. At the same time, he wanted to give everyone at least a fighting chance. After all, 
He knew very well what it was to be weak and helpless and have nowhere to turn to. Once upon a time, he was also like this. Heck, against certain individuals, he was still not strong enough. In a way, they were all in the same boat, struggling to survive their own battles. So he did not look down upon anyone's weakness. However, despite being offered a chance, if they still did not take any action to survive, then that was no longer his concern. He wanted to pull others up, but that did not mean that he was a bleeding heart. Let's go, Luna. Everything will fall into place eventually. Patting the luxuriously soft white fur, Liam asked the fox to go to a nearby isolated area. It was time for the main course. He wanted to address the main reason why he had taken the time to do all of this. He wanted to test his new mana zombie soul undead. Liam stood in the middle of the big football-sized ground that was covered with wildly grown trees and plants. This place was once a neatly mowed lawn with various structures for the children to play, such as swings and seesaw, but now it resembled a mini forest with the trees and plants completely taking over. Amidst this wilderness, Liam calmly summoned his newly forged soul minion. He had not forgotten to grab the dead soul even though he had put on a show for everyone to see. This was the main reason why he had gone there in the first place. Luna snarled as the new undead immediately materialized in front of the duo. Liam also watched the minion with rapt attention, trying to get a sense of its soul. The duo silently stood and stared at the newly forged undead for several minutes. Not knowing what to do, the newly forged undead as well stared at the duo back, whilst scratching its head with its finger. A few more minutes passed by like this when eventually, Liam let out a sigh and dismissed the minion. His hunch had been correct, but that was all he knew so far. He could tell that it was quite different from the normal soul minions he had forged so far, but he couldn't understand exactly why. It was more like the minion was too weak for it to reveal any secrets to him. The only thing that he could figure out was that even though when alive the mana zombie had lost its mental faculties, when forged into a soul minion, it still obeyed his commands and did not run wild just like it did before dying. So technically it regained some of Ite's mental faculties, or perhaps its soul was not fully degraded like its physical body that as soon as it gained a soul body, it was able to think a little? What I thought was 100% correct. These could definitely become more powerful than normal human minions, but I am not able to figure out how and why this soul is different. Maybe I just need more samples. Liam silently pondered. Mana zombies were different from normal humans in the sense that every part of their body had been infused with pure mana, completely overriding the basic biological wiring of the body. This was why Liam had thought that the soul minions forged from mana zombies were perhaps more powerful when compared to normal soul minions. However, he could only compare this between one human soul minion to another. There wasn't any beast mana zombie at least until the extent that he knew of. Well, I will come back to this when I make more of the same. Instead of wasting any more time, Liam hopped back on Luna and headed back to the base. Even before they landed, they could see that the base was as lively as ever, with more and more people beginning to queue up outside the building. Recruitment was in full swing. The news about the mana zombies was also starting to circulate, along with some rumors. People were more eager than ever to join the guild in order to obtain some beast meat for their families. And since there were strict rules about dungeon raiding teams and membership hierarchy, people were willing to do almost anything at this point to become a part of their guild. They had already missed a chance to join the Crimson Abyss guild back in the tutorial game, and they did not want to commit the same blunder again. When Liam and Luna arrived at the base, they were greeted by an unexpectedly large crowd, not the ones from outside, but rather the ones from inside. Liam, we are no longer able to access the dungeon. Alex folded her arms in front of her chest as she walked forward and mouthed the issue. The two teams had attempted, as usual, to do the daily dungeon runs, but when they tried to step inside the portal, nothing was happening. Instead, they had obtained a system notification that the dungeon was currently being updated. Liam nodded. He had somewhat anticipated that this would occur. Though he had hoped that the update was only specific to him, it looked like it had indeed ended up affecting the whole dungeon structure. That would be my bad. He smiled and explained what had happened and how he had triggered that update. Everyone stared in awe. They were only now struggling to clear the first level of the dungeon, but Liam had not only cleared all five levels, 
he also triggered an update that was probably going to make the dungeon harder. Looking at everyone's blank faces, Liam quickly added, Since these two are not available, we just have to discover new ones. I am sure that there are more dungeon portals. Right? Alex nodded with a bitter smile. The problem was not that. The problem was the glaring difference in strength between Liam and the other members of the guild. She did not know about the others, but she clenched her fists tightly, wanting to close this distance between the two of them. Perhaps she was always fated to remain weaker than this person and could never match up to him. Still, she wanted to change this destiny of hers and become as strong as him. You heard the man. What are we all waiting for? Let's go then. Come on. Come on. Chop. Chop. Pack some supplies. Since we temporarily don't have dungeons to train, let's look for stray beasts nearby and hunt them down, Alex loudly commanded, and the group immediately started making preparations. She then turned towards Liam and asked him, I am assuming you want to take care of the dungeon finding business? Liam nodded in agreement. While they could also search for new dungeons, it would be a waste of manpower and efforts, not to mention very time-consuming. For finding the remaining dungeons, one would have to comb through the entirety of the country even, and would need to cover a lot of distance. It was better that he took care of this personally because it would be far more efficient. With the help of Luna and his soul minions, he would have to at most spend a few days to find new dungeons. In fact, even without his soul minions, he would still be faster than others in this aspect. This was the advantage of having a flying mount. For others it could take several months, and there was a chance they might still return empty-handed. So this was a no-brainer. Liam discussed a few more details with Alex, Ray, and Shin Su. He also warned the group about the ferocity of the stray beasts. When they first emerged out of the portals, they were mostly lower-leveled, but now after these past couple of days, it was possible that some of them underwent mutations and evolutions to become stronger. It was a very real possibility that powerful elites and field boss-level monsters might have evolved. So he warned them about these irregulars before sending them off. Liam then checked the time and noticed that he still had a few hours left before the 24-hour deadline was up so he decided to take a good rest for the remainder of the day. After all, his next opponents wouldn't be normal monsters. If the dungeon were successfully updated, then he would have to start facing higher-level beasts soon, and perhaps those that possess mana cores. So he wanted to be 100% prepared for this encounter, and faced the dungeon while he was at his best. Liam silently walked up the stairs in deep contemplation and then flopped onto the bed to get a good rest. It was still bright outside, so it was an odd time of the day to actually sleep, but he had enough residual tiredness that he immediately fell asleep. However, just after a few minutes, he drifted off into the same recurring nightmare that was his previous life. When Liam woke up again, he was sweating all over. Itch it. He let out a deep breath and pulled the lazy fox lying next to him all bundled up. Luna was still here, and this was a different life, not the one that he dreaded. He smiled a little as he reminded himself of this fact. He looked out the window to observe the city around him, and everything seemed so calm and quiet. Unlike his previous life, where everyone was hiding and fleeing right about now, the current atmosphere was almost as if nothing had happened. It was easy to become complacent and overconfident under such conditions, but Liam knew better than that. With the future that awaited them, even if he grew slightly arrogant, there would only be death waiting. He needed to work harder and prepare more. Let's go, Luna. Time to start grinding. He tossed the fox who was enjoying his warm and cozy hug onto the ground and got out of bed with an aim. It was time to do some work and old-fashioned fighting. After leaving the base, Luna arrived at the entrance of the first dungeon in a jiffy. Right off the bat, Liam could see that the dungeon was different now. Earlier the portal was a pale green color, but now it was a bright emerald color. Even looking from the outside, it gave off a vibe that it was richer and denser in mana. We might be in for a ride. Liam clenched his fist in excitement. He couldn't wait to start fighting as he cracked his knuckles and stepped forward. Luna followed suit and repeated the same movements but it only looked cute and adorable when the fox did the same. As her three tails swayed in the wind, the two of them disappeared into the dungeon. Almost instantly, a thick waft of mana assaulted Liam. He could lick the energy in the air. He looked around observing the surroundings of the dungeon. It was quite similar to the previous one, 
Another cavern network with rocky sand walls on all sides. However, the passageways seemed to be wider and taller. There was also something else in the air, a palpable tension. Though he was standing in a similar place as before, this time it felt completely different. Liam's gaze hardened as he traced his fingers on the wall, feeling the toughness. Just what changes did the dungeon undergo? Before he could finish the thought, loud guttural growls echoed in the passageway, and something big and heavy thudded in the distance. The footsteps grew closer and louder as big figures started to emerge from the shadows. A dozen giant orcs stood in front of Liam, grunting and snorting. And these were not just ordinary orcs. Liam could tell that much from just looking at them. Inspect. Orc Elite. Level 61. The orcs growled and rushed forward, not waiting for Liam to examine them in peace. Every single step they took rumbled across the cavern, and right now they were stampeding toward him with huge maces in their hands. The weapon looked very heavy and sturdy just like its wielder. The spikes on the mace seemed to be made from some sort of special material. They had a reddish glow to them. Apart from the mace, their huge bodies were also covered in other armor which also had the same spikes lined on them. Just judging from the looks these had to be at least magical grade, or even unique grade, and they definitely boosted the strength of these brutes giving them an intimidating aura. Liam couldn't see beyond this point with his current inspect skill. However, it was very clear to him that these orcs were completely different from the orcs he had fought back against in the first version of the same dungeon. Even their skin tone was different as the other orcs were light brown in color, while these were dark brown in color. They were also taller and a lot more muscular with dense blood veins winding like snakes around these thick muscles. Wyverns. Liam directly summoned his strongest unit for clashing with these orcs. He wanted to gauge the strength of these creatures before unleashing the smaller guys. His soul minions were strong, but the only drawback they had was their ability to regenerate. It was not infinite, so it was best to avoid uncertain situations, and his gut feeling told him that this was one. The wyverns swiftly materialized as soon as Liam commanded, and the draconian beasts stood tall against the huge elite orcs. They not only matched the 12 feet height of the orc elites, but they were also equally threatening as they stared down upon the inferior creatures. However, unlike the previous opponents, these orcs surprisingly did not shake and trembled on seeing the wyverns. Instead, they clashed with even more gusto. Their growls dripped with bloodthirstiness as they swung their maces against the soul minions without any fear in their big, reddened eyes. The wyverns naturally did not back down and blocked and parried with them using their claws and tails. There were 14 orcs in total and only 10 wyvern soul minions, but the three-headed wyvern was able to handle more than three by itself. There were also two more wyverns that handled two orc elites each. Smash. Rumble. The fight raged on and to Liam's surprise. The two sides almost clashed evenly. But this was only for a few seconds, after which the three-headed wyvern opened his mouth and flooded the whole cavern with mana-rich attacks. The other wyverns followed the example of the leader, as one by one all of them started casting their magic attacks. Fire, ice, lightning, earthen spikes, and razor-sharp winds assaulted the now-crowded passageway, sending the orc elites into a frenzy. The protective armor they were wearing seemed to repel the attacks to some extent, but after a couple of seconds they quickly gave out. They couldn't handle the intensity of the draconian attacks. Though the orcs were able to match the physical strength of the soul minions, their magic resistance was still inferior. Perhaps they might be able to withstand the magic attacks from other people, but the intensity of draconian magic was slightly stronger. The attacks started piling up, and they started losing chunks of their health. Soon the fight became one-sided, and the orc elites started getting pushed back. Liam watched this scene with his eyes narrowed. The battle was progressing smoothly for now with the advantage firmly rested on their side, but what concerned him was that they had only barely started. This was the first floor of the new and upgraded dungeon, and the wyverns were already pushed to such an extent that they had to rely on their innate attacks? Just how strong were these orcs, and what did the other floors of the updated dungeon hold for him? Liam grinned as he licked his lips in anticipation. He had a feeling that he would have to personally step in and fight today. He looked forward to it. After the first set of the orc elites crumbled and fell dead, Liam received a bunch of system notifications. Ding. 
You have gained 100 experience points. Ding. You have gained 100 experience points. Ding. You have gained 100 experience points. I guess the experience points distribution is as brutal as ever. He chuckled wryly on seeing the abysmal numbers. The experience points he needed to level up were still the same as what was needed back in the tutorial game. So to see any progress was going to take a while. This was nothing new, and Liam brushed it aside. He came to the more important part, which was making more soul minions. These orc elites would make fine soldiers. He clicked his tongue. He then immediately tried to grasp the souls of the orc elites who had fallen down in front of him. But to his surprise, something was different. Rather, something was missing. Liam frowned and tried a few more times again. However, the end result was still the same. Unmistakably, all the beings in front of him lacked any sort of soul. Or perhaps the soul was bound to something in a manner that prevented him from sensing it at all. No matter what the reason was, it was clear that he wouldn't be able to make any of these orc elites into his minions. Liam could only watch as the corpses started to disappear one after the other, and soon the passageway was empty. That's disappointing but fine. Let's just go in. He clicked his tongue and shrugged. The orc elites would have made really good soldiers, but he did not have any complaints. At least now, he was able to start pushing his level again, and even though his army wasn't growing in size, it was steadily growing in quality and strength. The group walked inside when Liam abruptly stopped in his tracks. While trying to forge the orc souls, he had almost missed something else important. He turned around and collected the small shiny object on the ground that had rolled to the edge of the wall. It was a mana core. One of the orc elites had actually dropped a mana core. Liam pocketed the mana core in contemplation and then turned around to look properly. And just like he had guessed, there were two more similar spherical objects lying inconspicuously on the ground. Since these were low-grade mana cores, they did not possess that much of a shine, so it was relatively easy to overlook them. Huh. I almost missed three mana cores. Liam laughed as he picked all three mana cores and pocketed them. Apart from the staggering improvement in strength and constitution of the dungeon mobs, this had to be the second important change to the dungeon. These dungeons were notorious in his previous life for their terrible drop rate, but now three mana cores had dropped just from this single mob. This was quite a good bounty. Liam grinned, and Luna as well flashed an equally big smile. The group then excitedly pushed on forward. After the first group of orc elites fell, Liam ordered the wyverns to keep charging ahead. Not long after, they were met with another mob. This time as well, there were about 15 orcs in total, and they were all elites of the same caliber. The fight once again started in full swing. The orcs growled loudly, but the wyverns opened their mouths to match them with equally terrifying roars. The silent cavern became filled with all sorts of screeching sounds as attacks flooded the space a second time. Along with the wyverns, Liam also summoned Crawford, Dimitri, the six winged lion, and the striped white tiger, as he wanted these elite soul minions to continue growing as well. With this, the two teams were somewhat evenly numbered, so the fight this time was even faster. So only Crawford and the wyverns are able to take on these elites easily. The rest are still struggling. Liam observed from the side. Luna nodded as if she was seriously listening to him. A couple of minutes later, the second fight was also over. Confirming his earlier theory, yet again there were four mana cores on the ground. Not bad. Not bad at all. Liam picked them up and pocketed them. The group then continued making their way through the dungeon floor, cutting down dozens of orc elites at a time. Soon almost an hour passed by, and they had put down almost a hundred or so orcs, but still, there was no sign of the boss's room. This place is huge. Woot. Liam whistled as he picked up another two mana cores. With this, we gained a total of 33 mana cores, three items, and one weapon. This dungeon is really very generous, don't you think so, Luna? The fox bobbed her head cutely. The group pushed ahead, wandering around the dungeon for some more time. Just like that, another hour also passed by, but there were only more orc elites. There was no end in sight for the dungeon. Liam frowned. If not for the mana cores and the items dropping every now and then, and the constant flow of the experience points, he would have directly assumed that they were in some sort of never-ending illusion. But they were still progressing and collecting loot which was very real. 
so he could only conclude that, this is one big-ass dungeon. Maybe we should speed up the process. Liam turned to look at the little fox, who was lazily yawning. She seemed as if she was really beginning to appreciate the free experience points that were raining down on her without her having to lift a finger. Madam, I am talking about you. Would your highness be willing to fight a little? Liam chuckled. Luna rubbed her snout as if she was wronged, but she quickly nodded her head. Liam then broke the group into three teams. He also summoned a few other elves and barbarians who were over level 50 to pad the numbers. The traditional method would be to progress in the dungeon one mob after another, but Liam did not plan on adhering strictly to those rules. These elite orcs were still not enough to challenge him. They needed to crank up the pace so that they could finally face a worthy opponent. Now that they had pretty much confirmed that there were no more hidden surprises on this floor of the dungeon, he decided to run through the rest of the dungeon as fast as they physically could. Another two hours later, Liam had gone all out except for getting into the field himself and slaughtering the orcs left and right with his own hands, but it looked like he had still underestimated the size of the dungeon floor. Six hours. He laughed as he sat down on the dungeon floor, looking at the now empty space all around them. They had slaughtered about a thousand orc elites in the past six hours and had finally wiped the floor of the dungeon clean. Though they hadn't come across any dungeon boss specifically, Liam was pretty sure that this floor of the dungeon was picked clean from top to bottom. Now the question was, how to go to the next floor from here? Liam had methodically cracked the walls one after the other right from the beginning, but another passageway had still not opened up. Was there perhaps a change in the mechanism? He mulled over this thought as he absent-mindedly punched the wall he was currently leaning against. This was the far end of the dungeon and the absolute last wall as well. And just as he punched it, surprise, surprise, the rocks gave way, shattering under the impact of his attack and crumbling down to reveal a passageway. I guess there is no change in the mechanism after all. Liam chuckled and stood up. 200 mana cores, 20 item drops, 5 weapon drops, and about 50,000 experience points. Tallying the total gains, he entered the dark passageway which led upstairs. Time to go to the next floor. On the current floor, they had run into orc elites ranging from level 50 to 65. So Liam could already guess the level of opponents they were going to face on the next floor. As a precaution, he even dismissed all the soul minions, except for the wyverns. The group climbed the winding stairs and turned around as they came face to face with the first of the next set of opponents. Hulking Orc, level 68. Hulking Orc, level 71. Hulking Orc, level 67. If the previous orcs were huge and thick, then these ones were even more so, with everything on their body bulging, especially the big package at the front, which was jammed right in the face of one of the wyverns. The draconian beast roared in rage as he lashed out at the orc, beginning with the same big package. The other minions also joined in the rumble. However, the fight was not as smooth as the previous ones. These hulking orcs were bigger and thicker, and their physical defense was impressive. Moreover, they were a hair above the wyverns when it came to their physical prowess. It almost looked as if they had trained their body to the extreme, perhaps even to perfection. Every single punch and swing of their weapon contained explosive power. The wyverns were only barely able to match the attacks and were even slowly getting pushed back. Should I maybe intervene? Liam pondered, but the next second, the wyverns proved that they weren't draconic beasts just for show. Since the physical attacks were raining down on them without stopping and much faster than they could counter, they switched to different tactics. The ones at the front blocked the attacks and dodged everything to the best of their abilities, while the ones at the back spammed their magic attacks relentlessly. Just like the physical defense, the magic defense of the hulking orcs was also quite impressive. They were taking far less damage when compared to the elites. Some of this could be attributed to the items on the orcs, but it was clear that their physical abilities were top-notch. Liam looked at this and in the end, decided to add four more minions to this mix. He summoned Crawford, Dimitri, the Six-Winged Lion, and the Striped White Tiger. With this, the balance finally shifted to their side. The three hulking orcs that showed up in the beginning were joined by three more, resulting in a total of six opponents, which now the soul minions vastly outnumbered by eight. The fight became completely skewed, 
with just six orcs on one side and fourteen soul minions on the other side, ten of which were draconic beasts. Though the fight took longer, eventually, it broke into the side of the draconic beasts. The wyverns claimed their resounding victory, throwing their heads back and roaring loudly while looking up as if they were challenging the heavens themselves. Luna also seemed to have been inspired by this fight as the little fox snarled and waved her paws as if she was also ready to jump in and fight, showing everyone who was the boss. In the same line, both the lion and the tiger tried to do something similar, only for their actions to come out in an awkward fashion. These beasts were typically the kings wherever they went, but in this group, they had no other choice except to take the second string shirt. Meanwhile, only Liam had a pensive look on his face. He picked up the two mana cores that had fallen in deep thought. The fight went fine. He had received almost the same amount of experience points, and the soul minions had also managed to come out on top in the end, but there was one thing that was bothering him. These orcs were much stronger than any level 70 monster he had faced back in the tutorial game. Why was this? What exactly were these creatures? And how did they originate and enter this world? If the tutorial game was another world, then did these creatures also reside in another world? More importantly, what happened to their souls? Liam tried sensing the souls of these hulking orcs, but it was useless. Once again, he wasn't able to generate any soul minions from these guys. The more he thought about everything, the more confusing it became. He couldn't make heads or tails of the situation in front of him. It was as if he was in the middle of a vast puzzle with only a few pieces visible to him. He felt blind. He couldn't see beyond what was given to him. Liam hated it. He watched the huge orc bodies disappear into nothingness and stared at the same space for a couple of seconds before letting out a sigh. Though it was frustrating at the moment, he had no other choice but to ignore some things, at least for the moment. Otherwise, if he overthought everything, it might have the opposite effect and hamper his growth. He needed to focus on the thing that was in front of him. He needed to improve his strength to a level that he would finally be able to understand these things. Let's go. He ordered the group to step into the next floor. After taking down the first mob, Liam ordered Luna to join the fight, and the group began clearing the next floor in full swing as fast as they could. The physical prowess of the hulking orcs took a little time to get used to, but eventually, the group got the hang of it, and they began clearing the mobs one after another. This floor was bigger than the previous one and all the mobs consisted only of hulking orcs. Liam did not bother summoning the rest of the soul minions, as they wouldn't be able to deal with the blows from the orcs. One hit, and they would be decimated. To speed up the process, he also participated in the fights this time. He cracked his knuckles and took out the black dragon sword, which he hadn't held in a while. The sword rested silently in his hands. Liam couldn't help but roll his eyes at the weapon. It was this same weapon that had caused him so much pain just a while ago, but now it looked so innocent and docile. The dragon souls within the weapon also seemed suspiciously quiet. It was almost as if they were trying to get their strength back so they could attack him with all their power when the last seal was broken. Well, we will see about it then. Liam grinned and dashed forward at the group of five hulking orcs, his eyes glistening with excitement. It looked like he was about to hug his old childhood friends. He dodged the attacks coming in hot from the left and the right and then dove down as he slashed at the big guy in front of him. Liam felt the blade of the sword cut through the thick, muscular, fleshy mass and the grin on his face widened. It was good to keep getting free experience points without doing anything personally, but getting his hands dirty felt much better. He slashed at the big guy repeatedly and made quick work of the orc. After a few seconds, he quickly got used to the hulking orc's fighting pattern and the rest of the fight went even smoother. After the fifth mob, he was almost matching the wyverns and Luna's speed as they took down the orcs at the same pace. But this quickly changed again as Liam overtook the other group at the end of the first hour. His speed was much faster as he started taking down the hulking orcs in just a few blows. Despite that, the rest of the dungeon was still long and never-ending. After twelve hours, the total number of hulking orcs tallied to a whopping twelve hundred, and finally, the dungeon floor was emptied out. That's another 300 mana cores, 30 items, and 4 weapons. Liam licked his lips as he walked over to the dead-end wall that marked the end of the long cavern network. He then lifted his hand casually and punched through the wall, revealing the passageway for the next floor. 
as if the monsters inside were waiting just for him. They came forward to greet him as soon as they heard the sound of the boundary wall crashing down. Liam stared at the bizarre creatures standing in front of him, and the grin on his face stretched from ear to ear. You guys will make perfect stepping stones for me. Today was going to be a good day. He dove forward and initiated the fight, with Luna and the wyverns joining him in the action. The group then began another long, arduous grind that lasted several hours. After the hulking orcs, there was the titan orcs, which were creatures of physical perfection. A single hit almost took away one-sixth of Liam's health. They also had very high physical defense and magic defense. There were about 2,000 of these titan orcs, which were followed by an entirely different type of orc on the next floor, the E Abomination orcs. These big guys were 30 feet tall, the same height as the titan orc, but they were enormous in size and not exactly lean and muscular. They were flabby and round, with fat and flesh abundant on their grotesque bodies, which had all sorts of weird, irregular features. Some of them had three heads, some of them had five heads, and some of them had extra hands and even extra legs. They were truly horrendous to look at. Only their faces remotely resembled those of orcs. And it was not just their physical appearance. These abomination orcs were quite nasty in that their attacks varied greatly. They had a range of both physical attacks and magic attacks in their arsenal, and they threw these at Liam and the soul minions at random times. Moreover, the titan orcs were around level 70 to 80, while the abomination orcs were around level 80 to 90. The difficulty of the dungeon floors was now really starting to pick up. When Liam reached the abomination orcs, he was so evenly matched with these grotesque creatures that he could no longer power level with his soul minions. Both for the titan orcs and the abomination orcs, he had to take the center stage and get down and dirty with his own hands while the soul minions stood at the back and provided long-range support to merely help him in the fight. He added a few more minions to the mix and basically used anyone who could stand far away and shoot an attack forward. He personally acted as a tank for these guys, keeping all the orcs' attention to himself. Only Luna was still standing side by side with him in the fight as she tried to distract the orcs by using a combination of her blur skill and her fire affinity. She roasted the orcs left and right without getting tired, showing her full potential. However, even with her help, the fight was extremely tiresome and grueling. On the bright side, the experience points were higher and the drop rate was improving. While Liam was busy with the orcs, the rest of the group slowly started to spread out and take charge of the city. They split into two groups and started expanding their circle in two different directions. But they soon realized that Liam's warning was not for naught. As they headed deeper into the outskirts, where every single beast hadn't already been cleared, they started running into some unexpected elites and strong beasts. Despite the danger and difficulty presented by these beasts, the group gained a substantial amount of experience points from defeating them. But the drops were non-existent, and there were also no mana cores. At least the beast meat obtained from them was extremely nutritious. Unlike Liam, the two groups couldn't simply pump and dump. They did not have any soul minions working for them at the moment. They had to personally take care of the resources. Alex had already taken this into account, and she arranged for some means of transportation and reliable workers after talking with Derek's sister, Lily. These people followed the two groups around on big trucks and helped in the loading and unloading of beast meat when the fight was finished. This way, they were also able to cover more distance. Even though there were times when it was inconvenient, such as when the road became clogged because drivers had stopped their vehicles and left them in a chaotic state, it was, by far, the most convenient and effective option available. In this way, the two scouting and hunting groups continued their expansion mission for the next couple of days. Their presence was like a parade on the street as more people began to learn about the new group forming at the heart of the city. Some individuals even boldly approached passersby in order to inquire about the situation. They took the information with a healthy dose of skepticism, at least up until the point where they heard the name Crimson Abyss, with weird rumors spreading about some sort of apocalypse and some people even claiming that the game world had merged with the real world. Many survivors decided to check out the so-called Crimson Abyss headquarters. Meanwhile, more mana zombies had also started to emerge. This further led to more people flocking towards Crimson Abyss. Soon, the base became extremely busy, with various people handling various tasks and duties around the clock. 
Thankfully, eating beast meat not only provided them with the additional strength they required but also assisted everyone in remaining in the best condition possible, with their physical and mental capabilities operating in high gear throughout. Among this hubbub and busy atmosphere, only a few people noticed that something was odd. An important figure was missing in action at least for three straight days. No, I really haven't seen Mr. Liam. Lily apologetically shook her head and answered the redhead, who was nervously biting her lips. Where the hell did he go? Is he all right? Alex sighed as her chest heaved, letting out a deep breath. She weirdly felt restless after not having been in contact with Liam for so long. Her attractive features remained scrunched up in worry for a few good minutes when she forcefully reminded herself, What am I worrying for? He is a monster. He will be fine. There shouldn't be anyone on this entire planet who is capable of hurting him. Her words were spoken out loud, but Lily knew that they were not meant for her. Alex was simply trying to comfort herself by saying these things. Okay, thank you. The redhead nodded and left after a couple more seconds. Despite all the logical assurances she had given, she still seemed worried. Seeing the woman walk away half absent mindedly, Lily couldn't help but smile bitterly. This was not the person who had come to visit her today about this matter. Mei Mei, Shun Yu, and Ning, she had also come to her earlier with the exact same set of questions, all wanting to know if Liam had returned to the base at all after he left to explore the updated dungeons a couple of days ago. They all had the same look of worry and concern on their faces and were extremely distressed that they hadn't heard back from him. Our guild leader has a lot of women looking out for him. Lily couldn't help but chuckle to herself. She then sighed as her gaze wandered to the skies, searching for the familiar sight of the three-tailed snow-white fox. Please be all right, Mr. Liam, she muttered under her breath. What she didn't realize was that, at the moment, she too had the exact same look of concern. Unfortunately, the second day also passed by without any sign of this person. Finally, at the end of the third day, a fox lazily drifted across the sky and landed with a yawn in front of the hotel. From atop the fox, Liam rolled down, his body covered in numerous cuts and injuries. Lily almost shrieked in fright on seeing this appearance of his. She was scared stiff, and her face turned pale. The all-powerful Liam was actually hurt? Just what had he been up to for the past three days? Was something worse coming their way? Was the world going to end? Numerous questions ran through her mind as she rushed forward to support the man whom everyone looked up to. She did not want to see him stumble and fall, not in front of these people or in front of anyone else. He was their pillar of support and he needed to stay strong. For the sake of her brother, he needed to become even stronger. Lily felt guilty that her thoughts were a little selfish but she couldn't help it. Her situation was like that. This man in front of her was the only person capable of bringing her brother back, if at all. I am fine. Don't worry. She heard Liam mumble, but she continued to cling closely to him and helped him to a suit on the ground floor of the hotel. Lily stared at the man currently in her room, lying on the bed that she had been sleeping on for the past few days. All of the main guild members had their rooms upstairs on the top floors of the hotel and they hadn't yet returned from the hunting trip. So Lily had to bring the big boss over to her room to rest. It was not like she could drag him by herself all the way over to the penthouse suite, and the person seemed in desperate need of some rest. Considering all of these, she did not hesitate and immediately brought Liam over to her room to make him comfortable, but now she was feeling very embarrassed. She hadn't even gotten around to changing the sheets yet. The bed was probably smelling like her. Or worse, it was probably stinky. Lily's mind was racing, and her thoughts were all over the place. But when she looked at the person's body and saw all the wounds, she quickly snapped out of it and scolded her naivete. The person was injured. She needed to help him apply some first aid instead of foolishly standing around. She nervously adjusted her glasses and took a deep breath. She then hurriedly rushed out and brought all the supplies that she needed. She personally did not have any experience in this field, but she had watched plenty of people do the same both before and after the world had changed. Since not many people were around at the moment, she decided to do whatever she could to help him for now. At the very least, clean the wounds so they can heal faster. She arranged everything near Liam and then, with a gulp, started removing the wet, sticky clothes from his body. 
Lily gasped lightly as she could immediately see the lean, taut muscles that were hidden under the shirt. Even if it was currently riddled with numerous injuries, she had never laid eyes on a more perfect body. She did not know why, but she felt very nervous, and her face heated up. Her hands were shaking. She had been around attractive men before. However, the person right now in front of her was completely different. He exuded a different kind of charm. Perhaps this was the allure of a strong man. In a world like this, the man was strong, powerful, and dependable, perhaps even indomitable. Who wouldn't feel attracted to someone like him? She let out a sigh and calmed herself first. She then bent down to finally start. Lily had barely placed her hand when the door of the suite banged open. Is he back? Alex rushed in, shouting at the top of her lungs. Right behind her, Mei Mei, Shun Yu, Ray, Shin Su, and a few others were standing. Lily suddenly felt like a thief who had been caught stealing. Ah. Uh, she stared at the group with her lips parted. Luckily for her, no one paid any attention to her. Everyone only saw Liam and Luna sprawled messily on the bed, and they rushed in to check on the duo. Is he all right? Is he hurt? Mei Mei worriedly looked. Liam. Liam. What happened? Did you fight against someone dangerous? Alex was not so gentle and started rolling him around to check just how severely he was injured. The others gathered around the bed as well, all examining the injured person from top to bottom. Lily smiled bitterly as she took a step back. She clearly did not belong here. She should just leave the room and give everyone some privacy. But as soon as she turned around, she saw a breathtakingly beautiful face right behind her. Thank you very much for taking care of him. Shin Yu bowed politely with a small smile. I didn't do much. Lily became even more embarrassed. Shin Yu acknowledged her with a nod before moving on to clear the crowded area. Lily watched the woman stand up assertively, like a mother protecting her cub, and with just a few words, she had everyone leaving. Lily couldn't believe it. Shin Yu always gave off the impression of being gentle and shy, but at this moment, she was anything but that. Lily wondered if she could also be strong like this person one day. With a smile, she left the room. The rest of the group also followed her. Clearly, Liam wasn't seriously injured, so even though everyone was curious as to what had happened, they did not dare disturb his rest. Only Shinyu stayed back and helped Liam change his clothes, get cleaned up, and apply first aid. She then patiently waited on the chair by the side for him to wake up. By the time Liam opened his eyes, it was already the morning of the next day. He saw Shun Yu sitting up, her face tiredly resting on her hand. She even had her eyes closed, and a little bit of drool had leaked from the corner of her lips. Liam laughed as he saw the enchantress in such a state, which didn't happen very often. As if she sensed it, Shun Yu immediately snapped her eyes open. You are awake. How are you doing? She quickly got up and rushed over to him. Liam smiled and wiped the drool from her lips. Why did you sit over there? You should have just sat near me or just slept next to me. Shin Yu immediately started blushing. The next second, she realized what had happened. You were changing the topic. Are you fine now? Does it hurt anywhere? Please tell me what happened. This person always carried all of his load all alone on his shoulders. She knew that she wasn't strong enough to share his burdens with him but at the least, she wanted to be a little helpful. Liam smiled again and pulled the girl closer to him, kissing her soft lips. I am fine now. He grinned and pulled her even closer, making her sit on his lap. He held her tightly close to his chest, feeling her warmth spread across his body as her hands wrapped around him. He let out a small sigh. He had been fighting nonstop for 72 hours and was completely exhausted. He was also injured slightly in a few places, but none of that mattered as long as the ones he loved remained safe. To protect these few, he would go even further, even if it was to the depths of hell. He rested his head on Sean Yu's shoulder and started telling her everything about the dungeon. Shin Yu gasped lightly. So the dungeon monsters here are a lot stronger? Yes, but it is a good thing. Liam smiled and leaned back. At least now, he was finally moving forward. He stretched his hand, but the next second he regretted it. All of his muscles were aching. Without a healing potion, the recovery was going to take some time. Does it hurt a lot? Shin Yu blushed a little as she moved closer. No. It should be fine tomorrow. Shin Yu nodded. 
She fidgeted with her hands a bit as if she was hesitating, and she then gulped lightly and started unbuttoning her shirt. Liam's eyes widened slightly as he saw the shy girl behave so brazenly, but he was not an idiot or a saint to say no to it. He calmly continued leaning back and watching the show. The first two buttons revealed her slender neck and flawless skin, along with a little of her soft, enticing mounds. Shen Yu's hands then paused a little as she became far too embarrassed. She thought that she would take the initiative, but this was way too difficult than she had anticipated. Liam laughed as he saw the girl's hands trembling, but he did not even budge a little and continued simply watching the show with a teasing look. In the end, Shen Yu bit her lips and started hurriedly undoing the rest of her buttons without ever looking up, even for a single glance. Her shirt opened up completely, revealing the entirety of her well-endowed assets. Except for the plain pink innerwear that barely contained her breasts, she was completely naked waist up. Liam. She faintly mumbled before lowering her head in embarrassment. Her cheeks were fully pink, and her neck was also becoming flushed. Not able to bear it any longer, she bit her lips and lunged forward to hug the man tightly. Liam was not in the mood to tease her any longer and quickly lifted her up to throw her into the bed. Shen Yu yelped in surprise, but her lips were quickly sealed. Liam pressed his lips firmly against hers and inserted his tongue inside her mouth. He immediately felt the hands that were wrapped around him tighten up, and he began to move his tongue even more. The atmosphere in the room slowly began to heat up. He continued to suck her lips and her mouth for a good while, and when he released her, Shen Yu was slightly panting, her eyes watery. The woman looked extremely seductive. At the same time, he could see just how much she loved and cared about him, giving her an innocent charm even though she had come to him all on her own. I am sorry we don't spend enough time together. Liam brushed her soft, silky hair gently as he stared into her beautiful, alluring eyes. I. Shen Yu felt very embarrassed to talk in this position when her every reaction was observed by the person above him. I don't mind. She somehow squeezed a reply out. Liam smiled and closed her lips again as his hands began to move through her body, starting with her soft, fleshy mounds. He removed the pink cloth that was covering the twin peaks and squeezed them gently and firmly as he continued moving his tongue inside her mouth. He felt the woman underneath him tremble slightly as he moved his hands from the soft, elastic mounds to her waist and then lower. He hiked up the skirt she was wearing as he rubbed the area between her legs. Shen Yu trembled again. She was already wet and was panting heavily. Liam grinned and pulled up to lower his pants. He then raised her legs as he removed her skirt and her thin panties that were already soaked. He ran his hands along her long, slender legs, feeling the soft, warm skin and taking in the sight in front of him. Shen Yu squirmed uncomfortably and closed her eyes in embarrassment, not willing to look at him directly. Liam smiled teasingly as he began to stroke her soft area, taking in more of her reactions. She looked way too cute to be an enchantress. She moaned lightly her body twitching a little. He could feel some more wetness on his fingers. Liam did not hold back any longer and pushed forward to start the attack. He kissed her lips and began to first move slowly inside her. Ah. Shen Yu gasped and shuddered and dug her hands into his back. Seeing that she was becoming more and more excited, Liam increased his speed, and his mouth moved to her breast as he sucked the soft, big mounds and licked her nipples. He devoured the alluring body underneath him as it was meant to be, savoring all of the enticing charms and curves, further stimulating her. Several moans began to slip from the slightly parted lips. He began to thrust harder and faster as his own desire was building up. His hands grabbed the soft elastic bottom and pushed into her with urgency. And just as things were about to explode, he leaned forward and kissed her firmly once again. Ah. Shen Yu moaned loudly as the climax ensued. However, right at this time, the door of the room banged open. A redhead barged in hurriedly. Liam, what happened? Are you fine now? As soon as she noticed that he was awake, she blurted out instantly but only after a second. The scene in front of her completely registered in her brain. Gudong. Alex stood completely frozen as she stared at the two naked bodies in front of her. Everything was fully revealed in front of her nothing hidden. Her face turned blank, and smoke started coming out of her head. 
I. She continued to simply stand and stare, unable to move her body or look away. You didn't knock. Liam was the first to respond, as he smiled bitterly and pulled himself out. Ah. Uh. Shin Yu then grabbed a blanket lying nearby and covered herself up, but what she did not expect to see was a fox who was sleeping soundly under the blanket. Had they actually done everything with the fox right next to them? She looked at the fox and then at Alex, not knowing what to be more embarrassed about. She wanted to bury her head somewhere. Liam, on the other hand, was completely shameless. He was stark naked, but he didn't care about that. He casually took his time and walked across the room to get a towel. Anything urgent? He asked as he wrapped the towel around him. Alex shook her head blankly. She stared at the two people in front of her and then at the fox, only to silently turn back and leave. Alex stood there for a second with her jaw on the ground. She then silently turned back and left, closing the door behind her. Following her lead, Shen Yu also hurriedly tried to run to the bathroom, but Liam quickly grabbed her and pushed her back onto the bed. Where are you running? Let's finish what we started. Kyahaha. The girl yelped and giggled at the same time. He threw the towel and blanket both on top of the fox and then resumed what they were doing before the interruption. Meanwhile, outside the door. Asshole. Bastard. Jerk. Can't you f asterisk king lock the door? Alex grumbled loudly, gritting her teeth as she stomped away in a huff. Ray and a few other guild members who walked past her saw this and quickly made themselves scarce as they had never seen the woman so furious. What happened to make her so mad? Ray wondered, but he continued walking away in the opposite direction at the same time, not daring to come on her warpath. A couple of hours later, Liam called for everyone as they assembled together for lunch. He then explained the new and updated dungeon version to everyone, warning them not to enter just yet. The meeting went on for a while, during which Alex remained silent. On the other hand, Ray and others had several questions for Liam, as they couldn't believe that the same dungeon had suddenly become so difficult. Bro, were you really not able to one-shot your way through the floors? Huh. No one has that kind of absolute strength. Liam shook his head helplessly. Since this was as good a time as any, he also added another warning to everyone. Since this dungeon is so far above my skill level, I fear that other future disasters we might face would also be out of my league. We should be prepared for everything. How is the boundary expansion coming along? The group discussed some logistics for a while, after which Liam decided to visit the magic shop. He had obtained a lot of items recently and wanted to check just how much they were worth. In these situations, his previous life knowledge was pretty much useless. He was a pauper back then when compared to his current condition. Liam directly walked out of the hotel and summoned one of his undead to carry him. Just like him, Luna had also exhausted herself back on the fourth floor of the dungeon fighting with the Abomination Orcs, and she was still asleep. So he did not disturb the fox. He simply placed some food in the room and left for the magic shop. Surprisingly, this time when he entered the shop, he did not see the familiar face rushing forward to greet him. The shop manager, Tilia, was nowhere to be seen. This is interesting, Liam muttered under his breath, but he did not particularly care about it. After all, it has already been established that the fairy was not going to help in any manner, at least for now. So he did not bother wasting any more time wondering about her actions and went straight to one of the counters. Hello, Mr. Liam. How may I help you? It looked like they were still treating him with respect, even though the main person was not there to attend to him. I would like to sell an item. Liam took out one of the elite orc's shoulder pieces that had dropped on the first floor of the new dungeon. Items were precious, as currently, they did not have the knowledge or ability to manufacture these kinds of reinforced magic items by themselves. So he did not plan on selling more. The one that he offered to sell was merely to gauge its value. The fairy nodded and accepted the shoulder pad with a slight look of awe in her eyes. This item is of very high quality, Mr. Liam. She even praised him. She then opened her system interface, placed the item within it, and returned a hefty pouch. That will be 100 mana cores, Mr. Liam. Liam's face twitched as he received the pouch. What the hell was this? Hearing her praise the item, he had hoped for a lot more, but this was a bit disappointing. At this rate, even if he were to sell all the items, it won't be enough to settle the debt. Was this all designed in such a manner that they would forever remain broke? 
With a sigh, Liam narrowed his eyes and asked again. Then, can I take a look at the items for sale? Sure, Mr. Liam. The fairy immediately opened up a screen with a smile. Liam's gaze dragged on the list from one item to another, only to end with a bitter smile the next moment. It was just as he thought. The fairies were buying back the items at a dirt cheap price, while selling items of a similar level for a hundred times that same price. If this was not daylight robbery, then what was? Instead of purchasing anything from this shop, it was better to grind away in the dungeon. Liam did not sell any other items and simply took out the store credit card and waved at the fairy's face. I will pay back some of my debt. He then took out about 500 mana cores from his spatial artifact and heaped them all unceremoniously on the table. Again, the fairy had a shocked look on her face as she scrambled quickly to pick up all the mana cores that were now falling to the crystal clean floor. As soon as Liam took out the mana cores, the entire shop became quiet, and both the fairies and humans alike looked at him with shock and awe. No one had expected him to possess so many mana cores. Both the parties were well aware of just how difficult it was to obtain these mana cores, so they swallowed at the sight of so many heaped in front of them. However, the person Liam most anticipated still did not pay attention to him. Tilia was once again nowhere to be seen. Liam decided to ignore it again. Let me see just how long you remain indifferent. He grinned as he walked out of the store. He then summoned his undead condor again and hopped on top of the beast. Before falling asleep, he had once again asked his minions to surveil the city and the towns and villages around the city for more signs of mana zombies. So now he had quite a bit of work cut out for him. He started paying visits to all his soul minions that called for him one after the other, stopping and forging mana zombies at every spawn point. His limit was yet to be reached, so he continued this grind for the rest of the day, only stopping when he had finally run out of mana zombies. Liam then stopped at a quiet place before once again beginning to inspect these soul minions. However, it looked like his luck for the day had run out. He was not able to discern anything at all. I still can't figure these out. He sighed and gave up after a while. He summoned the condor again and decided to return to the hotel base for a hearty dinner. He planned to take the entire day off before attempting the next floor of the dungeon. Otherwise, he had a feeling that things might become too much for him to handle. The first floor, or rather the sixth floor, had orc elites ranging from level 50 to 65. The seventh floor had hulking orcs ranging from level 65 to 75. The eighth one had titan orcs that were of level 75 to 85, while the ninth floor had abomination orcs that were around 85 to 95. With the help of his soul minions, Liam was able to tackle the titan orcs somewhat, but when he ran into the abomination orcs, he had to go all out in all seriousness. He had even equipped himself with various items, and had also used the Black Dragon Sword in his fight against these orcs, using some of the strongest moves in his arsenal. However, he still ended up getting injured and only barely making it. In fact, he was not even sure that he finished the entirety of the ninth floor. So the next trip to the dungeon was undoubtedly going to be much more challenging. Maybe I should first test the waters with the other one. He quietly pondered as the condor elegantly glided down to land near the hotel base. Coincidentally, a group of people were leaving the hotel building at the exact same moment to scout and hunt for more beasts. Shin Yu as well was standing with them. Liam smiled as he saw the beautiful woman waving at him shyly. He hopped off the condor and walked to her in long strides with a loaded grin. But out of nowhere, a white figure pushed her aside and flung herself to him instead. Luna jumped on him and greeted him with a sweet and adorable smile of her own. I missed you, master. Liam shook his head helplessly as he pulled the fox off of him. Are you all headed out? He turned to pay attention to the group. Everyone from the main team was there. Alex rolled her eyes at him. She had clearly not put the earlier incident out of her mind. Maymay came forward and gave him a hug. Brother, you better still have my crown. I am close to reaching level 20. Liam patted her with a nod. He chatted with the group for a bit, inquiring where everyone was going. He then waved goodbye and walked inside. He had half a mind to stop Shinyu from leaving, but he didn't want to hold her back too much. They were anyways going to return in a few hours, so perhaps he could meet her again before heading to the second dungeon for training. With a lazy grin, he walked up the stairs, 
had some grilled meat and washed it down with a few drinks. He held the next drink and clinked it with Luna as the duo stared outside the window and silently savored the taste of the beer. It was nice to drink a little after a hard day's work, and it had been a while since he had worked this hard. Though it felt counterintuitive, he really looked forward to going back to that dungeon and testing his limits with whatever waited for him at the next level. He knew it was going to be painful and probably life-threatening. He might even have to sacrifice a few of his soul minions in order to escape from the dungeon. Yet he still very much looked forward to it. Sometime later, the duo once again fell asleep, with Liam sprawled across the giant king-sized bed of his luxurious penthouse suite and Luna's ass sprawled all over his face. The two of them were sleeping so peacefully that they did not look like they were going to wake up anytime soon, but suddenly a loud bang resounded in the room. Barely a few hours had passed by when Alex barged in once again. Liam groggily rubbed his eyes, once again staring at the hot-headed redhead, whose chest was heaving up and down. Unexpectedly, this time she seemed to have more important things on her mind. We have a problem. Alex panted as she looked right at him. Liam immediately became sober and got out of bed as he could tell that this was something urgent and probably troublesome, as the redhead had even ignored their previous interaction to run to him for help. What happened? His interest was piqued. Was it Crawford? His mind immediately went to that petty old man who was probably still hellbent on destroying him and claiming back his tower. However, the next second, Alex opened her mouth and said something unexpected. A new type of zombie, I think? We were clearing a huge beast horde in the east when we ran into two other people. They were getting overwhelmed by the beasts, so we rushed ahead to help them, but it was too late. They were dead by the time we arrived. If they were dead already, then what was the problem? It's their corpses. The two guys looked like, um, they had been dead for several days, Alex explained awkwardly. Look, if there were a working phone, I would have taken a photo for you. You have to trust my words. They really looked weird. Dead and desiccated. Okay. Liam nodded. I believe you, but you guys should stay away from that beast horde then. There is probably some sort of poisonous beast in that area. Those could be tricky, and we don't have any antidotes or healers yet. Best to play it safe. However, Alex shook her head. What Liam said was probably what she should have done, but they had followed the vehicle tracks of the two guys instead. There is a bigger camp in that area. What? We were only able to scout a little, but a group of people had gathered in that area. They looked a little like the mana zombies, except I saw some of them having horns on their heads. Could it be some sort of demon virus? Liam remained silent. Whatever they might be, they have really good senses. Alex sighed. What happened? We were almost caught. We escaped by using the beast horde, but it was a very close save. Alex lowered her head in guilt. I am sorry. I should have turned back earlier. I didn't think we would run into anything like this. It's fine. Liam nodded. You did good escaping from there. Stay here and take a break. I will take care of the rest. Okay. Be careful. They seemed strong. I got it. Liam was not planning on underestimating them. If Alex and the others thought that they were strong, they were probably strong. But what he did not understand was, what the hell was demons doing in this area? or the demonic virus, or whoever the group had run into. This is not good. Liam clicked his tongue. It was one thing for the timeline and history to change back in the game. But why were new, unexpected things popping out in the real world too? In his last life, he hadn't heard of anything like this at all. I need to pay them a visit. He prodded Luna until she woke up too, and the two of them then immediately left the hotel. They arrived at the specific coordinates within minutes. Don't go any closer. Liam quickly patted the fox. He could already see the group Alex was talking about. Coincidentally, they were still in the same area. There were a few men standing around with guns, guarding two trucks and just like Alex had mentioned, these guys had horns on their heads and their faces were slightly contorted. They only barely resembled humans. What the hell are these? Liam silently pondered. In the next couple of seconds, a few beasts wandered their way and the sturdy men quickly dealt with them without panicking in the least. They did not even use their weapons and only used their fists. They punched the beasts as if they were merely puppies, bringing out explosive strength from their fists. So they are not worried about the beasts. 
This entire zone was crawling with beasts, but the group did not seem to care about that at all. Their strength was also above the level of these beasts. Now the question was, just how strong were they? Liam summoned one of the barbarians to take a look at the situation. However, he quickly dismissed the soul minion. I should wait. This doesn't look like their final destination. These men by themselves did not look all that strong even though they overpowered the beasts, so Liam decided not to take any immediate action. It was more important to get to the bottom of this situation and find out what exactly was happening here. The place also did not have any necessities that were required for a campsite. Clearly, they were not living here. Judging from the presence of the truck, perhaps they were moving something from here to their main base. Liam waited patiently for another half an hour. Soon, he heard a loud rumble of a truck coming to the same spot. The group of men immediately bustled about, and everyone got into their respective trucks. A few minutes later, the two trucks started moving again. Luna, let's follow them. The fox snarled as she slowly started drifting across the sky, trying to stay out of sight of the two trucks. Meanwhile, Liam summoned some of his soul minions to take care of the beasts crawling around in the area. Another couple of hours passed, and the trucks finally came to a halt. They stopped in front of a huge hospital building. The armed men quickly jumped out of the trucks and opened the backs of the vehicles. Just as Liam curiously watched what they were about to retrieve from the trucks, an unbelievable scene played out in front of him. About 30 people climbed down from the trucks under the loud threats of the armed men. Among these people, men and women of all ages were present, even some young children, and they were all in chains. Liam silently frowned as he continued to observe everything from above. It was not just one truck. People were being moved out in chains from both of the trucks. In total, there were some 50 men and women and 10 children. All of them were in chains, bound by strong metallic threads. You get over there. One of the men loudly shouted in his raspy voice. He then began segregating the group into men, women, and children separately. The more Liam watched, the more unsettling things were devolving into. The group of suspicious-looking armed men led the male prisoners to one wing of the hospital. They once again returned to the female population, only this time. They started handling them in an entirely different manner. The thugs went around groping and harassing the women for a few minutes before shoving them all forcefully into another wing. Lastly, the children were taken to another area. Liam did not intervene just yet and continued to watch the group for some more time. Seeing the number of prisoners, at first, he had assumed that this was a big operation, but surprisingly, there were only a few armed men guarding the perimeter at all times. They shouldn't exceed 20. Logically, it did not make sense. How are just these 20 people handling all the prisoners? Even if they had guns and even if they were stronger, it was still impossible to run an operation like this. However, just as Liam was contemplating this, two more trucks arrived. People exited the two trucks once more, but this time they were not chained. Also, they were all men. No one was even supervising these guys as they stepped out of the truck one after the other. They were carrying dry rations, mangled corpses of beasts, drinks, and all sorts of food items and other supplies inside the hospital. All the prisoners looked soulless and did not exhibit any sort of emotion. They were simply mechanically carrying the goods inside almost as obedient as his soul minions. Seeing this, Liam became even more suspicious. The apocalypse had only barely begun, with everything starting to collapse just ten days ago. So how was it possible that these many people were already so obedient? They shouldn't have broken down so soon. He continued waiting for some more time when finally, another vehicle arrived. This time it was a jeep, and from within it, a man seemingly in his twenties stepped out. He was accompanied by six women, all of whom looked very beautiful and were dressed in very skimpy clothes, revealing almost everything, with three women on one side and three women on the other side. The young man then swaggered forward, entering the hospital building in a drunken stupor. His steps were also unsteady. Could this be the leader? Liam wondered. Judging from the manner he was treating the women and enjoying himself, he wanted to conclude this, but at the same time, this person did not look as strong or sturdy. He was so wobbly and heavily drunk as if he was about to collapse any second. Compared to the horned and armed men who were standing on the side, he was completely different. 
It was impossible for him to be any kind of leader. Even if he were, he would be overthrown in a second and replaced by someone else. Liam silently observed the area, thinking that some more people might arrive, perhaps the real leader of the group, but no such thing happened. The day gradually darkened, and no more trucks or any other vehicles were going in or out of the compound. All of this pointed to only one thing. The guy he saw earlier was most definitely the leader of this whole group. Liam coldly gazed at the setup for some more time before coming to the only possible conclusion. His opponent had to be capable of mind control in some way. Otherwise, all of this was simply impossible. Mental attacks were very unique and dangerous attacks. Liam only knew about Sean Yu's mental attack, which was extremely fearsome. However, now it seemed like this person was also probably capable of something like this. This kind of opponent could be very unpredictable, and it was good that the others did not engage with this enemy. Liam, on the other hand, did not have any such restrictions. He had quite a bit of mental defense built up, so he was not hesitant, and he also had no intention of allowing this to continue. It was time to go inside and take a closer look at what was going on. Luna, land there. He patted the fox, and she elegantly glided down to land at the back of the hospital. Two armed men saw him come in right away, but before they could do anything, their dead bodies silently fell to the ground. Liam stood next to the corpses, dusting his hand. He did not forget to forge the two into soul minions. I was correct. Their level is not too high. They just have brute strength. Maybe burst power? He concluded. He was just about to examine their horns and their peculiar features when unexpectedly, the next second, he watched the two bodies shrivel and wither away right in front of his eyes. Liam's eyes widened in shock before narrowing again as he looked at the two corpses. This was definitely new. Well, I guess more new materials for me. He grinned and decided to move on to the next targets. Because the dead bodies were too disgusting to examine, he decided to check out two live ones instead. He turned around to see another couple of armed men a few feet away from him. They were standing facing the opposite direction and had not noticed him in the darkness of the night. Liam took a step toward them when once again, something unexpected happened. The two armed and horned men in the distance also dropped dead, but this time he did not do anything. Someone else was here? This was the first thing that came to Liam's mind. Just like he had sniffed out this shady bunch and arrived here, there was a high chance that someone else had also come here to hunt down these mongrels. However, this third party was very intriguing. There was no one visible at all. Liam could only see the darkness of the night and nothing else. There was absolutely no trace of someone else present in the vicinity. Rather than the actual enemy, this was more worrisome. If they could escape his attention so easily, then their skills were quite good. Or at least their stats and agility was impressive. Liam did not linger around any longer and quickly dashed forward to take a look. This situation was getting more and more interesting by the second. He went around the hospital compound, and just like before, the armed men were dropping like flies left and right. Someone was actually killing them all right in front of his eyes, and he was still not able to catch sight of the killer. Liam did not rush and took care of the souls first, one after the other. They were far too precious to let them go to waste, and besides, he needed information from these people. He then observed the corpses, and every single one had decayed and desiccated, just like the previous one. Liam continued following the trail of dead bodies and soon arrived at the main hospital block. All the other armed guards were already dead, and he also had 23 newly forged souls in his possession. Now for the main event? He hurried inside and heard some noises coming in from a room on the right side. I am the king. I am AF asterisk king king. You cannot treat me like this. Someone was shouting. When Liam walked in, the first thing he saw when he stood in front of the room was blood. There was blood everywhere, and the six women whom he had seen alive, and well only just now were all lying on the floor, pale and dead. Their heads were unceremoniously ripped off from their bodies, and the halves were randomly tossed around without any remorse or respect. More importantly, the person who was responsible for all of this was currently in a pitiable situation. With his face jammed onto the ground, the thin person was squished like a bug and barely alive. Standing on top of him was a person fully clad in black clothes. Only his eyes were visible. More importantly, this person was looking right at Liam. 
glaring at him like a silent tiger. Step aside. I am not here to fight you, he growled. Liam smirked. That's my friend. You know? He purposefully lied. Even the person who was flattened like a pizza on the ground looked up at him oddly. Friend? What the hell was this guy talking about? You are not my friend, peasant. I am the king, the guy growled. Hearing him, both Liam and the black-robed figure turned to look at the idiot at the same time. He was not even reading the room. Both of them had the itch to face bomb. Like I said, it is not your fight. Step aside. I am warning you. The black-robed figure curtly warned Liam again. Liam chuckled, and then he stepped aside. All right. See, I am more than willing to step aside. But first, you need to do one thing for me. Simple. Kill him. Right here and now. Liam shrugged casually. The black-robed figure immediately clenched his fists. Liam's eyes trailed along his movements to see that he had gripped a pair of not-too-shabby-looking daggers in his hands. In fact, they looked quite good. Liam's impression of the guy was steadily increasing every second. Why do I see hesitation? He smiled again, his gaze slightly turning cold. Perhaps I was mistaken here. Perhaps you are the one who is his friend. Tui. The guy immediately spat out. He is a heinous person who has committed a lot of crimes. He is not my friend. Then kill him and leave. The black-robed figure shook his head. I can't do that. I need him alive. To interrogate him? Liam chuckled. The other person solemnly nodded. He did not try to hide it. What he did not know was that Liam wanted him to kill the guy for the exact same purpose. It looks like we are at an impasse here, my friend. The next second, unexpectedly, the other person dropped his prisoner on the floor. I don't think so. He dashed forward, his figure becoming a blur. Liam had to admit. He was taken aback by this sudden display of skill. Mastering something like stealth, or some kind of movement technique like the one displayed in front of him, right now was extremely difficult. It required a different kind of comprehension, and not everyone could do it. Only geniuses of Mia's caliber could even dream of achieving something like this. The black-robed figure was undoubtedly very talented, but that stopped here. As the opponent disappeared, Liam's eyes immediately darted to the side. In a single swift motion, he used his hand to block the dagger coming at him, right for his throat. Not only was the dagger blocked, but he had also caught it. The black-robed figure's face briefly materialized at the same time. However, there was only shock and awe on that face. Huh. The person grunted and quickly tried to take his dagger back for the next attack, but Liam's hold was simply too strong, and the dagger did not budge even an inch. In the end, the black-robed figure flinched and completely gave up on the dagger as he disappeared again. I suggest you stop this now. Liam smirked in amusement as he spun the dagger in his hand and looked at the cold metal and how sharp it was. The dagger was really not bad. As if enraged by the way the opponent was playing around with his weapon, the next second, the person again appeared, this time right behind Liam, and he again went for the throat. So ruthless. Liam chuckled as he once again swung around and blocked the attack, this time gripping the other dagger as well. If he could do it once, he could naturally do it again and again. Perhaps he had overestimated the abilities of this person, but just as this thought crossed his mind, Liam's eyes instantly darted to the side. It was not over yet. There was another attack coming right at him. An ice attack? Liam narrowed his eyes at the sight of the icicle rapidly approaching him ready to impale him. It was impossible for the black-robed figure in front of him to attack him, so that meant that there was someone else also present here, and that someone else was working with him, that too with so much synergy. They were definitely together. Liam's gaze shifted. Just as the icicle was about to slash his throat, he dodged ever so slightly and caught that as well with his other hand. The icicle might be fast, but to him, it was easy to evade as it only moved in slow motion. Ice and dagger. Huh? Interesting. Liam grinned. He crushed the icicle with one hand and bent the metal of the dagger with his other hand. The black-robed figure had already given up when he saw Liam react to both attacks simultaneously with just a split-second difference. His heart sank further as he watched the dagger get bent. He immediately began retreating, but the other person had seemingly not taken the cue. Attacks continued to rain down on Liam. 
Another icicle zoomed forward, followed by another and another. A look of dread appeared on the black-robed figure as he blurred in and out of the shadows. No, Lon Fun, stop, he shouted, but he was already too late. It only took Liam one second to arrive next to the second party. The person wielding the dagger might have some tricks up his sleeve, but the other party was clearly an ice mage. How could they even possibly react to his move? It's my turn now, Liam grinned. He conjured an icicle of his own as he restrained them in his grasp. To his surprise, this one was a woman. He pressed the icicle against her throat, and the slender woman struggled like a fish out of water. It's useless. Give up. Liam smiled. Shall we stop this nonsense now? Or do you want to test my patience further? Just like he expected, the next second, the black-robed figure obediently appeared in front of him, not daring to try anything else. I apologize for my behavior earlier. We have no enmity between us. I would be grateful if we could end things here. You can take the prisoner. Please let my sister go. The black-robed figure graciously offered as his eyes drifted to the person lying on the ground, only to find out that the said person was already dead. He looked up at Liam and saw the subtle smirk on his face. He then realized that during the fight, the guy was already taken care of. He was now dead, his head cleanly severed from his body. When did he even find the time to kill him? During the fight? The black-robed figure's eyes once again widened as his estimate of the opponent was completely crushed. Just how strong was he? Liam let out a satisfied chuckle after seeing the dumbfounded expression on the other party's face. I don't think I need your permission. I am done here. I will take care of this problem. You don't have to worry about him anymore. He pushed the girl he was holding forward, releasing her from his grasp. The black-robed figure did not say anything and held his tongue, remaining silent. However, the girl gritted her teeth in indignance. You are leaving us just like that? Despite the fact that we tried to kill you? Huh? You want me to do something about that? The girl was about to say something, but before she could, the black-robed figure silently walked over to her and patted her on the shoulder. Sir, please forgive my sister. She spoke out of turn. We have been affected by these people, so she got a bit emotional. I will apologize on her behalf. Liam nodded. He had already gotten what he wanted, and he particularly did not care about these two. They also did not seem to harbor any ill intentions so he did not feel the need to stretch this any further. However, that didn't mean he was completely uninterested in them. There was still one thing that he was very much curious about. Just how did these two manage to become so powerful? There was only one explanation for this. They had to have control of a dungeon, and this was something Liam did not plan to let go of. Everything is fine. No harm, no foul. Let's talk as friends. Liam smiled. Oh, by the way, where are you all staying? The brother and sister pair immediately turned to look at each other. They couldn't help but suddenly feel as if they had jumped from the frying pan to the fire. Ahem, we have a small settlement nearby. It is just a small gathering of people. He seemed to stress the word small a few times. That's fine. I would still like to pay a visit. Liam smiled, though his smile did not fool anyone. Smiling or not, he looked like a wolf waiting to gobble everyone up. It's all right if you don't want to take me there. I bet one of these days I might end up wandering there myself. Ha ha ha. Goo dang. The black-robed figure started sweating. Liam did not even bother hiding the threat in his words, and now he had no other choice left. Please, sir. I did not mean it like that. It would be my honor to take you to our settlement. He quickly swallowed his words and extended an invitation politely. Liam smiled. I am Liam. He finally introduced himself. The other person nodded and returned the greeting. I am Lon Deming, and this is my sister Lon Fawn. The two of them bowed to Liam respectfully. If Mr. Liam wouldn't mind waiting for a moment, could my sister and I take care of the people inside this camp first? Sure, we will do as you say. Liam agreed. He walked out and patiently waited on the side as he watched the two siblings run around and take care of business. The two siblings first took care of all the corpses and burned them. Liam chalked this up to them taking some safety precautions in case there was a potential viral outbreak of some kind, or some other kind of disease. Just like Alex, maybe they assumed the worst too. However, 
he already knew that this was probably not the case. He might not be aware of anything like this out in the open world, but inside the game world, he had seen some corpses that had decayed in the same manner. While he had been in the Dark Mage camps, there were several corpses that looked exactly the same. So there was probably someone nearby who was capable of wielding dark magic. Then what about the ability to mind control? How did that factor in? Just as Liam was thinking about this, the siblings moved on from sweeping the hospital camp one more time to rescuing the prisoners. The girl Lan Fawn, who practiced ice magic, lifted her hand as she sent small bursts of frost aura in multiple directions. Immediately, the several chains binding the prisoners became frozen. Lon Deming then produced another set of daggers, the one that had not been destroyed by Liam, and he ran around and broke the frozen chains individually. All the shackles and the strong metal chains broke apart and shattered without any resistance. Blasting each one into smithereens, the guy continued running around. They first took care of the new recruits who had just been brought to this place. They then went inside to free up some more chain prisoners. Liam silently watched everything paying particular attention to the way the two of them used their skills. They possessed a natural ease that only someone who had practiced this kind of magic for decades would be able to achieve, or someone with a high affinity for mana and a superior mana core. Liam lifted his hand, imitating the girl's action. He had never tried Frost Aura himself. He pointed his finger to a nearby rock, shooting out a burst of aura, and the next second, the rock was completely frozen. That works. He chuckled wryly. The problem was that the two in front of him shouldn't be able to do these things with such ease. They might be weaker than him at the moment, but given time, they could become stronger, especially if his own strength stagnated. Liam had no plans of letting that happen. Nevertheless, he was curious about the reason behind their strength. Were these kinds of skilled people even alive in his last life? Or perhaps, by averting a disaster from befalling this province, he had triggered some changes to the current timeline. Either way, he definitely wanted to get to the bottom of this. It was utterly impossible for someone to develop skills like this by just grinding in the dungeon for a few days. So other than a dungeon, what other secrets were these guys hiding? Liam silently pondered while he continued to wait for some more time. The duo took care of the newly imprisoned people rather quickly. They gathered everyone, asked them to wait, and promised them that they would take them to a safe place. The people also attentively listened. They were captured like slaves and mistreated by the bunch of hooligans. So when these two appeared out of thin air and saved them from these monsters, they had no qualms about trusting them. They simply did not have any energy left to doubt their good intentions. All of them looked blank and drained, unable to make sense of the world they were currently living in. They just needed to hear the word safe, and they were ready to follow along. However, it was not so easy to deal with the other group of people, the men who behaved like soulless zombies and carried out all the orders without any handcuffs or shackles. Liam was correct. It turned out that these people were indeed mind-controlled. No matter what Lon Fawn or Lon Deming tried, they simply couldn't shake off their stupor. In a way, they were already gone. The two siblings discussed things between themselves for a while, and in the end, they ended up deciding to bring them along to the camp anyway. These mind-controlled people were kind of acting like robots at the moment. They were following anyone's command at this point. So it was rather easier to command them to obey than to understand their condition or cure them. The two probably decided to deal with them later. Liam thought to himself with a small smile. He had no plans of intervening in these things. He had seen so much more life loss. If he tried to tackle every single group that was doomed then he would lose sight of the bigger picture. Instead. It was best to leave these issues to the small-time do-gooders like the brother-sister pair in front of him. After securing all the people from the hospital base, at least the ones who were alive, the duo once again loaded everyone into the same trucks and finally walked over to Liam. Sorry to make you wait, Mr. Liam. Lon Dimming politely bowed. We are now returning to our base. Please allow me to escort you. He extended his hands and showed Liam the truck that he was driving. My sister will be driving the other truck and we are both headed back to our main camp. He explained further. Okay. Liam nodded, but he did not walk toward the truck. Instead, he lifted his fingers and whistled. Immediately, a huge white creature descended from the skies, scaring the bejesus out of everyone, even the lawn siblings. 
I have my own ride. Liam smiled as he hopped onto the fox. You guys can start. I will follow you. Ah, uh, all right. Lon Dimming awkwardly nodded as he rushed back to the truck. Without any further delay, the two trucks quickly roared to life and started moving. The two siblings had told Liam that their base was quite close by, but clearly, this was a lie as the journey had already taken about three hours, and it did not look like they were located anywhere close. However, Liam did not mind it. He lazily yawned as he lay on top of Luna, while the two of them slowly drifted along in the sky. In the meantime, he sent his minions down to do some hard labor. This area was outside the initial boundary where Liam had cleared everything, and there was even a gate nearby. So he used the time to farm some lower-level beasts and also search for the presence of a dungeon or treasure or any other valuable item in the vicinity. He even received reports from his soul minions about a few mana zombies that he quickly took care of. A couple more hours passed by, and finally, the truck seemed to be slowing down. Looks like we are here, Luna. Liam smiled at the small zone the group had managed to commandeer. Unlike the shoddy hospital area, this was rather a much more organized settlement. The area underneath him seemed to encompass a gated apartment complex that included several facilities like a couple of grocery stores, shopping stores, and even clinics with medical supplies. More importantly, this place was located away from all danger zones. There weren't any gates nearby and the generally overgrown trees and plants were also sparse. Considering how in many areas, forests had taken over normal civilization and concrete buildings, Liam was sure that these people had taken special measures to cut down the greenery while they still could. All the areas were also clean and neat, without any bloodshed or bodies. Even if they had managed to take care of beasts, that still left mana zombies. So it was commendable that they had everything under control. In fact, it was quite impressive for someone without the help of hundreds of soul minions to get things organized to such an extent. Were the two siblings in front of him so talented both in their skills and in their ability to foster such a settlement? They were pretty young to have a talent like that. Liam silently mulled over everything as the two trucks came to a stop. Luna as well landed nearby and quickly curled herself around Liam's neck. Please come this way, sir. Lon Deming approached Liam hurriedly showing him the way inside the gated community. A few guards had already come out to welcome them. When Liam looked around, he also saw a makeshift watch post above the tallest building in the area, which should have informed them of their arrival prior to this. This explained the behavior of the guards, who were now helping everyone get down from the trucks and make sense of things. Just like inside the complex, the outside of the complex was also equally peaceful. There seemed to be more people on the outside as well. Though it was not clear if they belonged to the same group or not, they definitely enjoyed the safe environment created by these people. You managed to do all of this in such a short time? Liam smiled at Lon Deming, slightly probing the other person. Ah, uh, no not me. Deming shook his head and scratched his head awkwardly. At the same time, another voice greeted them from the distance. My son is too humble. None of this would be possible without his strength. A middle-aged man with graying hair walked forward, surrounded by a few guards. He was wearing a prim and polished jacket just like the mayor, but the vibe the two of them gave was completely different. Liam only needed a glance to see that this man was the real backbone of this makeshift settlement. In just a few days, he managed to bring the entire situation under control. Most probably he was a government official before all of this happened. Before Liam could finish the thought, the middle-aged man introduced himself by saying the same. I am Lon Gangia, the secretary for this province. Nice to meet you, young man. He extended his hand for a polite handshake and Liam returned the sentiment with a nod. A provincial secretary was only second to the provincial leader. Now everything made sense. If this person was a government official, especially such a high-ranking one, then it was natural that he had the common sense, the ability, skills, and resources to make all of this happen. More importantly, the person hasn't changed to a power-hungry version in these desperate times. At least from a superficial point of view, society was still intact to a certain extent without anyone getting exploited. However, Liam did not rush to any conclusions just yet. He had seen too much in both his lifetimes. The apocalypse inevitably reveals the worst in most people, especially if they were in a position of power. 
From here, everything might appear peachy, but one needed to look closer to see the real situation. At least that's what he thought. Liam tried his best to remain skeptical, but as Lan Ganjia took him for a tour around the settlement, he couldn't help but become surprised at everything he saw. It was far too soon to say. However, as far as he could see the man had indeed tried his best to treat everyone well. At the same time, he also did not appear to be a naive righteous leader aiming to please everyone at the cost of the future. The people in the settlement were actively involved in many things ranging from growing fruits and vegetables to hunting the beasts that had emerged from the gates and were still prowling around in the vicinity. Liam also saw a group of people hard at training, sparring with each other. These people were even surprisingly around level 5, which meant that they had daringly faced the challenge in front of them. It took about an hour, but Liam patiently accompanied the leader Lan Ganjia as he gave a tour of the whole facility and all the areas they had occupied. Overall, everything seemed on the up and up without any sort of underhanded exploitation. Everyone was happy and well-fed, and Liam did not see any particular red flags that could potentially indicate any wrongdoing. Or perhaps he still hadn't seen the true color of this place. Am I thinking too much? He chuckled inwardly. On the off chance that this place was indeed legitimate, Liam began to wonder if something like this existed in his previous life. Provincial secretary? Huh? None of that would have mattered to the Gu family. In fact, just because this man was a government leader who survived, they might have taken extra steps to finish him off. Liam thought to himself. The Gu family had taken over at least the entire half of this part of the province. So even if a settlement like this had existed at the beginning stages, they would have probably seen to it that it was utterly demolished. Or perhaps even on their own, the place did not last very long. The subsequent waves of the apocalypse were brutal, to say the least, and they were probably wiped out because of their insufficient strength. No matter the reason, Liam was beginning to see the value in the group in front of him, especially the few government officials who were well-versed in their organizational and governing abilities. He was never really the one to put trust in the government or politicians, as they hadn't done anything for him even before the apocalypse, but at the same time, he was also not naive enough to think that they were all cut from the same cloth. The only question was whether the person in front of him was reliable or not. Liam silently thought about this as they continued chatting for a while about this and that, but eventually, they circled back to the important topic, the elephant in the room. May I know your thoughts about the events that transpired back in the hospital? Longanjia came to the point. Someone of your caliber must already have a strategy in mind. Ahahaha. Ha, ha. If you don't mind, please share it with me. The man's voice was extremely polite, but at the same time, there was also a small tone that implied he was very serious about this matter. There was an air of demand in his request. Liam smiled. He did not care too much about the way he was treated or how much they respected him, but he was also not planning on letting them remain blind to the ways of the new world. Only the strong had the right to demand anything or raise their tone. The weak simply did not have a say. It would be better if they learned this lesson sooner rather than later. Liam's smile widened, and the next second, without holding back, he immediately unleashed the full extent of his power without containing his aura and his killing intent. The middle-aged man hadn't expected this and was completely caught off guard. He and the others standing around Liam at the moment, including the lawn siblings, felt a stifling pressure envelop them all of a sudden. It was something intangible, yet they could clearly sense it. Dread filled them. Everyone's face paled. Only the two siblings were not affected that much as they only slightly winced, but the level 0 and level 5 humans standing around, especially Lan Ganjia, began to shiver and tremble. A sort of fear and anxiety overcame them as they couldn't face Liam any longer. They were forced to look down at the ground and grit their teeth even just to hold on. Some even took several steps back wobbling all the way. Their legs felt as if they were jelly. Even the portal boss they had faced together as a group did not make them feel this way. But the man in front of them, they couldn't bear the weight of his gaze. This person was dangerous. He was powerful and strong. Someone they couldn't possibly stand up against. He was an apex predator. Sir Liam. Lon Deming couldn't stand it any longer to watch his father in this state. Even though it wasn't too obvious, it was clearly affecting them, perhaps even causing them irreversible damage. Maybe even make them susceptible to becoming mindless maniacs? However, 
No matter how worried he was, he still did not dare to order the person in front of him. Otherwise, perhaps only death would await them all. He had a feeling that this monster wouldn't bat an eyelid as he massacred their entire settlement. As this thought crossed his mind, Lon Deming suddenly found himself shocked. Why did I think like that? He snapped out of it and pleaded with Liam again. Please. We did not mean any disrespect. Next to him, Lon Finn glared at Liam like a tiger. Her fists were clenched and her eyes became bloodshot. She was also only barely holding on. Why are you doing this? She asked with bated breath that leaked out with a frosty aura from her pale lips. Liam smiled, but he did not immediately respond. He continued to assault the group with his presence for a few, more seconds before he finally stopped. He then contained his power within his mana core, which in itself was a sort of meditation, and calmly addressed the group. Sorry about that. I lost control of myself for a second. Now, what were we talking about? Everyone shivered. Lon Ganjia opened and closed his mouth wordlessly. He did not know what to say. Nothing was coming to his mind. He looked at the young man in front of him, who barely looked like he was 20 years old, but his physique, his strength, his power, everything was exceptional. His gaze, in particular, possessed the wisdom of someone at the top, someone they couldn't near even if they tried for all their life. He thought that he had already judged the person in front of him well enough and had given him enough credit, but only now did he realize that he had been a frog in a well. His own son and daughter were considered geniuses by everyone in this camp. However, when compared to the person sitting in front of him, they now looked like mere children who were only now learning how to walk. This visit just took a turn for the worse. It was clear that this was no longer going to be simply a conversation or negotiation. There was no hope for that. What happened next would only be a one-sided decision. Their lives were at the whim of this person in front of them. He might as well be a tyrant, and they needed to obey whatever he asked them to. There was simply no other choice. While everyone was scared as H asterisk less and wondering what was going to happen now, Liam calmly continued, Oh yes, we were talking about the hospital disaster. He paused for a moment making everyone sweat, further soaking their already wet, sweat-drenched clothes. I don't really have any plans at the moment. Why do you ask, Mr. Ganjia? Do you suspect that more people could be involved in that? Liam crossed his hands and narrowed his eyes as he gazed at the group in front of him. Everyone gulped. This person only just now made them almost pee in their pants for no reason, and now he was talking as if nothing happened at all? Long Ganjia sighed. He looked at the two siblings standing on the side first and shook his head. He had raised his children well and they were not foolish to act rashly in a situation like this, but he still had to make sure. Don't do anything. His silent gaze ordered them. Warning them like this was better than dealing with the consequences. Because if anything at all went wrong, this day could be their end. The two understood this as well and nodded at their father. Long Ganjia then turned to look at Liam and politely nodded. Mr. Liam, I am not sure how to answer your question, but I will tell you everything that we have found out so far. Perhaps this could aid you in your actions and future decisions. Please carry on. Liam also gave a nod in return and calmly listened. Long Ganjia sighed. I am not sure how to explain this, but in short, the group of people inside that hospital complex are creatures one would call vampires. They drink the blood of other human beings. Huh. Liam's eyes widened. This was... He had not expected this but it would only take him two seconds to verify this information from his newly forged soul minions. So he first wanted to get all the information from this group. Go on, he said calmly. They kidnapped a few people from our settlement recently when they went out hunting. That was when we came to know that monsters like this existed even among us humans. The middle-aged man explained with a bitter smile, the irony in his words not escaping him. While Lon Gangia was talking about monsters, he was well aware that one was sitting right in front of him. We also discovered other peculiar things about them. They preferred drinking the blood of women. They captured ten people from our group and turned the women into blood bags and s asterisk x slaves. The men? They enslaved them with some sort of mental spell. Even if their family was tortured right in front of them, these men are unable to respond. They made the men watch while they did everything. One of the women escaped from there. That's how we know everything. The man did not have to explain things further. 
Liam could already imagine how these people were tortured and played around with before they were eventually killed and tossed like used scraps. This also explained many things he saw, specifically the demonic appearance of the armed guards. He wasn't sure if these guys were vampires, but there was a high chance that they used blood magic or similar demonic magic. Whatever it was, it definitely had a hold on them. After hearing everything, it was quite clear that these people had lost almost all sense of reason and logic. At this point, there was no more humanity left in them. Just like their appearance, they might as well be heartless demons. Heck, he knew some demons who had more heart than these deviants. This is the extent of our knowledge, Mr. Liam. I know this is not much, but I have shared with you everything we know. This is also the reason why my son and my daughter went to the camp to capture the leader alive and to find out more about the situation. You know the rest of the story, he explained. Liam nodded, but then remained silent. He gazed at Lon Gangia, as if he was trying to discern everything running inside the man's mind with just his eyes. It made the middle-aged man very uncomfortable. Even so, Liam kept staring at the man in silence for a few good seconds before he nodded again. All right, thank you for sharing this information with me. I think it will be very helpful. He smiled. Immediately, everyone let out a collective gasp of relief. Lon Gangia also let out a sigh. Perhaps this was over? Unfortunately, they had celebrated too soon. The next second, Liam once again opened his mouth. Shall we now talk about the other thing then? Other thing? Lon Gangia blankly repeated his words, wondering what was this other thing could be. Not keeping him in suspense, Liam smiled and magnanimously explained. I am talking about the dungeon. What is the location of the dungeon you all are training in? Are you keeping it hidden? Gudong. The elder's face immediately drooped. How the hell did this monster sniff out the information about the dungeon? This was the only thing he had been counting on ever since he met this powerful person. He thought that perhaps if Dimming and Fawn continued training in the dungeons, then they could also become powerful like him, and soon they could become unshakable pillars of this community. Then enemies like him couldn't randomly show up and threaten them like what was happening at the moment. However, Liam's words had clearly shown that this was nothing but a pipe dream. It was all over. Lon Gangia smiled bitterly as he realized his foolishness. How could someone powerful like this not know about dungeons in the first place? He probably had found one himself. Even if he did not, since he asked for it, Lon Gangia now had no other option but to reveal its location. It was impossible to keep hidden something like this anyways. He also did not have qualms about sharing information. The only issue was, would the other person still allow them to use it? Or would they monopolize it? Mr. Liam, please forgive me for not informing you about this earlier. This old man is not as sharp as he used to be. Some things are slipping my mind. Otherwise, I would have told you about this when I was giving you the tour. Longanjia then turned to look at one of his subordinates standing behind him who quickly ran inside a building and brought back with him a pen and paper. On that, Longanjia roughly outlined something similar to a map and marked a location with an X mark. This is the location of the dungeon. He passed the paper to Liam. Liam nodded and took the paper. He didn't mind the small white lie that the man said to save face in front of him. He gave a glance at the paper and then simply folded it and kept it inside his pocket. This dungeon was good news. With this, everyone would be able to train once again. He had to take the other two dungeons for himself as he had to test out a few things, but training the other members of the group was also very important. Otherwise, they would lag behind and only become liabilities. Moreover, several new events are cropping up around him, things that he was not aware of. In this case, it was best that everyone became strong enough to protect themselves. Thank you. This saves me a lot of trouble. Liam nodded in contemplation. In reality, he did not need their help. Once he suspected that there was a dungeon here in the vicinity, he could have found this himself in no time with the help of his army, but he nevertheless said this not to make things too awkward. He had already demonstrated where he stood and where they stood. There was no point in shoving this on their face again and again. He was also starting to have a plan in his mind regarding this group. Okay, then I will take my leave. Liam smiled and stood up. He wanted to return back to the base immediately and relay this information to the group. He also had to start his private investigations regarding the so-called vampires. 
This had to be immediate because he wanted to assess the threat as best as he could before entering the updated dungeon again. There was a lot of work to be done. Seeing that he was finally leaving, the others were also very relieved. Though earlier it was a false start, this time it looked like the monster was letting them go for real. With a smile, Liam patted Luna, and the fox became bigger right in front of everyone's eyes. Immediately several gasps loudly resounded. A lot more people had gathered now, and they were all shocked to see the huge beast. Don't worry, she is harmless. Liam chuckled and then added, to a certain extent, with a loaded gaze, he hopped onto the fox, and the duo lifted up slightly, floating in the air. It was my pleasure and honor to make acquaintances with you, Mr. Liam. Lon Ganjia squeezed out a smile as well. Somehow the meeting seemed to have ended with no casualties, and that was all he could ask for right now. As for the future, he sighed as he watched the two monster lift up and disappear. This thing could even fly? He watched in awe. Suddenly tomorrow seemed even more uncertain. He silently turned around in deep contemplation when abruptly, Liam's voice sounded again. I almost forgot. Congratulations on your very talented son and daughter. Lon Ganja's face became contorted as he lifted his head up to see the fox still lingering in the air above him. Hadn't he left yet? What new hell was this? What did he want now? Their strength is increasing at a tremendous pace when compared to others, am I correct? Liam smirked in amusement. Lon Ganja's face paled again. He couldn't help but look towards his son and daughter, who also seemed to have shocked expressions. How did he know about all of this? Just who was he? Last question. Liam continued without caring so much about their response. In Evolution Online, what was your class and what level did you manage to reach? Lon Ganjia was now genuinely surprised. That video game? Yes, and I asking about you too. Liam pointed specifically at Lon Dimming and Lon Fon. Those two as well looked confused, just like their father, and they slowly shook their heads. I apologize, Mr. Liam. I have no idea what you are talking about. Lon Dimming replied first. Liam raised his brow. You don't know about the video game? Or you did not play it at all? Up both. Lon Dimming answered hesitantly. Huh. Liam's eyes widened in shock. This was a curveball that he hadn't expected. Was he lying? Liam's gaze scrutinized the assassin-type fighter as he simply couldn't believe what he was hearing. How was it possible for this person to have not played the game at all? Or even heard about it, for that matter? Evolution Online had been all over the news. So this was completely impossible. Seeing Liam's furrowed brows, Lon Ganjia started sweating and hurriedly stepped to explain he was in special military training. I was grooming him for... The middle-aged man felt embarrassed to continue. Ahem. I was grooming him for the leader's position. He awkwardly smiled. So he was in an intensive training facility. They were cut off from the world until recently. The leader's position? You mean the premier's position? Liam curiously asked. Cough. Cough. Yes, sir. Liam nodded. He was still not completely convinced. But if these two indeed hailed from a traditional conservative political family, then that would make some sense. But even if Lon Deming was in some isolated training facility, then what about the other one? Liam looked at Lon Fawn, the slender and elegant-looking girl who seemed to be around his age. However, she also shook her head. I have heard about the game, but I also haven't played it personally. She honestly replied. She was also undergoing training in various aspects. Lon Ganjia once again explained with a bitter smile. He did not know if this person was going to believe him. After all, the game was wildly popular and all over the news. Even he himself had tried it out a bit, but he did not pursue it as he didn't believe immersing oneself in an alternate reality was the solution to anything. How could he know that their reality itself was going to become like the one inside the game? Fate had played a cruel joke on him. Liam looked at the three people in front of him and did not know what to think of anything. He remained silent for a few seconds and then nodded. The thing was, it didn't matter too much if they were telling the truth or simply lying. Sooner or later, the truth would come out. And even if it did not, it was not going to change anything. Liam did not bother asking anything else and finally left the area once and for all, taking off along with Luna. From high up in the skies, he glanced at the disappearing figures pensively. 
It was not a big deal if they were lying, because he as well knew two people just like this brother and sister pair, Alex and Mia. The two girls were naturally gifted. However, what if they were telling him the truth? On the off chance that something like this was indeed true, and the strength of these two had nothing to do with the game, then that could only mean that there were going to be others. Crawford wouldn't necessarily be the only person standing in his way. Some of these naturally gifted people might crawl their way up to him. However, he was not foolish enough to let something like that happen. Liam clenched his fist as a rush of excitement swept past him. His gaze turned to the two dungeons in the distance. Those were his stepping stones. Using them, he was going to become much, much stronger before anyone could even come close to his shadow. And now there was another one. Liam glanced once more at the small settlement as he silently smirked and patted Luna. Go as fast as you can. Meanwhile, back at the gated community, Lon Ganjia walked back and forth in the big hall room of his house. As a leader, he was allotted the biggest and the most luxurious bungalows in the vicinity. What should we do now? How can we prepare for this? Muttering these few words, he continued walking in the same stretch. The other people standing around him nervously looked at each other, not knowing what to do. Sir, maybe he won't return? Finally, someone suggested. Yes, sir. The meeting went somewhat smoothly, and we were also very hospitable. We even gave away the dungeon address. There is no reason for him to be angry with us. We also don't have anything else to offer. Someone powerful like that probably won't pay any attention to us. Long Ganji aside. He looked at the bunch of people advising him and again sighed. What was he supposed to tell these naive, optimistic idiots to make them understand the gravity of the situation? You both also think so? He turned towards Lon Deming and Lon Fawn to ask. Thankfully, at least his blood did not disappoint him. Both the brother and sister shook their head. No, father. He will definitely be back. Lon Deming said. I agree with uncle that we don't have anything valuable. But in the current condition of the world, manpower itself is something very valuable. Lon Fan added. Lon Ganjia bitterly smiled. He wanted to feel proud that he had raised his children well, and that they had a good head above their shoulders. If everything hadn't changed, they would have definitely had great political careers. His life ambition was to erase the corruption and greed from their society and bring back the former glory of their country where everyone was not suffering and working like drones from morning to night. Unfortunately, fate had played a cruel joke on him. Just like he wanted, everything had changed, but not for the better. He wanted to be hopeful that they could somehow make it for the better, but today's events shattered that hope completely. Lon Deming understood his father's thoughts very well. Father, let's not give up hope just yet. All we need is time. If we could just have a little time, even a week, we could do it. We can become stronger. Yes, father. Lon Fan also nodded, her eyes burning with ambition. We will definitely become stronger than him. Then no one will be able to threaten us again. Lon Ganjia remained silent for a while. He then nodded at his two children. Perhaps it was his age that he was inclined to give up so easily, but looking at the resolve of these two, he also decided not to give up just yet. Since the world had changed, it was time to change along with it. The group started seriously discussing a new and upgraded training strategy for everyone, and especially Lon Deming and Lon Fawn. A few minutes after that, the first batch set out to start this new training plan which naturally first started with running the dungeon. However, as soon as they stepped out, they noticed something weird. There was a lot more movement on their usually deserted streets. There were more people? Hey ya! A bright smiling face greeted Lon dimming from a distance. The first thing that the assassin noticed was the bright smile, followed by the shiny bow on this person's back. His own daggers were an ancestral heirloom and hence were of high quality, but the bow looked even more amazing. Just what sort of materials was it crafted from? Who was this person? Who were these people? While he was standing utterly bewildered, the other party actually started running towards him. I am Ray. He introduced himself. Lon Deming was shocked to see that he was actually a foreigner. Hello, I am Lon Deming. Pleased to meet you. He politely bowed back in response. Ray gave him another one of his trademark happy smiles and then, without bothering to beat around the bush, directly asked, Are you guys headed out somewhere? Is this guy bothering you? Hi, 
I am Alex. From behind, another foreigner popped up. This time it was a beautiful red-haired foreigner. She had an aura about her that made Lon Dimming keep wanting to look at her. Ahem. Lon Fawn had to remind him to cut it out. Hello, I am Lon Fawn. Pleased to meet you. She also introduced herself, jabbing her brother from the side. Ah, uh, hi, hi. Lon Dimming awkwardly blurted out. The others standing around also vaguely murmured some greeting. Alex first smiled and bowed slightly to return their gesture and then tossed a bomb at them. I hope you don't mind. We decided to settle around here for a bit. She adjusted her flowing red hair, tying it up into a ponytail. Since the dungeon is close to this area, it will save us a lot of time if we temporarily lived near here. Dungeon? Immediately the group became silent. What the hell was happening today? First, it was that person and now all these people? Where is everyone coming from? Lon Fawn was the first one to realize the obvious, and she parted her trembling lips to speak the obvious. By any chance, do you happen to know Mr. Liam? Before Alex could say anything, Ray jumped the gun first. Yup, that's my big brother, he proudly announced. He is the one who sent us all here. Alex pulled him back and shook her head. Anyway, we have taken up enough of your time, so we will be leaving now. I hope we can continue to live together peacefully in this area. The duo waved their hands politely as they walked away, leaving behind a group of dumbfounded men. Only just now, they had made several plans to secure their future, but someone had already thrown a wrench into the whole setup. What were they supposed to do? Let's go back and report it to father. Lon Deming Riley smiled and turned around. A couple of hours passed by, and soon it was nightfall. However, absolutely nothing had changed at all. More and more people were settling in on the street in empty houses and wherever they could find spots. A while later, a huge group of people started moving, in the direction in which they were headed left little to the imagination. Father, it looks like they really want to just use the dungeon like they said. Lon Dimming let out a sigh. The entire day they were on pins and needles, but nothing out of the ordinary had happened. Isn't this a good thing? Lon Fawn did not want to deal with this anymore. She just wanted to head out for their own dungeon run. While we are sitting around, the opponent is only becoming stronger. She reminded everyone. It's not that simple. Lon Ganjia looked out his window at the calm and peaceful road. By now, they had more information about everything and had even found out about the Guild Crimson Abyss. Father, I really don't think their intention is to exploit us. Maybe Liam just wants peaceful cooperation. In that case, shouldn't he have led with that? Maybe they were also skeptical like us? Longanjia shook his head. It doesn't matter. He has the strength here. If push comes to shove, we have no other choice but to obey his orders. Unable to reach any conclusion, in the end, the group decided to send only half the members for their usual dungeon run, leaving behind the other half to guard the area. Not that it mattered. Lon Ganjia already knew too well that no matter what they did, it was all useless. At this point, they really were at the whim of that single person. If he indeed only wants them to cooperate with him, then it would be their lucky day. The middle-aged man continued to look out the window, wondering what was going to happen tomorrow. He wanted to strategize and plan for the future, but what could he do? As Lon Ganjia turned around and decided to get some shut eye for an hour or so, a few figures moved under the shadow of the night. These figures had incredible agility and superhuman strength as they positioned themselves on several tall buildings spread across the city. One of them specifically was stronger and faster than the others. Is everyone here? She licked her lips and asked, her tongue forked at the end. Yes, boss. Everyone is here. Another figure standing next to her answered. Perfect. The woman nodded her head. Here I thought that it would be a waste of my time and talent to just deal with these few people but, ha ha ha, somehow I see a lot more juicy blood bags. It's our luck that today several fat sheep have transported themselves right to our doorstep. Ha ha ha, let's have a good hunt. The woman lifted the sunglasses that she was wearing, revealing a pair of dark crimson eyes. Under the glow of the moonlight, these eyes glimmered like shining, beautiful jewels. If one looked at them, they would probably be lost within them. Along with the rest of the group, Lon Deming and Lon Fun hurried over the tar roads, which were pretty much wilderness at this point. 
More than the monsters, it looked as if the trees and wild plants had taken over the entire world. Their settlement was located near the dungeon, so it was very convenient for them to travel to and from the dungeon every single day, and just like usual, they arrived at the dungeon in about an hour. They would have arrived sooner if only they could actually use a car or a bus for transporting everyone. Or, for that matter, a magic beast that possessed the ability to fly. Several people thought to themselves, after seeing the white fox that could fly, this desire was deeply imprinted in many people's hearts though no one had the guts to say it out loud. While some fantasized about the white fox, others' minds were on the new neighbors who had decided to move in next to them. Engrossed deeply in these kinds of thoughts, the group arrived at the dungeon, traveling in silence, unlike their usual loud banter and discussions. And just as they reached the green-colored dungeon portal, they received another shock. Their new neighbors had already assembled outside the dungeon, or rather sort of set up a camp. Well, it was not as much of a shock as it was an awkward meeting. When they moved close by, it was already abundantly clear that this was going to happen, and these people were also going to use the dungeon. They had also announced it loudly. What they did not expect to see was these many people in front of the dungeon. There had to be at least 40 to 50 men and women. Some of them were even middle-aged. One lady specifically was very old. So old she could be their dead grandmother. And yet they were all planning to run the dungeon? Weren't they taking things too casually? Not just that, but the entire group was behaving in an extremely relaxed manner. They were roasting meat, drinking beer, eating snacks and sitting around and chatting with each other as if they had nothing to worry about. It looked as if some tourists had come here for a picnic. The groups stared at each other and exchanged awkward glances, neither knowing how to address the other. Alex was the first one to break the ice as she got up and jogged over to Lon Deming. Hello again. I hope we are not making too much noise. She laughed, followed by a few chuckles from the rest of the group. Ray mumbled something loudly from where he was sitting but his mouth was stuffed full, so no one was able to hear him. I think he means, are you hungry? Ahem. No. No. Thank you. Lon Deming swallowed and quickly answered. It was clearly a lie because the roasted meat smelled so good. They had also eaten some of it, so they knew the taste beforehand. Nevertheless, he shook his head like a gentleman. Seeing the big size of the group, he couldn't help but wonder how they were consuming such a precious item so freely. All fifty of them got to eat this nutritional food? Don't be too polite. You should take some while it is being offered. I insist. Alex laughed. Maybe after we finish the dungeon run, Lon Deming awkwardly refused again. While they were talking, some members of the group started getting up, and a team entered the dungeon wordlessly. You don't run the dungeon together? Lon Deming asked in shock. When he saw the huge number, he assumed that they would all enter together as a single team. Only that made sense, but now about six to seven people stepped in, and he knew for a fact that this was the first time they were going into this dungeon. Were they not afraid? Oh, they will be fine. Alex brushed aside his concerned question. By the way, that reminds me. We also should be getting in soon. She waved to the guy and the rest of the group and walked back over to their camp. Get up. Let's go. She whistled. Another team stood up, and this time as well, there were only ten people. They too, then stepped in through the dungeon portal without any pomp and show. This was followed by three other teams, and every single one of them entered the dungeon without any sign of fear or hesitation on their faces. Lon Deming, Lon Fawn and the rest watched this scene in awe, their eyes widening every time the portal flared up and a team entered. A scene like this was eye-opening for them. Most of their group consisted of normal common folks who were too weak for this world. However, all these 50 people were battle-ready. They all looked at each other dumbly. Even for them, going inside the dungeon was a life and death trial. They only dared to do it because Lon Deming and Lon Fawn were present with them, and the duo were more powerful than all of them put together. But these people, they didn't seem to care about the dangers of the dungeon all that much. What the hell? Just what were their levels? Seeing the general mood of the group, Lon Deming loudly cleared his throat. Don't think too much. They also probably have powerful fighters in their group. Let's keep our focus and do our job. Everyone nodded in agreement, and the twenty or so people collectively entered the dungeon, with Lon Deming and Lon Fawn taking the lead. Once inside the dungeon, 
all the teams that entered separately were in separate instances, so they were all unable to see each other. A couple of hours passed by in silence, where only the dungeon portal glowed brightly amidst the wilderness. Soon the first team stepped out of the dungeon. Coincidentally, it was Lon Deming's team. Everyone looked very tired and worn out. Some of them even had injuries, but there were no casualties. Shall we return back to the community, sir? One of the men asked Deming tiredly. However, the brother and sister pair were in shock. They were busy looking around as if they were hoping to find someone. Do you think maybe they are already on their way back? Lon Fen furrowed her brows. Lon Deming shook his head. There were absolutely no signs of disturbance at all. This could only mean one thing. No, I think they are still in the dungeon. He answered with a rueful smile. They had entered the dungeon last, and technically they should also be the last to step out, but judging from everything around them, it looked like they were the first to step out. This was not a race, and it did not matter who walked out first, but the thing was, this clearly showed the difference in strength between the two groups. Even with Lon Deming and Lon Fun present, the two who were touted as geniuses, their team still couldn't measure up to the others. Not even one of the five teams. Let's take a break first and then start the return trip. Lon Deming spoke after a minute of silence. He really wanted to see just how long these people would be able to hold on inside the dungeon. Just what was the difference between them? However, this turned out to be a bad decision. Another couple of hours passed, and it looked like no one was coming out anytime soon. Were they planning on completing the whole dungeon on the same run? Lon Deming sighed. He then tiredly stood up and waved his hand at the rest of the group. There was no point in waiting here any longer. Let's head back, he said, and the group quickly started clearing out. Everyone was hungry and starving, so the return trip was a lot faster than usual, even though they were dead tired. The group arrived back at the settlement in silence, each thinking of their own burden. Okay. We will again meet back here tomorrow at the break of dawn, Lon Deming announced loudly. Everyone nodded, and the group was about to disperse. But suddenly, Lon Deming froze in his tracks. Lon Fen also turned to look at him at the same time. Their faces were full of dread as they both could instinctively feel it. There was someone else here. Lon Deming immediately withdrew his daggers, and Lon Fen created an ice spear from her magic. But before either of them could do anything else, a sweet melodious voice giggled. The sound of the laughter loudly rang, echoing in all directions. My sweet, sweet bloodbags, you are finally here. Slurp. In the dark of the night, a pair of crimson eyes lit up brightly. Who was this? What was going on? Everyone couldn't help but shiver at this ominous presence as a chill crawled up their spines. They subconsciously took a step back. My sweet, sweet bloodbags, you are finally here. Slurp. A figure slowly walked out of the darkness. Everyone watched in a daze, but Lon Deming and Lon Fawn were quick to react. Deming immediately disappeared into the darkness, and Lon Fawn produced a dozen thin ice needles barely visible to the eye. The two of them worked in coordination as Deming first struck with his dagger at the unwelcome intruder while Lon Fawn's needle shot forward aiming for all the vital points. Both of their speeds were quite impressive. Even if the opponent managed to evade one attack, it was impossible to evade the second attack simultaneously. They were surely done for, or at least were bound to take significant damage. This was the talent of the top two fighters, who were the pillars of their community. Everyone watched in awe, expecting to see the intruder bleed. However, what happened next was completely unexpected. The pair of crimson eyes glowed brightly as the figure ignored both attacks and casually stepped forward. To everyone's surprise, it was a tall and petite woman who looked extremely attractive. She had a stunning figure and wore a black lacy dress that clung to her body, which made her all the more seductive. She smiled calmly at everyone with a mysterious glint in her eyes as she lifted her hands to effortlessly block Deming's next attack and the attack after that. Lon Fen also did not give up. She gritted her teeth and continued to attack the woman with everything she had. She materialized a huge ice spear and dashed forward towards the woman. Seeing her, the others as well snapped out of it, and the three of them who were carrying guns took out the weapon and aimed for the woman. The words she had spoken and her crimson eyes had already revealed to everyone who she probably was. Someone from the hospital vampire group had escaped 
and was now at their base to take revenge. However, only Lon Deming and Lon Fin knew that this person was nothing like the others. She was far more powerful than the rest of the trash they had taken out. As bullets zoomed forward and they continued attacking the woman with their full abilities, the seductive woman laughed once again. Oh no, this is more than I expected. You guys can come out. Otherwise, I might accidentally kill someone. Oops. We cannot afford to waste precious goods. She made an O-shape with her plump, red lips and mockingly covered her mouth with her hands. The next second, several bright crimson eyes popped out of the darkness. Lon Dimming and Lon Fun stared in shock. They were completely surrounded. And to their surprise, these were all vampires? Where did they come from? Moreover, these vampires seemed to be on a completely different level than the ones they had killed. Before they could make sense of things, the crimson eyes started moving with incredible speed. Within a minute, the whole group was forced to kneel into submission, their hands held behind their heads. Even Lon Deming and Lon Fawn were unable to put up a fight against these creatures. They had not only amazing speed but also amazing strength. The whole group was completely subdued. Now that was better. A lot quicker. The woman in the black dress smiled as she licked her lips and walked forward. She came toward Lon Deming specifically and ran her long fingernail along his cheek. What an intoxicating scent you have. She took a deep breath, leaning closer to him, revealing all her assets. You guys did not trust me. Now see for yourself. The other vampires silently stood, not moving a muscle. Even though it was an invitation, they knew better than to accept it. Bah. Fine. Let's just finish up fast here. We have more work to do. We need to move south. The woman scoffed. South? Lon Deming's heart skipped a beat. If they were going south, then it was inevitable that they would run into Liam. Perhaps they were not yet completely doomed. What are you thinking, my sweetie pie? What was the thought that just ran through your head? She leaned even closer and licked Lon Deming. I am just not able to control it. He is just too delicious. She licked her fingers and added, Only someone who has tasted an evolver will know. The most delicious blood is the blood that is mixed with mana. Slurp. The rest of these people are only fit to become slaves. But you will go straight to my personal pantry. Slurp. She smacked her lips and forced Dimming to stand up. Why don't you guys get out and round up the rest of the sheep? I want to take a snack break. She then tilted her head back up, revealing two sets of shining fangs, and with a smirk in her eyes, she dove straight for the pulsing carotid. However, before those sharp fangs could dig into the pale white skin, a ball of fire appeared out of nowhere and hit her hard. The vampiress was so taken aback by the attack that she actually fell backwards. Her beautiful phoenix eyes narrowed, and an ugly scowl appeared on her seductive face. You guys are having fun without inviting your neighbors. A voice sounded. The vampiress watched as several more people appeared out of the darkness, but this time they were clearly not on the same side. These were human beings, more specifically, human beings with a strong scent of mana coming off their bodies. What are you waiting for? Take them all down. I don't care if they lose a limb or two. I need them all broken down. The vampiress screamed in anger. The fact that she had fallen down in an extremely unsightly manner, and that too in front of all her subordinates, made her extra furious. Today, no one was going to get out alive. The vampiress snarled and pounced forward wanting to dip down onto Lon Deming's neck again. However, this time a few arrows zoomed toward her, sending her back once more. A couple of these arrows actually managed to hit her and drew blood. She snarled in anger. The other vampires also dashed to start a full-on onslaught. Though they did not seem to have any particular sort of magic affinity or special skills, their stats made up for the lack of these things. They charged forward with tremendous strength and power. Lon Deming used this chance to slip away from the grasp of the vampire and disappeared back into the darkness. However, he was speechless as to what he was supposed to do next. Everywhere around him, there was blood and carnage. Loud screeching and clanging sounds of metal echoed from all directions. Only now, they were completely overwhelmed by the group of unexpected vampires. But in just a few seconds, the entire situation had changed and now there was a fierce battle ongoing. Unlike their group, these people were clearly not easy targets. 
they were fighting toe-to-toe with the evil creatures, who possessed enviable strength and power. Lon Deming did not have to wonder who these people were. The hot and sizzling red-headed foreigner was simply too eye-catching for anyone to ignore. However, she was not the only one who was pushing back. It looked like a couple of teams had returned to the home base, and every single one of the team members was putting up an admirable fight. But was it enough to take down the group of blood-hungry monsters? Lon Deming did not stand still anymore. He immediately rushed towards the person closest to him, who was currently being beaten into a pulp. Coincidentally, it was someone from his group and not the other group. Were they all so weak when compared to others? What are they even doing in this crazy new world? Seething from anger and an unwillingness to accept this fate, he rushed forward to fight back. He used his natural stealth skill to the best of his ability as he weaved in and out of the darkness and struck with his dagger repeatedly. The fight continued for a few minutes as both sides seemed to be evenly matched, but this did not last long. A few arrows shot forth in between the duels that shifted the balance of the fight immediately. The vampires started to lose. He he he. My aim is too good lately. Ray kissed the next arrow in his hand before sending that out as well. Alex rolled her eyes at her cheerful brother and couldn't help but make a snide remark. You know you are cheating, right? Only you have an actual item. We are all simply fighting with our hands. Don't be so shameless and call this your win. And it looked like she was not the only one who noticed. A few of the vampires banded together and started chasing Ray to make him pay back for the pain and suffering he was causing. Mommy, someone kill these F asterisk curs. Ray started loudly yelling as he made a run for it. Lon Deming saw this scene, and he was once again dumbfounded. This was a F asterisk king life and death situation, and these people were still not treating it seriously? Just what the hell was happening? How were they so arrogant? From where was this confidence coming? Sure, they might be more skilled and powerful and probably of a higher level when compared to their group, but in front of these vampires, even they were vulnerable. So why were they so carefree? For now, it looked like they were winning, but this was a rumble. This fight could turn at any second. Did they not understand this? Lon Deming slashed his dagger at the vampire in front of him, evading the sharp claws and fangs that came at him. He managed to do a number on this guy thanks to the brutish way in which the vampire was blindly using his raging power. However, before he could feel happy about this small victory, suddenly, the same cackling rang loudly again. As if this was not enough, another woman had appeared out of nowhere and floated above them in the sky. She actually had the ability to fly. More importantly, her looks were a ditto copy of the previous one, so much so that they could be twins. No, they were probably twins. One was wearing a red dress, while the other was wearing a black dress. That was the only difference between them. Isabel, it looks like you are totally useless without me. The newly arrived vampirist laughed haughtily. Shut up, Alice. The other one hissed from the ground while she tackled a well-built Korean to the ground. Shinsu looked at the two in confusion. He was able to handle one, but two would be difficult. So he quickly glanced at Alex signaling for help. Out of all the vampires, this woman was definitely the strongest, and now that another one arrived, he guessed that the other one was also equally strong, if not stronger. In short, more backup had arrived, so they now needed to start fighting more seriously. And just like he predicted, the newly arrived vampirus seemed to possess a telekinetic ability as she casually waved her hand to fling aside a couple of people. Perhaps they were in a much more dire situation than he had originally assumed. However, Shin Su did not look stressed because of this. As if he knew what was going to happen next, he became relaxed and started attacking more freely. He did not even bother calling Alex for backup anymore. And he was not the only one doing this. Alex and Ray also started shaking their heads in pity as they watched the backup force of vampires arrive and join the battle. Yikes. There is going to be a bloodbath today. Seeing everyone behave so nonchalantly, Lon Deming was close to losing it. These people were crazy. There was something very wrong with all of their heads. His breathing became haggard as he started to increase his pace further to counter the five vampires now coming at him all at once. All of them were fast and strong, and they had pure strength and power on their side. Lon Deming's heart dropped as he saw that there was no way they were winning this fight. 
As soon as the backup arrived, this was already a lost cause, and now they were all doomed. Nothing was going to change it. His body twisted and turned to face the attacks, but he couldn't hold on. Soon, he made a mistake, and a pair of fangs reached right for his throat. This was it. This was his end. I am sorry, father. I have let you down. Lon Deming closed his eyes. If only he were stronger. Lon Deming was confused. Something was wrong. Why did he not feel any pain? Was this the life flashing across his eyes in slow motion that usually occurs before death? But still, something felt off. The vampires should have ripped apart his head by now. It did not make sense. He flashed his eyes open to see why the death god hadn't opened his door for him. However, instead of the death god, there was some other god in front of him at the moment. At least, that was the thought that came into his mind as he watched a familiar figure slice the heads of five of the vampires with a single movement of his sword. Bones crunched and blood splattered everywhere. Everyone turned to witness this scary scene as the vampires growled loudly in anger, seeing their brethren fall like dummies. In the midst of this blood and gore stood a single person who, in a calm and collected manner, walked towards Deming. Are you all right? Mr. Mr. Liam. Deming stared at the kindly smiling person in shock. This was the same man who had terrorized them before, but all he could think of at this moment was how he had saved him without even saying a word about it. This kindness and this warmth. This person in front of him was a good person. He had unnecessarily misunderstood him. No, their whole group had unnecessarily misunderstood him. He had come to their aid like a hero at the last minute and saved them all. The next second, Liam opened his mouth, shattering all of these thoughts. Sorry I didn't jump in sooner. That's my bad. I had to use you guys as bait to lure out everything in the vicinity. Otherwise, it would be a total waste of time to go after these things one by one. Liam let out a yawn and stretched his hands as if he was bored out of his wits. Thanks to them, I had to waste a whole day waiting for this. Now, let's get this over this. Lon Deming's face twitched. What did he just say? Bait? However, Liam was already gone. After forging soul minions out of the five he had just killed, he swiftly moved on to the next group. Lots of new materials. Nice. Liam smiled. He really looked forward to how these high-quality vampire soul minions were going to fare. Unfortunately, he couldn't discern much from the previous batch. They were simply grunts and didn't have anything valuable for him. Their souls were also not that different from ordinary humans. The only information he got was about this raid that was happening tonight. He did not think it would amount to much. But this time, it looked like some interesting specimens had indeed shown up. He was very curious to see how this entire vampire cluster formed in the first place, especially so soon after the apocalypse began. Liam particularly looked at the two twins, who seemed to be stronger than the others, as he licked his lips. What surprises did these two hold? The vampiruses saw this, and suddenly a chill crept up their spines. They felt completely creeped out as they felt Liam's burning gaze on their bodies, and they could tell for a fact that he was not looking at them sexually. They could also see the way Liam was killing everyone and everything around him so casually. Just how much strength one had to possess to slaughter their way through this crowd. What the hell was his level? In reality, he had slowed down as he was creating soul minions along the way, but they did not know that. Yet, what they knew was what they saw with their own eyes. Within the span of a second, about a couple dozen of vampires dropped dead like flies. This enemy was strong. No, screamed the vampiress named Isabel. She couldn't handle watching her entire army utterly destroyed right in front of her eyes. She was the one who had scouted out this entire place and had planned to take charge of this livestock. Everything was fine. Everything was going her way, but that was two seconds ago. From where did this madman show up? How was he so strong? The only person whom she could compare him was, no, perhaps this man was even stronger? Her seductive eyes widened in panic as all traces of her arrogance and attitude that she had earlier were completely wiped away. There was now only fear. She looked up at Alice, and the two vampiresses nodded at the same time. This was not an enemy they could face. Thinking that they were walking into a group of sheep, they had entered a monster's den. They needed to leave. They needed to run. Right now. 
The twins did not hesitate and immediately took off. However, this was simply wishful thinking on their part. Before they could even take a few steps forward, a strong scent reached their noses. Liam was right behind them. However, instead of fear, all they felt was heat. They were assaulted by an intoxicating delicious aroma that made them delirious. This was none other than the blood of the man who had undoubtedly come to claim their lives. Isabella stopped. She couldn't control her impulses. Her brain asked her to run, but her body wanted a taste of this blood. It was nothing like she had ever felt before. Blood like this, slurp, was of the highest quality. Slurp. She licked her lips and turned around, her crimson eyes shimmering brightly in the dark of the night. There was a sort of madness on her face. She was ready to do anything for this blood. She glared like a predator as she searched for the source of this blood, but she only barely got a glimpse before her head rolled slid from her body, rolling down and falling onto the ground with a thud. Isabella! Alice shouted. She screamed in agony as she felt the pain of her twin's death. Don't worry. I am not heartless enough to separate you from your sister. Liam chuckled. She sprinted forward, growling angrily at the conceited foe, but only her head flew forward as her body slumped down lifelessly. Lon Deming stared at Liam in disbelief. Even the twins did not give him any issues. They were swatted to death without him sparing a single drop of sweat. Every single vampire on the battlefield also had the same expression as they watched their masters lie lifelessly on the ground. They were dead? Just like that? Their corpses had already become decayed and desiccated, turning into ashes. They had really died for good. How could this be true? They were supposed to rule this land. They were supposed to build an empire. But they died just like that? Tonight wasn't even supposed to be a difficult mission. They were merely raiding a bunch of weaklings. How did everything change? All the vampires trembled as they watched the untouchable tyrant turn around. As his gaze swept past them, they could feel their lives already slipping away from their bodies. It was all over. They were going to die. They knew it. Lon Deming slumped onto the ground in terror, finally realizing the difference between himself and the god that was in front of him. What was that he told his father? He would train hard and become strong enough to face him in a week? How laughable. He really was a fool. Lon Fen also stood frozen on the spot, staring at Liam in shock. Liam, meanwhile, casually went around and took care of the rest of the minions. Oh, how is it going? Are these things weak against divine attacks? He showed up near Alex and cleared off the six vampires she was taking down single-handedly, forging them into soul minions. He then popped up near Shin Su and took care of the four he was fighting against. Liam continued his rounds, and soon, within a minute, the entire vampire gang was completely erased from the vicinity. Just as he finished his business, from a distance, a white fox carried over a bunch of almost dead, beaten to a pulp vampires. Master, I found these guys lurking. Luna adorably smiled as she dropped all the bodies next to Liam. Good job, Luna. Liam chuckled as he took care of this set of vampires as well and created another bunch of soul minions. Is that it? He clicked his tongue as if he were a little disappointed and then looked around at the deathly silent city. He then sighed with a smile. Let's go back first. Alex and the rest of the group went back first, talking to Liam about the new dungeon. The others stared at each other for a while before doing the same thing. Under the cover of darkness, they listlessly packed up and went back to their gated community. After the massacre of about 50-odd so-called vampires that happened in the dead of night, Liam immediately returned back to one of the decent empty houses in the area. He sat down and leaned back on the big couch in the living room of the house, with Luna crawling up next to him. It was time to do some good old-fashioned interrogation. He was very curious to learn more about this blood-sucking group and where they suddenly popped out from. So without any delay, he quickly got down to business. Come out. He started the event by summoning the two main stars of the show from the get-go, the twin vampiruses. The next second, two soul minions instantly materialized in front of him. But unexpectedly, Liam's eyes widened on seeing the duo, especially their forms. Typically when soul minions were forged, they retained their features and their body structure from when they were alive, just before dying. This included the armor and the clothing on their body. For instance, 
Most of the barbarian soul minions had their trademark head crest items on their heads. This did not add any special stats or effects. It was just a simple representation of the soul of the person at the time when they were killed. This was also the case for the several human soul minions Liam had created from the dead policemen. Most of them were still in their police uniform, or at least the soul version of it. However, this was the first time Liam saw something very unique. The two vampiruses standing in front of him were almost completely naked. They simply had three small patches of clothes covering their three private areas, that two only barely revealing all of their plump assets. On top of that, the duo did not panic or look anxious in the slightest. They stood tall with confidence and arrogance as they eyed Liam with visible lust in their eyes. Master, you called for us? The twins licked their lips in unison and stepped forward towards Liam at the same time. Before he could blink, they were already in front of him, kneeling down on the ground in a very suggestive position. The twins opened their mouths wide and looked up at Liam with big glassy eyes. Please allow us to serve you, master. Liam could swear that he saw a flash of crimson glint sweep across their gaze. What was happening? Why were these two minions completely different from every other minion he had forged? Then it hit him like a ton of bricks. He had, in fact, seen this type of behavior before. When he forged the two dragon souls and the wyvern souls, they retained a significant portion of their personalities, specifically their pride. Not just the draconian souls, but the six-winged lion also displayed something similar. In this case, its personality had a slight tinge of cowardliness to it. However, that didn't mean that the souls had to be of high quality. Even Gu Donghai and Gorak kept more of who they were than many of the other human souls. In the same way, these two vampiruses in front of him also seemed to have retained some of their personalities. Liam was not yet sure why these soul minions behaved differently than the others. If he had to guess at the moment, then he would probably attribute these special quirks to their growth potential. Another possibility was the hatred that these minions harbored for him and their degree of unwillingness to accept their fate as his soul minions. Liam gazed at the two seductive vampiruses kneeling in front of him with parted lips. Somehow the word growth potential did not seem to be apt for the moment. The two of them might as well be wolves wanting to eat him up alive. He gave a rueful smile as he shook his head helplessly and cleared his throat. Get daff. But he did not get a chance to finish his words as he was abruptly interrupted by the group of people walking into the house. Coincidentally, Alex was the first one to walk in. Sorry to interrupt you. We thought you would be talking to the soul minions. So we decided to join you. I mean, if that is okay with you. However, before she could finish talking, her words trailed off as she stared at the unbelievable sight. In front of her were the two recently soul-forged vampiruses, and both of them were kneeling in front of Liam, their eyes fixed on a certain part of him as if they were about to have their mouths full. They were also very explicitly naked. What the? Alex's face slowly changed as she found her brain once again short-circuiting. How the hell was she in this same position all over again? However, this time she was well aware that she was not alone. Next to her, Shun Yu and Mei Mei also stood gobsmacked with similar stunned expressions. Shin Yu looked frozen while the little girl's face was bright red like a tomato, as she had seen something that she was not supposed to see for a few years. If there was a person who reacted even worse than these three women, it was Ray. He covered his nose as if he expected blood to splurt out of it at any instant and stumbled forward with an awkward shriek. Io, bro, they are undeads. As if he couldn't believe that his role model, the man he always put on a pedestal every single time, could have such a deviant fetish, he looked extremely betrayed, even more so than Shen Yu. However, it was only for a second. He then quickly recovered. Bro, I am sorry. I am sorry. My narrow-minded brain should be slapped. I lost my way for a minute there. Your undeads are different from the normal undeads. They still have a soul. In a way, they are still alive. So this is a completely different scenario. I support you 100%. He even gave Liam a big thumbs up. Tell me later how it feels to be sucked dash. Let's stop it there. Liam did not dare let this misunderstanding continue any longer. It's not what it looks like. He threw his hands up in the air and explained. Unfortunately for him, not a single person in the room seemed to believe him. 
Alex rolled her eyes. Ray was in his own world, thinking about something that Liam was pretty sure was not going to make things worse. Even Shin Su had a knowing look on his face, though he did not outwardly say anything. Liam did not even dare look at Shin Yu or Mei Mei. You guys. Liam sighed and quickly gave up on convincing anyone. He then turned to look at the two vampiruses, who still hadn't taken a hint and moved from their positions. It looked like they couldn't care less about the others in the room as their gaze was only glued onto Liam. He facepalmed and rubbed his brows. You two, can you get the hell up and stand normally? Thankfully, the two soul minions immediately obeyed him. The twin vampiruses got up from their suspicious incriminating positions and stood in front of Liam. Even though their eyes still flashed a heart sign, at least they were not hurling themselves at him. They waited for him with eager anticipation, casting longing glances his way. Liam's face twitched. Before anyone else could speak, he opened his mouth first. Let's move on. What can you two tell me about yourselves? Our names are Alice and Isabella, Master. One of the twins answered, We are eternally bound to your command and will carry out your wishes regardless of the cost. Liam nodded, but he wanted more answers. Who made you vampires? He asked again, starting with the important question first. Alex and the others also snapped out of the earlier situation and intently listened to the current conversation. They as well very much wanted to know who had the power to create beings like this or if this was perhaps a natural phenomenon a byproduct of the apocalypse. Unfortunately for them, the twins became silent as they shook their heads. Liam frowned. How did you two become like this? Who asked you to attack all the people in this area? He asked again. However, this time as well, the duo remained silent. You don't know? Or you can't tell? Liam's gaze hardened. All of his soul minions were loyal to him to a fault, but the two in front of him, he was slightly doubtful. If they were indeed vampires, then were they already undead who perhaps possessed a different master? Are you bound to someone else? No, master. The twins immediately answered. We are only bound to you. We don't know who created us and made us this way. We cannot remember, Alice said. We only remember that he was a foreigner and had a weird accent, Isabella added. Liam had guessed as much because the twins were both clearly from China just based on their facial features. However, Alice and Isabella were not native names. We're also unaware of how he bestowed this power on us. One day suddenly, beasts started clawing at our doorstep, and when we were about to be killed, somehow we were saved. We don't remember his face or any other details about him. The only thing that remained with us was his words. They used to echo in our heads constantly. What words? Liam asked. Become powerful. The twins answered in unison, and you no longer hear them? No, master, ever since you gave life to us again, we no longer hear the words. Then what about the blood? Who taught you to drink it? Liam couldn't believe that two young women could wake up one day and simply find themselves as vampires. However, it looked like that was what had happened. We don't know, master, Alice replied. After that day, we found that we were very powerful and we could easily kill everything that was in our way. While killing, we drank the blood of our prey because we were hungry. We knew that this blood could make us stronger. We also knew that we could make more of others like us. You just knew these things? Yes, master. Liam was perplexed. He silently observed the two soul minions in front of him, at a loss for what to ask them next. Do you remember anything else at all? He vaguely tossed out a question. Yes, master. The twins nodded obediently. In two weeks' time, we are supposed to travel further north to meet with others like us. In two weeks? Liam's eyes widened. Though he hadn't talked to the others about this, roughly in three to four weeks, there would be the next wave of the apocalypse. And the timing the vampires mentioned seemed awfully too close to this checkpoint. This meant that they were planning something big, potentially something that could affect them all. Liam sat back on the couch, engrossed in his thoughts. Just like that, out of nowhere, another variable had popped up. While the existence of the high-level dungeons was a welcome surprise, this was by no means pleasant or welcome. He had a feeling that it was not a mere coincidence that something like this had cropped up so close to his home base. Was this perhaps the work of the Divine Temple? 
Did their influence extend beyond the tutorial world? Or perhaps Crawford had a hand in this? Was he already aware of his current location? Several confusing thoughts swirled in his mind as Liam silently gazed at the two vampiruses in front of him. If what he heard was true, then these two were probably not the only vampires that were created. Was this mysterious person making several more of the same? And if each of them created their own nests, then soon this entire country was going to be riddled with vampire zones. Perhaps this wasn't even restricted to this country? Just like the others, Liam had to base his theories on speculations here. His past knowledge was useless. This was a completely different issue that hadn't happened before. What was the best thing to do now? He quietly pondered. Seeing that Liam was silent, Alex took the chance to ask a few more questions of her own. She stomached the appearance of the two slutty soul minions and talked to them about the various strong points and weak points of vampires in general. Though these two twins were quite threatening when they were alive, the other minions only had stats to their strength, and the reason for this became clear as the twins started explaining. Every time a vampire drank blood, they actually gained a certain number of stats. Alex was shocked. What kind of power was this? It was no wonder that they were able to become so powerful in such a short amount of time. While everyone was risking their lives hunting down beasts to improve themselves, these guys were simply kidnapping the weak and the helpless and becoming stronger by sucking their blood. Alex was getting pissed off just thinking about this. This is ridiculous. Completely unfair. She stomped on the ground. Miss Alex. Sorry, but I think there is something else. A catch. Shin Shu interrupted her. He was a level-headed person, so he was able to notice this before others. Is there a limit to the stats they can gain through this method? He asked the vampiruses. Alice nodded. Yes. We need to keep drinking blood from stronger beings in order to gain stats. Otherwise, our growth will stagnate. Isabella further explained. Initially, we can gain a good amount of stats even from weaker beings. But as we grow stronger, we can no longer do this. Either we have to keep drinking the blood of stronger beings, or we need a large number of weaker beings. Now everyone understood the whole kidnapping ploy and what they were doing with the humans in the hospital complex. Instead of risking their lives, these low lives had gone after the weaklings and simply planned to gather a huge number of people, treating them as livestock. Is there anything else that we should be aware of? Alex glared at the two soul minions icily. Even though they were dead at the moment and had joined their side, she still couldn't help but feel angry looking at the two vampiruses. What about the whole mind control thing? Alice shook her head. That is simply a temporary effect. It's a mediocre ability, and it won't do anything if the target has even a tiny amount of mana empowerment, even at level 1. Oh, that's good. If they did have a mental attack ability, then this fight would have been so much more difficult. Alex sighed in relief. Now all we have to do is find these suckers and punch them in the face. But she then remembered that she had actually seen one of these two fly, so she narrowed her eyes and asked again, What about other abilities? Why are you able to fly? Other vampires don't have that. Only we both have a special ability. You mean others that you created don't have these kinds of abilities? Yes, Alice answered. Isabella has a special agility boost. While I can fly and use telekinesis powers to some extent, so only the main leaders created by that person have these sorts of abilities, Alex glanced at Liam, and he nodded at her, signaling for her to continue asking the questions. He silently listened to everything as the group continued interrogating the two minions for another hour or so, asking about all sorts of things and making sure not to leave anything out. From this, a few other small details came out, such as the regenerative abilities of the vampires. They also seemed to possess a burst damage skill where their stats were temporarily boosted for 10 seconds. Everyone made a note of all the details and memorized their traits by heart. From tonight's meeting, it was abundantly clear that they were going to face a lot more of these guys from here on out. So it was best to be prepared for it. The meeting then came to an end after about another hour. Quietly, everyone exited the room leaving Liam alone with the two slutty vampires once more. But now, no one was in the mood to think about any frivolous matters. With the threat of the vampires looming above everyone, they knew very well that they were only coming out on top of this or, rather, surviving because of Liam. If he were not there, then the consequences would be dire. 
They were also painfully aware that their actions were restricting him quite a bit. If not for their group, which hung around his neck like a dead weight, he wouldn't still be here, keeping an eye on things. So the group silently departed, resolution and determination shining in their eyes. They were all eager to gain strength as quickly as possible. Otherwise, in this new world, they would eventually be left behind in the dust. Liam was powerful, but he was not a god. Moreover, at least the people in this small group cared enough about him not to place the whole burden on his shoulders. As the group walked out in deep contemplation, unexpectedly, they ran into someone else on the doorstep. Standing in front of Alex, Shen Yu, Rei, Mei Mei, and Shin Su were none other than Lan Ganjia and his two heirs, Lan Deming and Lan Fon. There were also a few others from the same group. Did you guys need anything? Alex crossed her arms and asked sternly. Lan Ganjia politely smiled. Someone in his political position would have taken offense at being addressed like this, especially by a foreigner, but he knew better. He did not care about Alex's tone or words and calmly replied, Madam, I apologize for showing up suddenly like this without prior notice. Please, if you don't mind, spare me a few minutes of your time. Huh. Alex was surprised. However, before she could answer, Liam walked out of the house, stretching his hands and with a big smile plastered on his face. This is in regards to? He grinned as if he already knew the answer to this question. Lan Ganjia could see the confidence on the man's face. He chuckled and politely bowed. We would like to request your permission to join your guild. Liam grinned as he gave the nod to the shrewd politician. Just like he expected, the other side completely folded. The only thing was that he did not expect this to happen so soon. But this was a good thing. This showed that he was indeed in the right to recruit these people. They were quickly able to adapt to the situation and see what the best course of action was. If they had waited longer, hesitated, or worse, if Liam had to force their hands to merge the two groups, then this wouldn't have been as fruitful as it was now. So overall, he was very satisfied with this outcome. You are more than welcome to join our guild. We could really use someone who has a political background in your organizational skills, Liam politely replied. Long Ganja smiled. A few others let out sighs of relief. However, no one in the group was naive or stupid. The other party might be treating them with a lot of respect, but everyone here knew the truth too well. This was by no means an equal merger. This was a complete surrender. And sometimes, it was better to surrender to an ally than to die at the hands of the enemy. The next two days were a bit chaotic as the two groups gradually merged and everyone tried to get acquainted with each other. The first thing that they did was get everyone registered as a member of the guild. For several people, this was also the first time they saw the shop and the beautiful fairies. They immediately became excited and mesmerized and entered the magic shop. However, everything was quick to disappear as soon as they saw the price tag on each item and skill. It only took them a few seconds to understand the reality. This shop existed purely to taunt them. After the introduction to the magic shop, the whole settlement then started picking up their stuff and moving to the new base that Lan Gangia and the others had set up. Even though the hotels were closer to the shop, the dungeon was more important for their growth right now. As a result, everyone relocated to the new area and settled in the streets surrounding the main camp. It was a bit awkward to expand suddenly, but no one was picky enough to demand luxuries or comforts, so it wasn't too hard to settle down. As per Liam's orders, Lan Ganjia also immediately started to work on the administrative side. The number of people had suddenly increased, but the rules of the camp were still the same. Everyone had to work. There were no free lunches for anyone. Lan Ganjia requested Alex's permission to change up a few things, but mostly he stuck to the hierarchy. The strong always had the first pick, whether it was beast meat, clothes, or other essential materials. He agreed with this principle since this was the only way to motivate everyone to keep trying harder and harder every single day. If a false sense of security seeps into the camp, then it could become extremely disastrous. The second thing that remained constant was the guild combat groups. There weren't any changes to the groups that ran dungeons together because Liam had already instructed them not to dilute the first string groups with newbies. There was no point in giving free experience points and carries to others. If they wanted strength, they had to risk their lives and work for it. However, he did make the exception for Lon Dimming and Lon Fawn, 
as these two were special cases. These two were naturally blessed with high mana affinity despite not consuming body cleansing elixirs like some of the guild's core members. Their progress was phenomenal, just falling short of Alex's and a few other talented fighters who stood out. They were also not in the same league as the granny and some of her students. Otherwise, the brother and sister pair were solid in their skill set. More importantly, they were also developing at a frightening pace when compared to the others. Watching the two of them fight shoulder to shoulder with the rest of the group during the dungeon runs, Alex had an unsettling feeling well up inside. She quietly walked over to the side and leaned on a tree tiredly. What happened, sis? Ray walked over to her. Nothing. Alex shook her head with a tired smile. Ray did not think that it was nothing. There was definitely something bothering her. He observed her line of sight and saw that she was gazing absent-mindedly at the two new additions. Ray immediately gasped. Don't tell me. Have you already given up on Big Brother Liam? You are interested in the new guy? Alex's face twitched, but Ray did not pick up his cue and continued on. This is... I didn't expect this from you, sis. You have to be more loyal. You cannot look at other guys like this. If you are not sincere, then you can never win over Big Brother. Do you understand? Alex's face further darkened. The vein on her forehead throbbed as she listened to her brother go on and on, once again singing praises of Liam and, of course, along the way shattering her own self-respect into a million pieces. Finally, even Ray couldn't overlook it. Ah ha 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 ha. I am just joking. He quickly took a few paces back and then ran away. Alex huffed and picked up the huge axe that she had found in one of the tool sheds. She then walked away to start practicing her moves. At this point, they had permanently settled in front of the dungeon, running continuously without taking a break and maximizing their time inside. Talented? I will show them what is talented. She gritted her teeth and continued to swing her weapon, each time also propelling a wave of divine aura outward. Slowly, she was becoming more and more adept at handling mana and, more specifically, divine energy on her own. Now that they did not have help from the tutorial skill system, this was a Herculean task. Ray watched her from a distance with a small smile on his face. His usual playfulness was not there as he watched his sister lovingly. He did not have to guess or ask why Alex had been so upset. Even he was prickled by the same thing. The two new people were very similar to Mia. Just like Mia, they were also able to grasp everything quickly and improve at an astonishing pace. Of course, Mia was still a step ahead, as she was a born genius. However, the two also did not fall too far behind. Watching them made his heart ache for the missing ice-cold angel. If Mia was here, Ray as well revealed a tired smile and shook his head. There was no point in thinking about that now. She was still alive and well. So instead of wasting time worrying about her, they had to become stronger, strong enough to bring her back. In a second, he wiped off the sincere expression on his face and replaced it with his usual sunshine smile. Who is ready for the next run? Who? 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 He started howling like a wolf out of nowhere, which earned a few chuckles from the nearby team members. Can you please stop acting like an idiot? Alex face bombed. Only her brother could be a total idiot, even in an apocalyptic setting. The guy did not have a single responsible bone in his body. She also glared at the two new additions and quickly turned her focus back to her training, not willing to fall behind anyone. Born genius or not, she was determined to become better and stronger than anyone. Especially that guy. Liam's arrogant face flashed across her mind as she started swinging the axe with even more gusto, almost as if she was doing target practice, imagining his face right in front of her. While others continued to train in the dungeon day and night, Liam as well was pretty much doing the same thing as he arrived at the second dungeon that had been updated. He had first gone to the earlier dungeon, where he had already cleared a few floors, but to his surprise, he was not able to enter the thing, and a system notification popped out about the weekly reset. From the looks of it, the updated dungeon could only be attempted once a week, no matter how floors were cleared. This was a bit inconvenient, but luckily Liam had the luxury of another dungeon to lean on in the meantime. By the time he was done clearing the mobs of the second dungeon, the timer from the first one would easily run out, and he would be able to go there again. The plan was solid. The only problem was the vampires that had recently cropped up. 
If they chose a time he was inside the dungeon to attack the base, then the result would be disastrous. At the same time, Liam couldn't afford to sit and wait for something to happen simply. Otherwise, the impending second wave of apocalypse would crush them all. So it was either the rock or the hard place. But then, there was another option, and Liam was staring at her currently. The little fox did not look happy as Liam coaxed her to return to the base and stand guard. Since their mental connection was strong enough, he would be able to keep an eye on everything while at the same time continuing to train. After taking care of that, Liam then finally stepped into the second dungeon. Unlike the first one, this dungeon did not have any intimidating towering creatures that were almost twice his size. Instead, it had small cute creatures. Well, cute but deadly. Liam's face twitched as he stared at the group of slimes rushing towards him at full speed. Each of them looked a shade of green and purple, clearly containing something extremely toxic within them. If he was not careful, he could die even if he managed to kill these little things. But this was only a problem for others. Not for him. He had special tanks just for this purpose. Liam did not waste any time as he summoned his army of soul minions, at least those who were above level 40. These slimes might not look like it, but they were still level 50. So he did not underestimate them and called forth only the big shots. The wyverns naturally stepped out first and started stomping down on the little things, snorting in annoyance. Almost immediately, the little slimes burst open like bubbles, and at the same time, Liam instinctively erected a mana barrier around him. The little sh asterisk ts spewed out both gaseous and liquid things that filled the entire space with a poisonous haze. It hung in the air like a heavy cloud, lethal and deathly. Moreover, they did not even die from the impact. The little blobs clumped together to form a few bigger slimes that once again came at the undead, shooting out bullets of poisonous substances. This was definitely going to be a drag. Liam did not like the dungeon very much. At least with the orcs, he was able to run through the space efficiently with a lot of speed. But these little things were time-consuming. At this rate, it was probably going to take an entire day just to deal with this floor. Even though all the slimes on the floor were simply around level 50. Liam remained patient for the first three mobs, while the wyverns tried various combinations of elemental attacks to see what the slimes were weak against. They tried first freezing them and then zapping them with electricity, frying them directly with fire, and even just trapping them under earthen barriers, but nothing was working. Their corrosive ability was top-notch as they slipped right through whatever attack was being piled on. The slimes had an insane magic resistance. The only way to kill them seemed to be physically exhausting them through repeated cycles of breaking them down as they combined together like jelly goo. In other words, it was a slow and painful process. After the fifth mob, Liam even started contemplating quitting the dungeon run. The time spent versus the experience points gained was really not worth it. However, he also did not have the heart to give up on the dungeon just like that, because then he would have nothing else to do. How is it coming along, Dimitri? Liam asked the Dark Elf, whom he was hoping was his way out of this mess. Unfortunately, that also proved to be useless as the Dark Elf couldn't identify or analyze the material of these slimes. In the end, Liam had to go through the awfully long grind until they arrived at the end of the cavern network, where something extremely hideous stared at him. Level 60, Elite Slime Mother. This particular slime was huge and tall and had a skull resembling an old woman hanging at the front. It also had a prefix in front of its name, suggesting that this was probably the boss of the dungeon. Liam's eyes widened before he prepared to jump into the fight and withdrew his black dragon sword. Unlike the other dungeon, this one interestingly had a floor boss. So the architecture of each dungeon is different? Liam took a deep breath and erected a mana barrier around himself before taking a step forward. Let's start. The wyverns instantly started the onslaught with a variety of elemental attacks. The slime mother roared as she started spewing out corrosive acids that made the air tingle whilst casually ignoring the elemental attacks. Once again, the magic resistance was off the charts. However, the corrosive acids were also completely useless against the soul minions as they did not possess a fleshy body, to begin with. The two sides' strong points negated each other. However, they also had their weak points. While wyverns were somewhat weak against both magic and physical attacks, 
the slime mother couldn't do either of those. So from the get-go, the soul minions surrounded the slime mother and started cutting down the huge blob of goo. Maybe I overestimated this boss? Liam quietly watched the fight. However, as the boss's health dropped down to the last 30%, he had to swallow this thought. The slime mother materialized some sort of acidic, poisonous globules, which then evaporated to become sizzling, lethal blades. These blades started flying left and right in the cavern, making it very difficult for both Soul Minions and Liam to evade the attack. Moreover, the poisonous vapors in the space obscured the vision, hiding them partially. These blades also did some amount of physical damage. So you are finally starting to fight back, huh? Liam grinned. He moved from his spot and slashed down at the slime mother with the black dragon sword. The soul sword cut through the jelly-like slime, cutting down a big chunk of the health. The boss became enraged and started sending out more acidic and poisonous wind blades. But Liam churned his mana core to maintain his agility at the peak condition whilst also maintaining the mana barrier. He slashed at the boss again and again and again, bringing down the health by 5% every single time. In the end, he drained every last bit of health of the slime mother as the huge thing wailed before exploding. Putrid, greenish-purple poisonous jelly goop rained everywhere, but weirdly enough, there was no notification of experience points. Liam immediately had a bad feeling. This fight was still not over. The next second, the boss that burst out once again appeared in front of him. However, this time she was in the form of a slime army. Each thing that fell apart after the explosion became an individual slime monster. Each of them was nauseatingly resilient as they came at him from all directions. If his soul army was intimidating, this army of disgusting slimes wasn't any less. More importantly, it was clear that each of them was going to keep splitting again and again until they eventually died down completely. Motherf asterisk cur. Liam couldn't help but curse out loud. This was going to be a long fight. He also did not hold back and summoned a bigger group of soul minions and the two armies went up against each other fearlessly. Liam as well zigzagged around the cavern, taking care of everything that came in his path. The slimes were never-ending, and the fight lasted for about three hours straight. It was a long and boring grind, and the experience points were not nearly as rewarding. The only plus point was the fact that when Liam arrived at the next floor of the dungeon, he was staring at some sort of tree or a plant. There were no more slimes on the next floor. While Liam took a breather, two of the wyverns took care of the poisonous plants by themselves by burning down the vines spread everywhere. Unlike the last floor, this one went by quickly, but Liam did not move forward just yet. He was waiting for his minions to get back. Back on the lower floor, the numerous soul minions were patiently going through puddles of sticky, oozy materials that were plastered on the floor and the walls to see if anything had dropped after the fight. This was the first time Liam had battled a boss in the updated dungeon, so he had a feeling that there might be something to look forward to, perhaps a decent item drop. And his hunch was right on point. It took a few minutes and the combined efforts of several soul minions, but eventually, a barbarian returned back with a mana core. So, no item or weapon? Liam let out an exasperated sigh at the sight of the smaller than usual mana core, but as he received the mana core to take a closer look, his frown quickly turned. Unlike the pure crystalline structure that mana cores typically tended to have, this one was actually slightly muddled. It had light streaks of dark green and purple, like veins running along the mana core. As far as Liam knew, something like this was not possible in the common grade mana cores. In fact, he hadn't observed anything like this, even in the mid-tier mana cores back inside the game world. The only explanation that remained was, this mana core was not ordinary. Thankful that the long and painful grind had at least turned out to be worth something, he quickly commanded the soul minions to move on to the next floor of the dungeon. Perhaps this was his lucky day. This dungeon might not have dropped as many weapons and items as the first dungeon, but if it was going to drop high-quality mana cores that had an affinity to an element, then that was far more valuable compared to the item drops. Liam grinned as he pocketed the core and ordered the minions to take care of the rest of the mobs on the dungeon floor. With fire-spitting minions front and center, this floor got cleared at a much faster rate. The vines were quite sturdy and laced with poisonous thorns, but after getting repeatedly bombarded with various attacks, they did not stand a chance. 
They also lacked the high magic resistance of the slimes, so the floor got cleared out quite easily. Liam as well received a nice chunk of experience points. Of course, this would have been taken care of a lot faster if a certain fox had been here. Liam smiled at the thought of the fox as he quickly tried to connect to Luna. Is everything over fine? Growl. Luna replied back snappily. From the looks of it, she was still pouting. Liam shook his head helplessly and continued to move on to the last few mobs on the floor. Soon even those were cleared out as the group arrived at yet another dungeon boss. Well, if one could even call it that. Liam eyed the huge spread of the thick, sturdy veins that were twisting and turning all over the place. It did not even look like a creature in the first place, but he did not dare underestimate it. The whole thing was definitely a single unit. And if he were a single person, this boss would have definitely given him a run for his mana. However, he was not. Liam signaled for the wyverns to start the fight once again. The ten draconian beasts spread out and started attacking the massively spread out boss in different places. Vines lashed out from all sides, and the fight was a total bloodbath, or would have been if anyone in the army actually had blood flowing through their veins. Liam summoned a few more minions to watch the back of the wyverns, and then he himself dove into the fight as well. This was a splendid training opportunity, and he did not want to miss it. Coiled veins erupted from all directions, trying to attack him, scratch him and tie him up, and it forced Liam to move as fast as he possibly could to evade the sturdy and nimble opponent. He slashed down at the vines that he was not able to evade, but the regeneration ability of the monstrous plant was quite impressive. It kept regrowing with every cut it received, just like the mother slime. It took a while to exhaust the strange being. This made Liam even more confident that this guy also possessed a higher grade mana core which was essentially supplying the creature with endless energy. The only question was whether it was high enough to take on the attacks from the wyverns and Liam at the same time. The answer to this question was revealed in a few minutes as the huge, enormous plant that didn't seem to have an end, or a beginning was burnt to a crisp with nothing left, save for one single item. Amidst the fallen ashes, the six-winged lion dug out a suspicious small mana core. He hurriedly ran to Liam to hand it over like a good little dog. Liam observed the mana core and noticed a light greenish-yellow tinge to it this time. Once again, he had received an above-average mana core. Perfect. Let's keep going. He grinned. They were down two floors, and there were still, hopefully, many more left. At this rate, this dungeon trip might just help him pay a huge chunk of the debt or by another valuable skill. The next floor of the dungeon was a welcome non-poisonous zone filled with trance. These monsters were pretty much trees that had come alive with a tinge of evil mixed in them. But Liam realized he had jumped to that conclusion too fast as the first one immediately opened its mouth to blast a very pungent breath and one filled with toxic spores. Thankfully, he already had his mana barrier up as he had anticipated some sort of poisonous attack which seemed to be the theme of the entire dungeon. He evaded the attack, and at the same time, the wyvern started attacking the trance. However, it did not go as smoothly as the last floor. The trance not only had the poison burst, but they were also hitting heavy. Each of them was around level 80, and the wyverns couldn't hold on for too long. Even the three-headed one struggled. So Liam immediately sent all of his helpers to the back line, taking the brunt of the attacks and attention onto himself. It was time to get dirty and personal. Just like in the last dungeon, he was once again stuck on this particular floor with the mob around level 80. Even with his bonus stats and enhanced abilities, it was still draining to tackle an entire dungeon all by himself. The other soul minions did chip damage at best, but Liam continued to trudge along the dungeon relentlessly. The hard, physically tiring combat helped him take his mind off of many things, especially about the uncertain future and the dangers looming around them, both the ones that they knew of and the ones that were probably hidden. Hours passed by, and he slowly and steadily progressed on the dungeon floor, taking out one group of trance after another. The tall tree-like monsters whipped their branches at him, each one lashing out with heavy weight. Liam suspected that these creatures were using earth elemental attacks to boost their strength and power further. He did not know how long it had been since he started working on this dungeon floor, but it was clear that he was not going to be done anytime soon. 
The only question was whether to continue going in this manner all the way to the end of the dungeon floor to face the floor boss. While the thought of obtaining another higher grade mana core was enticing, he did not want to risk his life unnecessarily. They were outside the game world now. Every death meant a permanent death. His logic warned him to leave the dungeon before the boss. But Liam also wanted to challenge himself by facing an enemy far stronger than him. While he was mulling over this decision, an unexpected notification popped up in front of him. Ding, your guild has been upgraded. What now? Liam stopped in his tracks staring at the new message. The two mana cores were still with him, so it was not him that had initiated it. I guess I will take a trip and check it out. He cleared a few more of the trance along the way, gaining some experience points, and then finally left the dungeon to pay a visit to the magic shop. He was curious about the guild upgrade but he also wanted to see if he could buy some sort of trump card from the magic shop before attempting the floor boss. Shortly after receiving the notification, Liam left the dungeon and summoned his undead condor. He took a ride on the soul beast and arrived at the magic shop in the next few minutes. When he landed, surprisingly, two people were already waiting there for him. One was the three-tailed snow white fox who snarled at the undead condor and jumped onto Liam to take her rightful spot and the other was Longanjia. Liam smiled. How are you adjusting so far to the transition? Ahahaha. Longanjia lightly laughed in response. What can I say, guild leader? We are truly blessed to have met with someone like you. It would have been quite awkward for the middle-aged man to treat someone so young as Liam with respect, but at the moment, he was honestly grateful. I wanted to personally thank you again for sharing beast meat with us. I heard about how it helps to prevent people from becoming violent and turning mindless. We had several casualties because of this, and we also lost a few loved ones. Everyone is very grateful that this problem has finally been resolved. We will never forget this kindness. Liam nodded. Don't think too much about these things. In this new world, we are never really safe. All of us can only try to survive and do our best. Did you also receive the notification about the guild upgrade? Yes, Mr. Liam. Everyone registered in the guild received the message, but I asked them not to flock over here and waste their time. I only brought a few people with me to check things out. Miss Alex, Mr. Ray, and my son Dimming are inside. I was also just about to head inside, Longanjia explained. Liam nodded again and then walked into the magic shop along with Longanjia. The senior turned to take several glances at Liam as he was not sure if he should address the other thing. Liam, at the moment, had several injuries littered over his body. Some were small scratches, but a few were rather deep cuts, but the young man did not seem to be bothered by any of it. In the past, Lon Deming and Lon Fawn had also run through the dungeon several times, but they always came out unscathed. They were never injured in this manner. However, just judging from this, it would be foolish to assume that they were stronger or knew how to fight better than Liam. In reality, this man was probably taking more risks than his son and daughter, fighting with stronger opponents by placing his life on the line. Lon Ganjia silently sighed in admiration as he couldn't help but feel more and more positive about the young man walking beside him. He also made a mental note to talk to his son and daughter to push them a little more. However, as he walked in, he realized that this wouldn't be needed at all. Standing inside the magic shop, Alex, Deming, and Ray also had similar appearances to Liam with numerous injuries on their bodies. Only the foreigner, Mr. Ray, was looking a little better, but the other two seemed as if they had gone through a big ordeal. Longanjia nodded contently. It was now clear to him that his talk or advice was no longer required for his children. They had a much better role model to emulate. He could see the strong competitive spirit raging in Deming's eyes and couldn't help but feel proud. If he was also young, before he could finish that thought, coincidentally, an old woman entered his vision, and he once again smiled bitterly as he was forced to swallow his words. Naturally, he had heard about the Super Granny. The revered dojo master was a lot older than him but was still a force to reckon with, putting to shame even many of the younger fighters. There was no point placing the blame on age. Longanjia decided to stop thinking about unnecessary things. Just like others, he also had his strong points and he wanted to contribute the best that he could by focusing on these strong points. I will be talking to that fairy over there. Please excuse me, Mr. Liam. 
he politely announced and took his leave. Liam as well made his way to the trio who were standing inside the magic shop and discussing something very seriously. What did you all do now? He jokingly asked. Unexpectedly, Alex turned to give him a very serious answer to that question. A group of us reached level 20, and we received the guild upgrade notification. You guys reached level 20 already? Liam was visibly shocked. Sure, the first 20 to 30 levels were rather easy to gain, and it only became exponentially difficult later on, but still, this was a remarkable feat. In his last life, he only barely managed to reach level 5, or something around that when the second wave of the apocalypse hit, and now, they were already ahead of the curve. This was good news. Okay, let's check out what this guild upgrade is about. Liam excitedly stepped forward, only to be headbutted by the arrogant redhead. Aren't you forgetting something? Alex huffed, placing her hands on her shapely hips. Liam did not understand. Hand me over my shield and my axe. I reached level 20, didn't I? The redhead fumed. Liam chuckled as he finally understood the reason why the group had trained so intensely. Naturally, he was also well aware of the said reason. After all, in his last life, he struggled like a dog without a proper weapon. I will give it to you right now. He smiled and did not tease the redhead any longer. He reached into the spatial artifact, and right in front of everyone, he took out a broad sword and a shield that had a faint silver luster. However, the moment the weapons were brought out in the open, a powerful aura seeped out of them. It grabbed the attention of every single person standing inside the shop, including the glittering fairies. This, Alex couldn't believe her eyes. Others were also equally shocked. All the fairies in the shop started murmuring to each other in hushed whispers. It looked like they were able to tell the grade of the weapon by just looking at it. Perhaps they also had an inspect skill like the one Liam had purchased. At least, that's what he assumed. He knew that, at the moment, he was drawing attention to himself. However, he did that for a reason. And the next second, this reason actually stood up from her desk and finally walked out to show her face again. The store manager Tilia batted her eyes, flashing a smile at Liam. Many of the new members were extremely shocked at this behavior, but the old members had seen a lot more, so they did not particularly pay any attention to her. Similarly, Liam also did not pay much attention to her. He politely nodded back, but then quickly went back to ignoring her. Are you going to take it or not? He winked at Alex. This, this is an epic grade shield and an epic grade sword? Alex gulped. She extended her trembling hands and carefully accepted the weapons as if she were accepting a newborn baby into her arms. Her eyes wandered lovingly over the weapons she had longed for day and night for so long. Brother, this is so unfair. Ray's eyes were locked onto the amazing set of weapons as well. He had only received a random bow, but Alex had received an epic grade gear set? Nothing was fair in this world. Liam shook his head helplessly and raised his hand to pat the guy on the back. Since you are cheating, you would have to reach level 25 to get the items, not level 20 like the others. Bro. Ray looked dejected, and his head drooped down as if he were drowning in misery. But the next second, Alex swatted him on the head. Stop messing around. Let's remember where we are. Huh. So you remembered where you were when you asked bro for the items? Ray scowled, but Alex ignored him and went back to admiring and getting accustomed to her new equipment. So unfair. So unfair. Liam knew better than to intervene in the friendly fire between the siblings. So he sidestepped them and walked over to Deming. Here you go. To Deming's surprise, he handed him a pair of daggers as well. Deming did not even have to look closely. Just a single glance told him that this pair of weapons was on a completely different level than the ones he was using. What were they even made of? As an all-rounder, he had some amount of knowledge in smithing and such, especially when it came to traditional weapons. But he was entirely unable to recognize the metal these daggers were made from. He looked at them for a couple of seconds and could only draw one conclusion. These were very valuable far more valuable for Liam to be simply handing them over to him. Ah, uh, I, he stammered, looking up at the enigmatic guy only to see a gentle smile. Don't worry about it. You are a part of the team now. Liam patted him. No way. Immediately, both Alex and Ray turned to look at the pair of daggers in Deming's hands. For a second, 
They were worried that Liam had been too impulsive. Only after they confirmed that it was not Shun Yu's legendary daggers did they let out a sigh of relief. It was not that they had anything against Deming per se, but they had known the guy for not that long, so they were not comfortable sharing their legendary great items. Liam laughed at the duo's reaction. He also looked at Deming and added, I will be honest with you. I have a better pair of daggers with me, but to win that, you would have to beat another member of the group. Oh? Deming's interest was piqued, but he quickly shook his head. Mr. Liam, that would not be necessary. I am satisfied with what you have given me right now. I will first earn my place before aiming higher. Since Liam was straightforward with him, he also did not beat around the bush. All right, at least stop calling me so formally all the time. We are all going to fight together from now on, trusting each other to watch our backs. So no need to be so distant. Liam patted him and moved on to the next task at hand. He still had to distribute weapons to a bunch of others, but for now, he first wanted to take a look at the new guild upgrade. Still ignoring Tilia, he silently opened the system interface without sparing the fairy another glance. Tilia obviously noticed this as the fairy's face twitched. However, she as well remained silent. This was because she knew something Liam did not know. There was a surprise waiting for him and she sneered inwardly as she wondered how the human being was going to handle the challenge. Meanwhile, Liam browsed the guild interface. His gaze went through the various details only to see that the upgrade was quite a simple one. They had basically unlocked another tier, which enabled them to organize the guild members in a more elaborate fashion. They could now have members and non-members, who were essentially members on a waitlist. Also, the total number of people who could register for the guild had also increased. Not that they hit this limit in the first place. Other than these couple of changes, there was also the option to select a small territory as a guild residence. This basically only allowed people from the specific guild residence to inhabit that particular territory. This is new. Liam frowned. His gaze then shifted to check if these fairies were charging more fees for establishing a guild residence and marking a specific territory as theirs. Liam did not mind paying the fees to register the guild, but if they again had to pay a ridiculous amount of fees to claim a foothold on the planet that originally belonged to them, that did not quite sit well with him. Thankfully, it did not come to that. It looked like setting up a territory was free of charge. It was more of a first-come, first-serve arrangement. He observed it for a few more minutes and then realized something else. Wasn't this a recipe for war? At least if they had to pay fees, then there would be some sort of threshold to cross. Liam gave a sideways glance to the fairy who was still smirking and continued browsing the system interface. These seemed to be the main changes after the upgrade. They were a little underwhelming at the moment, but he did not care. Setting up a territory could potentially lead to many more things. They probably have to keep unlocking higher tiers to get more features. There was a lot of work to be done. Liam sighed, and just as he was about to turn and walk away, he noticed something strange. There was actually another small change that he almost missed. He clicked on the notification blinking in the corner, and his eyes immediately widened in shock. Alex, Ray, come here and take a look. Liam immediately called the duo over. Since Liam was calling them, they naturally became curious and peered over the status screen quickly, and the next second they also revealed stunned expressions. Was this for real? Ding. Crimson Abyss Guild is now visible on all magic shops in this world. Registered members from other shops would now be able to apply for guild membership irrespective of their location. The three went through the message several times over, and the implications of this were glaring right at their faces. Bro, does this mean we will now be able to communicate with other guild members who are stuck in different parts of the world? Ray exclaimed in shock. Yes, that should be possible. Liam scratched his chin. They would finally be able to set up proper channels of communication with everyone who survived. Not only that, but they would be able to provide them with help, and perhaps even do some sort of mana core transfer or item transfer through the guild warehouse to aid them. The possibilities were endless. The only problem was that this would alert both friends and enemies alike to their guild's existence. And Crimson Abyss, or rather, Liam, had a lot of enemies. This single notification essentially accelerated everything. They would once again be on the hot plate before even the second wave of the apocalypse hit the planet. This is not good. Alex also spelt out what was on his mind. 
MMM, Liam hummed as he lifted his head up to look at the fairy hovering silently in front of him. Grin. It was only for a second, but there was an unmistakable smile on the fairy's face, which quickly disappeared when their eyes met. Good day, Mr. Liam. May I help you with anything? Tilia flashed her usual flirtatious smile and asked, though it sounded more sarcastic than helpful. Perhaps you want to sell us some weapons like that to make preparations for the future? The fairy pointed at Alex's shield and sword, which she was hugging closely to her body. So you are enjoying my misery, huh? Liam silently smiled and then shook his head. He was not hit hard enough in the head to make the kind of transaction the fairy was suggesting. The resale value would be dirt cheap. Instead, he fished out the two small mana cores. I am not interested in selling any weapons, but you can help me after all. He showed Tilia the mana cores. Can you tell me how many common grade mana cores these can be exchanged for? The fairy's face twitched as she gazed at the two bite-sized crystal pieces in Liam's hand. It was clear that he had managed to achieve a breakthrough somewhere and had started putting down dungeon bosses. Each of these can be exchanged for 10,000 tier 1 mana cores, she professionally replied. However, there was definitely a hostile vibe to her tone. Liam did not care about that and handed over his store card. Add the balance to the card. Sure thing, Mr. Liam. Tilia as well flashed a cold yet polite smile as she waltzed back inside, throwing the card to another fairy to process. Standing next to Liam, Alex looked at the two mana cores, then at Liam, and then at the fairy who was walking away. She chuckled inwardly. Women seem to either hate you or love you. What do you do to them? She was very much enjoying the icy treatment Liam was receiving. For once, there was justice in this world. Liam snapped out of his thoughts and turned to look at the snickering redhead, who seemed to be really enjoying herself. Which category are you? He raised his brows. Alex immediately flushed a little and turned away. I am leaving. She took her shield and broadsword and ran out of the shop in a hurry. Only Ray and Deming still stood with Liam, one barely holding back his laughter and the other clearly confused about what was going on. Well, 20,000 mana cores is not that much. I don't think that I will be able to buy anything with it. So let's make a move as well. Liam also started walking out of the shop after the fairy returned his updated store card. Bro, what about our guild members? Ray whistled and walked next to him. The guild upgrade just got activated. So let's give them some time to notice the guild first. We can try communicating with them tomorrow. I am pretty sure that we can see some names by then. Oh, that makes sense. Do you think they discovered some dungeons too? I wonder how they are doing. Ray started casually discussing various things with Liam. Lon Dimming also walked behind them, silently listening to their conversation. He couldn't help but regret that he had missed out on being a part of a game that had such huge global ramifications. And from the looks of it, it was not a simple game. The entire situation was shrouded in mystery on many levels and even gave rise to a monster like Liam. From everything that had happened so far, Lon Dimming was sure of one thing. He might have been born naturally talented, but it was abundantly clear to him that the person next to him had worked hard to get where he was today. He respected that a lot. The three of them continued talking about various things as they walked out of the shop. However, before they could step out of the magic shop, another notification flashed in front of all three of them. Ding. Crimson Abyss has been challenged to a guild war. Ding. Do you wish to accept this challenge? Yes slash no. Ding. Crimson Abyss has been challenged to a guild war. Ding. Do you wish to accept this challenge? Yes slash no. What the F asterisk CK? Are you serious? Bro. Are you seeing this? Ray almost flipped out on seeing the message. It had only been a few minutes since the guild had been made visible for all purposes, but in this short time, someone had actually sent them a war notice? Who the heck was this crazy lunatic? He turned to see what was Liam's reaction as he found the guy oddly silent, but as soon as he did, Ray completely froze. His gaze shivered as he saw a bone-chilling coldness in the person's face. Liam was angry, and he had never seen Liam this angry before. But wasn't this just a Guild War notice? He was also quite upset about it as it seemed like the other party was underestimating Crimson Abyss even though they were the top guild back in the game, but it was still not enough to warn a reaction like this. After all, they had done something similar back inside the game as well, 
and even come out victoriously. So it was the other person who should be worried? It took Ray a couple of seconds, and it finally sunk in. That was right. This was no longer a game, and they no longer had infinite lives. And this person had sent a war notice. It meant that they had decided to fight with him to death? Ray shivered once again. The realization hit him hard. This was an extremely cruel thing to do, especially at uncertain times like these. Humanity was supposed to stand together, not fall divided like this. Even though he was pretty sure that it was not them who were going to be on the losing side, it was still a huge deal. Who was this person who was determined to jump in front of their truck and commit suicide? His gaze lingered on the notification, and he finally paid attention to the finer details, starting with the name of the guild that had challenged them to war. Messengers of God? Ray became even more speechless. What kind of a narcissistic name was this? Just who the heck were these people? Where did this guild suddenly crop up from? And why on earth were they picking a fight with them of all the people? Haven't they heard of Crimson Abyss before? Were these idiots? Ray's head hurt. He then shook himself, snapping out of the confusing thoughts. It was simply no use trying to understand the inner workings of an idiot's brain. He read the details again and saw that the challenge gave them five days to prepare in case they accepted it. If they win, then the enemy's territory would belong to them from now on, and if they lose, then their territory would belong to the enemy from now on. There was no other additional penalty or reward of any kind. Ray turned to look at Liam and saw that he still had the same bone-chilling gaze. Bro, um, we... We are going to accept this, Liam coldly replied. There was also an option to decline, and that did not have any penalty like the one inside the game. However, a guild could only decline three times, and a challenge could be issued every 45 days. So even if the guild decided to challenge them again and again mindlessly, they could still go on for a good 100 days without having to worry about this issue. This would also give them more time to prepare. For others, this might seem like the better option, but Liam knew more about what the future held compared to others. In 100 days, everything would change, and then Guild War would be the last thing on everyone's mind. They would probably not even have to go through with this. But at the same time, the kind of people that issued a war at a time like this should not be allowed to continue to live. We are going to accept this and massacre the other side. Completely. Liam repeated his words. This time around, things were beginning to unfold very differently. In fact, this might not be the only guild challenging them. So Liam was determined to give a good demonstration of what happens when someone issues a guild war challenge, treating people's lives as nothing. They want a war? We will give it to them. Ray could see that Liam was quite set on this decision, so he did not say anything else. He also agreed with Liam in the first place, so there wasn't anything else to say. Yes was the only answer here, and if they showed weakness or sympathy to the other side, then it was only going to come back and bite them later on. So Ray silently nodded. Deming, on the other hand, was curious about something else. Mr. Liam, do you by chance know this guild back when the game was ongoing? Huh. No. Actually, we never heard of this guild. Ray answered instead. Why do you ask, Deming? The thing is, I'm not sure. But these people sent us a challenge so suddenly and so soon that it almost felt like they were waiting for us. I mean, waiting for our guild to upgrade? I don't think that this war challenge is so straightforward. They might be plotting something. Oh. Ray nodded. Now that you mention this, it does make sense. The two of them looked at Liam for his opinion, only to see that he was grinning wildly. No. Huh. There is no need to have any doubt. Liam laughed. This was done specifically to challenge us, and I am pretty sure who is behind this challenge. Both Ray and Deming were shocked, but seeing Liam's mood, they did not ask anything else. The three of them continued to walk silently out of the magic shop as Liam casually raised his hand and accepted the challenge with a big grin. It looks like we are going to war in five days. After leaving the magic shop, Liam, Ray, and Deming arrived at the new base hitching a ride with the big white fox, who hummed happily as she was no longer away from Liam. She blurred through the evening sky, only taking a few minutes to reach the destination. And when they arrived, the entire place was alive for obvious reasons. Bro, it looks like everyone received the notification about the war. Ray smiled bitterly. I will try to do some damage control on our end. Lon Deming scratched his head, feeling a little embarrassed. 
Their side had far more civilians than the others, and also, everything was quite new to them, so they were in complete and utter disarray, scared about the impending war. Many did not even understand what this meant and the ramifications of something like this. They had seen the notification about the war and naturally jumped to the only conclusion. Though the world had visibly changed from all angles, it was still difficult for many people to digest something like this. Liam did not blame them. He also did not bother preparing any inspiring and rousing speeches to motivate the masses. From the beginning, that had never been his aim. These people were far too weak, and it was far too soon for them for something like this to happen. Before Ray or Deming could talk to anyone, Liam walked right into the center of the crowded street where everyone had assembled as if they were preparing for a procession. He looked at the group and calmly spoke to them. This is not your fight. No one has to participate. Ignore the notification and carry on with your daily activities. Silent. Everyone blankly stared at each other's faces as they were once again shocked and confused. However, as Liam's words started to sink into them finally, they were more relieved than confused. So they did not have to participate in the war? Liam did not say anything else and silently walked into the house that he had picked. The crowd is well dispersed. However, not everyone was happy with his decision. Ray, Deming, Alex, Shunyu, Mei Mei and the whole group of main Crimson Abyss guild members walked into the same house, quickly following Liam. Guild leader, we cannot agree with this decision. We know that you do not require our help, but we would still like to participate. Shin Su spoke first. Liam, you cannot stop me from joining. Alex placed her hands on her hips and declared. Brother, see, I also reached level 20. I won't be useless. I will also stand and fight with you. Mei Mei gripped the sides of the pants she was wearing. Shin Yu stood silently, but she was also clearly unwilling to let Liam take this challenge by himself. A few more people spoke and expressed their disagreement. Even Lon Deming and Lon Fawn were in this group. However, Liam remained oddly silent. After listening to the forty or so displeased with his decision, he only smiled. A couple of seconds of awkward silence ensued after which he stood up from the couch with a chuckle. There is a reason behind every single one of my decisions. If we all get dragged into the war, who will stand guard by the base? Ah, uh, everyone nodded in realization. They had become too hot-headed because of this sudden declaration of the challenge, so they hadn't yet thought about everything calmly. And now that Liam mentioned it, they could see the reasoning behind his decision. Unlike them, he had acted after thinking clearly. However, just as this thought ran across their minds, Liam once again opened his mouth and added, Also, you guys do know that you are too weak to be of any help to me, right? With what confidence are you offering me this support? He started laughing. Everyone became a little embarrassed as they awkwardly looked away. No one had any rebuttals for this statement, but thankfully, Liam did not dwell on it. He once again laughed and continued, While it is true that you are not strong enough yet, you have all done a good job of reaching level 20 without the help of any crutches. How did it feel? Did you get a good understanding of mana? Everyone nodded silently. Mana energy is the same here as it was back in the tutorial world, but it was easier to sense there because of the skills and the system's help. Here it's just a bit difficult. Just a bit? Many people bit their lips at this remark as they continued to listen. Liam smiled. I know it's difficult, but once you succeed in sensing mana and using it as a part of yourself, it is permanently yours. No one can take it from you anymore. This is not the tutorial. This is the real world. Try to learn as much as you can and improve as fast as you can. Don't worry about small things like this war. And that brings us to the next topic. Since many of you are already at level 20, today you will be getting your weapons of choice and armor, Liam then started taking out several items from his spatial artifact one after the other, piling all of them up on the ground. These were the top guild vault weapons that Shunyu had gathered, and the little rabbit had snuck in at the last moment. So there were many high-grade weapons, including epic-grade ones. Of course, in this list, there were also a pair of daggers and an emerald crown. These two outshone the rest of the equipment and were clearly in a league of their own. And everyone as well knew exactly what they were. Legendary items. Items that were incomparably powerful. Several gasps echoed in the hall, 
as Mei Mei immediately rushed forward and claimed her beloved crown. When Liam mentioned earlier that he had it, she did not dare believe it. But now the familiar sparkling item was right in front of her eyes. That's mine. Seeing Mei Mei shamelessly picking the best item out of the pile, Shen Yu also did not hold back and dashed ahead with her cheeks burning brightly. She picked up the pair of daggers, which lay at the top of the pile, emitting a mysterious, ominous luster and had the aura of something incomparably powerful. Thank you. She shyly bowed to Liam before walking back to her position again. The two legendary items were gone just like that. The duo started caressing their long-lost items lovingly, with visible joy and excitement in their eyes. Others couldn't help but feel envious as they watched this scene. Shen Yu twirled the daggers in the air and made a couple of moves which left a deep impression on anyone who saw the electric power seething in the air. Even Lan Deming, who was calm, composed, and stable earlier, couldn't help but feel his heart agitate as he watched the daggers hissing like a pair of vicious snakes. As an assassin, his hands itched, wanting to hold something like that at least once in his life. Mei Mei as well, did not stand simply. As soon as she placed the crown on her head, she could feel the strong currents of mana coursing through her body and an insane power and strength seeping into her. This was from the stat boost provided by the Emerald Crown. She immediately started producing a ball of pure mana and, the next second, dispersed the same ball as several tiny dots of mana visibly landed on everyone in the room. What was interesting was that when these tiny dots of mana landed, everyone could feel a breath of fresh air seeping into their lungs as if they had been energized. Yes, Mei Mei did a small fist pump in the air. She had been trying to achieve this skill on her own for a while and now she had finally managed to take the last step and finish the skill to perfection. Ding! You have learned a new skill. Blessing of mana? Blessing of mana. All stats of allies are increased by 1%. Mei Mei's eyes gleamed like twinkling stars as she swiped the notification away with a giggle. Liam, naturally, received the buff as well and gave an encouraging nod to his sister. He had not been paying much attention to her, but she was still working very hard. In reality, he wanted her to live a peaceful life and make a lot of friends and have a decent childhood. However, he also did not want to control her too much. Was it even possible to have a childhood in the current world? He walked over to her, gave her a big hug and kissed her gently on the forehead. Almost everyone knew how much Liam doted on his sister, so they did not have much of a reaction, but some of the new additions to the team stared at this scene in shock. Even this insane monster has a side like this to him? Watching Liam like this was very humanizing for them, but no one dared to forget who he was underneath all that. Lon Deming once again changed the opinion he had about Liam. As a brother, he also understood the man's intentions. As these few people curiously watched the heartwarming interaction, others did not stand around idly. After all, items were at stake, and the good ones were bound to go first. The two legendary items were clearly out of their reach, but there were still other things in the pile. Alex and Shin Su picked out some armor for themselves. Shin Su also grabbed a shield and a broadsword. He sparred with Alex a lot and copied a lot of her moves, and essentially learned everything from her, so their weapon choices were also the same. Next, Ning Shi took a pair of swords and some leather gear for herself. With her slender, nimble figure, she was training to be a dual sword wielder. The leather armor and pants stuck closely to her body and gave her a seductive wild appearance. Mei Mei and Shen Yu also stopped marveling at their legendary items and went in for seconds to pick up some armor. Hoping Liam wouldn't notice, Ray also sneakily switched out his bow and took some armor as well. Barat, Kim Hyun, Kang Mina, and Chung Hee, everyone else as well started helping themselves one after the other. Back in the game, Barat was simply in charge of trading. But now after the world changed, he no longer wished to remain the same. While the game was still there, he had taken some pointers from Liam and trained in sensing mana and casting spells, even though he did not focus on leveling. Right now, all that knowledge was helping him and paying off big time. He was able to cast a good few spells without officially learning the skills. These were simply basic spells, but that in itself helped a lot, and he was also able to get to level 20. The group of Korean players were also in the same boat. They had long since devoted themselves to Liam and practically worshipped him, so they had moved to his city as soon as he made the first guild announcement, 
not doubting him even a little. And now they were reaping the reward for it and gaining strength and abilities at a fast pace. Kim Hyun, Kang Mina, and Chung Hee, all of them followed Shin Su and did not stand on ceremony. Their eyes searched for the best option available and grabbed it fast. In fact, no one from the guild's main team was holding back at all. One by one, everyone who had reached level 20 stepped forward and helped themselves to the gear. Some of them were not the top rankers of the guild, but since they made the right decision to move here, they were now able to enjoy the high-quality gear that they wouldn't have obtained otherwise without the intense competition. The item distribution continued on for a while, as Liam had a pretty huge stash of weapons and armor piled up. Even the members from Granny's Dojo helped themselves to the various items, setting aside their traditional values. Only the newest additions stood around awkwardly, knowing full well that it wouldn't be correct to take advantage of Liam's kindness. Forget about right or wrong, they wouldn't dare in their dreams to do something like this and risk their lives. In the end, Liam walked over himself and handed Lon Fun an epic grade magic staff. This was one of the weapons he had personally forged back in the Elven Lands inside the game. He thought that this fitted the style of the girl, and he gave her a weapon to encourage her natural talent. Ah, uh, Lon Fawn was a bit taken aback by this as she hadn't expected such a gesture. She immediately looked at her brother as she was nervous about how to respond to this unexpected turn of events. But Lon Deming did not say anything. He simply gave her a nod and signaled her silently to accept the weapon. It did not matter that they hadn't done anything to deserve it. Since Liam was giving it himself, there was no point in being pretentious and refusing a gift. In this new world, they couldn't afford to nurture their pride too much. Survival came first. People with better equipment had a better chance to become stronger and obtain more opportunities which would once again put them in a better position to receive such opportunities. It was truly a vicious cycle. If one really wanted to climb from the very bottom and topple all of these people, then only heaven-defying luck would help or perhaps hardwick that consumed their very life. Nothing was wrong in accepting a little help in this arduous journey, especially when many people's lives depended on it. Besides, from everything he had seen so far, he couldn't help but conclude that this was a good team to be a part of. If they did not deserve special treatment just yet, then they only had to work harder in the future and pay their dues. Lon Fawn understood her brother's intentions and accepted the staff. She also couldn't resist such a powerful staff. Even before laying her hands on it, she could already feel that this was going to change her life. And just as she suspected, as soon as the staff touched her hand, Lon Fawn could feel a burst of energy sweeping through her body. Suddenly her mind became clearer, and some things that were bothering her with respect to her ice magic untangled themselves in her head. That was not all. She also got a small clue about using some other magic apart from her ice magic. She gripped the staff tightly and bowed to Liam in gratitude. She would definitely not let him down for trusting her with this. Liam smiled. He did not say anything. Naturally, he had given these two siblings the benefit of the doubt and taken a big leap in including them in their group. At least, that's how it would look to an outsider. But in reality, there were zero chances that the two would ever betray him as long as their father was still in his settlement. He could even be called a hostage. Also, he had only given them a few things and nothing earth-shattering, so there was no need to think too much. Watching this interaction, Ray, who was standing a few feet away, quickly leaned towards Shin Su and snickered. Look at that. Bro is already securing his next harem member. Shin Su gave the guy a long and hard look and then quietly stepped aside. Alex, Shun Yu, Mei Mei, and even Kang Mina, who had a crush on Liam, were all standing around them. If this guy were to speak even a decibel louder, then all these women would probably pummel them both. However, Ray did not get the hint and continued silently snickering. Luckily for Liam, the crowd was too occupied with their new gear to pay attention to him. Soon, everyone finished grabbing what they wanted and needed from the items pile. It took about an hour for the whole event, but at the end of it, there were big smiles visible on most people's faces. The weapon distribution was successfully completed, and this was the first step in the war preparation. Afterwards, no one lingered back any longer, and the several teams rushed back to the dungeon as if there was a fire lit under their asses. Liam couldn't tell if it was because of the teasing words he had spoken, 
wherein he had basically called them useless baggage, or if it was because of the excitement of getting actual weapons to blast through the dungeon runs. Either way, everyone seemed to be extremely motivated and rushed to the dungeon in a hurry, starting their runs sooner than usual. After all, there was a war happening in five days, and they had no intentions of remaining at the level 20s when SH asterisk T went down. Seeing the crowd clear in a second, Liam also did not plan to remain idle. He had just now finished running through the second upgraded dungeon partially as much as he could and was still quite tired. However, there were still things that he could do. The other dungeon would have reset by now, and getting through the lower levels was a piece of cake. All he had to do was take a stroll while his minions did the work. So he hurriedly washed himself up, put on some clean clothes, grabbed some food to eat, and then left Luna behind to guard as usual before leaving for the orc dungeon. Without any delay, he dove straight into the portal and summoned his army, or at least those minions in his army who were around level 50. This ensured both speed and efficiency, and the dungeon run started with a bang as the wyverns went all out right from the get-go. Liam made sure to rest adequately while strolling behind his soul minions who were raising hell inside the dungeon. It looked like, after the reset, the entire dungeon was once again fully brimming with mobs from top to bottom, just like the first time. And since this was the second run, there were no more surprises waiting for him, and they progressed quite easily, at least until the third floor, where the level 75 to 85 Titan orcs stood guard. At this point, just the soul minions were no longer enough to deal with the dungeon mobs. Liam decided to take a pause here as he did not want to exhaust himself before the big event completely. For now, a few of the minions had leveled up, and he also managed to gather quite a bit of item drops. These items were quite redundant for the main members of the party as they had higher tiered equipment, but in this world, one could never have enough gear. Longanjia had also taken some new initiatives. After checking with Liam, the seasoned politician organized small task force teams for training newcomers. These people moved around the cities in trucks and vehicles and checked for stray beasts and mana zombies. They attacked these less threatening foes under the safety of supervision and slowly trained. Dungeon mobs were too difficult for these types of beginners who previously did not have much combat experience. Though this sort of setting might not yield anything in the short run, in the long run, there might be some surprising results. So Liam decided to allot the low-tier dungeon drops to these teams. He also saved some for later use when a guild vault became available, and Crimson Abyss members from other parts of the world could access this guild vault. Liam then once again resumed his dungeon run and slowly trained at his own pace. In this manner, the next few days quickly passed by, and soon, the five days got over in the blink of an eye. It was finally the big day. The war was here. Knocking on their doorstep, Liam returned back to the base a few hours before dawn and took some time to refresh himself and take a small nap. His mind was a little unsteady, not for the lack of confidence, but because he couldn't help the numerous thoughts crashing like waves one after the other without an end. More than the war itself, the question that bugged him the most was, who were these messengers of God? He had never heard of this guild before in both his lifetimes, which made it all the more mysterious. As he mulled over this thought and prepared himself for the day, an energetic redhead promptly showed up on his doorstep. We are also coming with you. Alex stood outside, along with a bunch of other guild members. Every single one of them seemed to be determined to support him. Liam chuckled lightly at the bunch. He naturally appreciated them because they had been loyal to him now for quite a while, but at the same time, he really did not plan on taking anyone with him for many reasons. I mean what I said. I will be going alone. I really think that you should reconsider. You should at least bring a tank and a few healers with you. We will support you from the sidelines. Alex shook her head. Liam walked closer and couldn't help himself as he flicked the forehead of the unruly redhead. You want to come with me even if this is going to be dangerous? Alex's face twitched, but she replied seriously without responding to his taunt. Yes. I might be walking into anything. Are you willing to die for me? Liam smiled and asked again. However, the redhead was still strong. Yes. She also replied again. Then what about your sister? Finally, the girl's face changed. Alex gritted her teeth without saying anything else and looked down. Liam laughed and did not want to mess with her anymore. Listen, I made this decision only after careful thinking, and it has not changed. 
Stand back and stay guard here. I have a feeling that this war could be a distraction. As for me, don't worry about me. I will definitely be back. Everyone carefully listened to Liam and nodded. He had a plan, and their duty was to follow his orders. So they did not question him again. Even Alex, who was always headstrong, let it go. Don't be too arrogant and hold back. Just go all out from the beginning. She mumbled. Liam smiled. Okay. I won't. You know you can stack rings and bracelets. If you are first starting with long-range combat, wear as many as you can, and when you move to close combat, you can lose some according to convenience. Yes, I know. Liam, I think the enemy challenged us, knowing full well that we are Crimson Abyss. He might have some trump cards. Be careful. He might not know about your level 80 yet, but he might still have his own secrets. Yes, I will keep that in mind. You daft. Sis, that's enough. Ray laughed as he pulled his sister back, tugging at her hand. Alex looked startled for a moment as she finally snapped out of it and remained quiet. She realized that, at the moment, she sounded like a wife reminding her husband about the things that he shouldn't forget. She became immediately flustered and then a little angry. What do you know? Even if it is Liam, he is going to face an enemy. So I just wanted to remind him about a few things, she muttered under breath defending herself with a scoff. Ray threw his hands up in the air helplessly. Liam chuckled. I know. Thank you. He did not mind at all. He smiled at the redhead, who looked quite adorable and cute at the moment, and then turned to leave. However, he stopped as Alex's voice once again sounded. Was this girl still not done yet? Um, sorry, last thing. The stats. Even the lower level opponent could have extremely high stats. Don't forget. Alex had found this out only recently, so even though she was very embarrassed at the moment, she decided to inform Liam about this one last thing as she was not completely sure if he knew this or not. Yes, I do know about the special geniuses, blessed by mana. Liam smiled and gave a sideways glance at Lon Deming, who returned his gaze with a nod. But then he suddenly froze. Did you say stats? What do you mean, stats? Judging from the shocked look on Liam's face, Alex could tell that she had indeed hit the nail on the head. It seemed like Liam did not know about this after all. I knew it. Color returned to her face as she started talking a lot more confidently. Liam, I will explain it to you. See, the thing is, when we level up, different people are gaining a different amount of stats. Back inside the game, we gained two stat points per attribute for below level 50, but now we only gain two stat points for every level. But this is not true for everyone. I am gaining 6 stat points every level, and all of the guild members who had taken the body cleansing elixir are also gaining 4 or 5 stat points per level, higher than 2, which seems to be the norm. Alex continued. Are, are you sure? Liam stammered. He had never heard of anything like this before. Some people gain 2 stats, while others gain more when leveling. In Liam's previous life, he had only gained 2 stats for every level. Most people only gain that. However, the fact that Alex could gain six showed him exactly how tyrannical a person's affinity was, or rather, the tutorial had been. If one managed to use the tutorial in the right way, then the gains could reflect so much in the real world. He had only wanted to sharpen everyone's affinity and base constitution, but it looked like it had inadvertently led to a result like this. This might not be as good as Liam's own stats, as his stats were carried over from within the game. Those gains were quite generous when compared to now, with anyone from level 1 to level 10 gaining 6 stat points per level, anyone from level 10 to level 50 gaining 12 stat points per level, and lastly, anyone from level 50 gaining 18 stat points per level. This in itself had given Liam a huge leg up compared to other people who only gained measly 2 stat points in the outside world for every level. But it looked like that was not the end of it. He was not the only one with the advantage, though not as massive as his. Alex and the others who consumed body cleansing elixir also had reaped some benefits. Liam then looked at Lon Deming as he thought about this. What about these two? How many did they gain? He had a feeling that the answer was not going to be simple. I gained 10 stat points per level. Lon Deming quickly answered. Liam's gaze quickly shifted to Lon Fawn, and she also nodded. I gained 10 stat points per level too. The two of them did not hide anything and answered honestly. Liam remained still for a moment and then helplessly shook his head. 
So not only did Lon Fawn and Lon Deming have excellent innate abilities and raw talent when it came to magic, but they also had an unfair advantage when leveling up, gaining stats even better than Alex. Was this the difference in their bodies? Liam was not sure, but no matter what the reason was, this was going to make things more interesting and troublesome at the same time. The world was truly unfair. It was now painfully clear that he had been an absolute bottom feeder in his last life. However, he was on the other side of the road now. Liam couldn't help but wonder what his own stat gain would be like when the time came. Of course, it looked like he might have to wait for a couple of weeks for this. At his level, gaining even one other level was far more difficult and time-consuming. Liam then took his time to inquire a bunch of people about their respective stat gains. Unfortunately, it looked like there were no more born geniuses in their group. Shinsu only gained 4 stat points per level. Mei Mei gained 5 stat points per level. Shinyu, like Alex, gained 6 stat points per level, and Rei only gained 4 per level. This might look like it didn't make much difference right now, but when the levels start stacking up, the tier difference would definitely be apparent. The game was rigged right from the start. The harsh reality was that hard work could only take someone so far. This was the irrefutable truth, and no one was above it. However, this was only for a short time. Seeing their faces a little down, Liam patted Ray and Shin Su on the back. These advantages are nothing. I believe that if someone tried their hardest every single day without losing hope, pursuing their goal with relentless determination, then these things would definitely not matter one day. We need to keep going forward and always strive for the best. Liam wanted to add that he himself was an example of this, but then he had received an unbelievable blessing that others probably wouldn't even dream about. However, that did not mean that he did not believe in what he said. After all, the world had now changed so much that his blessing had already run out. His rebirth meant almost nothing now. This stat difference clearly told him that much. He needed to rethink every single fact that he knew from his last life. Soon he would lose all the edge he had completely. However, what would stay with him was what he had achieved until now, and that was something no one could take away from him. With the jump start he had right now, his chances of survival in this new world were tremendously higher. No, in fact, just as he had gained power, he had also gained incredibly powerful enemies. It seemed even after being reborn, fate wasn't that easy to overcome. He might be powerful now, but the world was still waiting for him to fall. In his last life, all he could see was the Gu family and the insufferable torture they had imposed on him. He couldn't see anything past that, and when he finally escaped their clutches, he had lost everything. His only family, any chance of survival in this cruel world. After that, he was simply running from one disaster to another until, eventually, death came knocking at his doorstep. But who knew at the end of everything, the end of it all, that there would be a miracle waiting for him. Liam was not someone who believed in free rides. There was a price to pay for everything, and he had a feeling that his miracle also probably had one, perhaps a big one that would consume him completely. However, that was something to worry about when the time came. Not now. Now they had to survive. For now, he would be the miracle that these two needed to break through their limits. Liam smiled as he patted Ray and Shin Su again. Watch your backs while I am gone. I am counting on you to take care of things here. He also looked at Alex and nodded. Thank you for letting me know about this. He then did not waste any more time and started walking away towards the white fox who was silently waiting for him. The two of them left the base in front of everyone's eyes. Alex clenched her fists furiously, punching something nearby, not caring if it was a human or an inanimate thing. Mei Mei looked at the disappearing figure with glassy eyes. Shin Yu clutched the chain that hung at the center of her bosom as she silently wished the man she loved good luck. When the war was first announced, everyone assumed a lot of things. But no one had ever imagined that only a single person would step out. Seeing Liam's lonesome figure disappear in the skies, everyone couldn't help but silently pray for him. If it were anyone but him, many would have called this arrogance. But this was Liam. So everyone kept their mouth tightly shut with various thoughts running through their minds. At the same time, the level of respect they had for him also increased. For some, it even turned to become a type of worship and reverence. Liam was going alone to face a threat, the disaster that fell upon their entire settlement, 
and the gravity of that did not escape them. Though many took this for granted, there were still some who were grateful to him. Liam, on the other hand, did not think too much. He knew that as soon as the guild was made public, his old friends would slowly start to come out of the woodwork. Rather than winning or losing in this war, he was more curious to see who it was that had taken the first step and challenged him. After all, this was life and death. What gave them the power and confidence to issue this challenge? If it was an item, could he obtain it if he killed them? Liam subconsciously licked his lips as he thought about this matter. A couple of minutes later, Liam and Luna arrived promptly at the magic shop. Liam still did not know when or where, or how this war was going to be initialized, and he wanted to gather more details. Naturally, this shop was the only place he could look for these details, as everything related to the guild began and ended with this shop. When Liam walked inside the innocent-looking building, he immediately found the store manager waiting for him. The fairy had been ignoring him for the past few visits, but today she seemed rather eager to see him. Liam had already expected this, so he wasn't really that surprised. Greetings, Miss Tilia. Did you wait for me long? The fairy's lips twitched as she did not miss the obvious sarcasm. Of course. I was waiting for you, Mr. Liam. After all, we will be conducting today's events. She replied with a polite smile. May I know when your guild members might be arriving? You don't really have a lot of time. She turned around and started walking into the shop. However, the next second she paused as she realized that she had overlooked the obvious. Mr. Liam, by any chance, are you planning to go to this war alone? A faint glint flashed past her fluttering eyes, which Liam did not miss. Ha ha ha. He laughed and then casually shrugged. I hope that wouldn't be an issue. There is no lower limit for the number of participants from a guild, right? Yes, you are correct. Tilia immediately answered him. However, it was not known to anyone what she was thinking in her mind as her lips lightly curved upwards. Then, can you tell me more about this war? Liam smiled and asked casually. I can only tell you what is already written in the system interface, Mr. Liam. The fairy curtly rejected his fishing expedition. However, Liam was not done yet. It says here that there is no monetary penalty or reward for those who win or lose in the war. So what exactly would you be gaining by managing this whole thing? Tilia simply smiled. It is our duty to help you dash, she started beating around the bush. But Liam abruptly interrupted her, getting right to the point. Let me see. Would you be gaining all the souls of the people who die in this war? I am assuming death is permanent in this challenge. Liam grinned. Suddenly the fairy's expression changed slightly. She couldn't understand what would make this lower realm being talk about souls, among all things, but she quickly regained her calmness again. Of course, death is something that is permanent, Mr. Liam. Even we do not have the power to change something like that. You still didn't answer my question, though? Liam did not let her off. The fairy's face twitched. Every word Liam spoke was grating on her nerves, and she simply wanted to slap the arrogant smile from his face. She took a deep breath and calmly replied, As I said, I am not allowed to divulge such matters. What we gain and how we manage the store is something that is not available for common knowledge. I apologize for the inconvenience. Liam chuckled. Okay, I understand. Don't beat yourself up about it. She might not have openly said yes, but Liam had a feeling that perhaps like mana cores, soul strength or soul power was also probably a currency and a very valuable one at that. Were there maybe soul cores? He tried to remember if he ever came across something like this in the Milky Way auction house. In fact, now that he thought about it, the Milky Way auction house was definitely not a part of the tutorial world managed by the divine temple beings. Liam pondered over various things for a minute, but he then snapped out of it and focused on the more pressing matter, at least for the moment. He looked over the system interface again and went through the various things written about the Guild War. He tried to read in death about the various aspects of the war, including the rewards and penalties section, the territory distribution, and so on. Tilia, who observed this, silently smirked. You should be more worried about other things, not these, she said. Liam's nonchalant way of dealing with the war only made her sneer inwardly. He might be a level 80 being, but when hundreds of thousands of people bombard a single target, even a level 80 being might not be able to hold out. That too he was a level 80 being from a lower realm. 
so she couldn't understand where did all this confidence stem from. You might be walking toward your death, you know. She waggled her eyebrows at him in amusement. Liam chuckled at her reminder. Yes, I know that, and this wouldn't be the first time. Besides, isn't there an option to quit? He did not even look up at her and continued to glance at the fine print. Tilia scoffed at his answer. Sure, there was an option to surrender, but would a prideful man like you use this option? She asked again. Liam smiled a little and then walked away without saying anything to her as he had finished looking up all the details. Call me when it's time. I will be right here. He walked over to sit in the waiting area and silently closed his eyes to rest a little, even letting out a small yawn. Prideful? Him? He was a survivor above all. Only he knew how much he had run and hidden in his life to survive and exist up until now. Something like pride was useless to someone like him. But that was not a sign of cowardice. In fact, it was a strength to know when you were out of your depth. This world was not small. There were several beings who were above him with unimaginable strength. So sometimes, it was wiser to flee. However, this war was different. Right now, he was quite determined to wipe out whoever gave him this challenge. He had no plans of running or hiding in this war. Tilia remained in her place as she silently watched the human. She couldn't help but read the man's reaction despite his indifferent expression. Her smile faltered a little, and so did the way she looked at the human being in front of her. For some reason, she really looked forward to seeing how this battle would pan out. A small part of her even wanted him to win. If you enjoy this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep you updated for future uploads.